How you think? How you see this fight going? I mean, I'm a fan of Dober, but Alves, he is a he is a a a, a spunky feller of all things, isn't he? Man, he's a uh, he reminds me of uh, like Hector Lombard the way he's able to like have these little bursts of energy, pace himself, pace himself. Oh, what is this? Did he just? What do we got going on with the toe? Oh, just toe tape. tape toe tape. Foot. I think we had toe Dober, tape. D Dober's too nice of a guy to even follow up. You know, a, a lot of lesser people like myself would have attacked him right there. <laughs> All right, but did you see that right there? How he's again the way Alves is approaching. Is that that? Cop do you see that capoeira ish type kick right there? Hey, man, it's it's a lot of high energy stuff, man. I, if Alves doesn't get him out of here in the first round, I, I don't see him winning this fight. I see. I like that right there. See, look at that, man. Jeff Molina and myself. What's up, chat? How you doing, everybody? Welcome. To the next, to another watch along. You got Jeff Molina with me. I hope everybody is well. Jeff, how you doing, my friend? I'm good, brother. I'm just, I'm happy to be here talking to you, watching fights. Big pay per view card tonight. You're, you're a legend. I, I was talking to you off camera, uh, just about, dude. You fought two of my teammates back in the day. Uh, Hell yeah. Uh, Tim always <laughs> talks about the fight against you, man. Like, uh, yeah, you're, you're a legend, brother. Pleasure to, to be here watching fights with you. Man, it's a pleasure. I know we're missing one, but that's all right because me and Jeff, we're going to get a chance to, yeah, we're going to get a chance to wrap with Jeff. We've got this fight going on right now with Dober and Alves. And so, yeah, I mean, let's just dive right into it after the fight. We'll, then we can kind of catch up with Chad. Can you see Chad at all? Uh, I got him on a different tab going. Okay, so you got, see, I, man, my man knows what he's doing. All right, I guess, just in case. So feel free to wrap with them anytime and stuff like that. All right, here, I'm going to ask you about the stand-up question. Could The fight before, were you watching? The, did you see, remember the last fight with the heavyweights? Yeah, yeah. There's been two stand-ups like that. The, the one in the previous fight and the one earlier on the prelims, man. Uh, Texas doesn't mess around. They want action. Well, I get now. Here's the deal. So I I understand when it comes to the clinch. Like we'll deal with this fight. I mean, they're kind of in a ground position right now. But do you feel like okay? Now, if I can go right here and I can maybe tie you up and hem you up where you can't move, like what Dober's trying to do right now, should I get a stand up or should you have to work? If you can't get away, you can't get away, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm kind <laughs> of uh, in between those two. It, it depends how active top guys being right. If if bottom guys are controlling the head, controlling the posture. But top guy is landing short shots to the body and just staying active, showing that he wants to keep this position and showing some sort of activity. I think it's on bottom guy to, to not just try to stall the position, but try to work back up, put your feet on the hips, start working towards the fence, do something, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of in between, though. Like, if, if top guy's not having any activity and Dober's able to control posture for 30 seconds, yeah, then yeah, stand right? him up. See, I could look at something like that because, boy, Joe was – he was kind of selling me a little bit. I mean, I get – when you're pushed up against the fence and you're in an over under position, break the, you know, break the action, break the action. You know what I'm saying? But you're standing. But this is one of those things where it took me all this time to get you to the ground. You're going to have to work extra hard to get up. But like you said, right here, if I'm able to hem you up and keep you from throwing any punches, does that warrant me to get to my feet? Maybe. But if there's a lull in action, boy, Joe was just against it. I was like, man. You know what I mean? Joe but was I on, on what side, brother? He was. He, he was, was on, like, uh, you shouldn't stand it up. Period. If you want up, you yeah, have yeah. to get up. And that's, that's even uh, if there's a low in action. Because think about it, you're giving that kid, and it almost worked with Dante there with Mays when he got back up to his feet. He was able to land some shots. He damn near knocked down Hamdi, and Hamdi was winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that mindset definitely favors the uh, the wrestler, right? You being a yeah. Western guy, I, I see that. Like uh, <laughs> in full style wrestling, locking your hands around someone's body while standing it, it isn't legal or sorry what when they're down like that so like yep. they're on uh they're they're down on all fours and you have your hands it is like, tough to start, like you don't figure it out right it's stalling that's for a stall, us that's a stalling position 100 in wrestling and mma that's that's a great way to control somebody man and it's very very difficult to do that to break that lock against a really good wrestler so if if there weren't separations i, I think we'd have a lot of boring fights i think we'd have a lot of people just stalling position and right it should be on b guy to, to work it to work themselves out of that but at the same time we, we want to see exciting fights and I get both sides for sure. I just it think was, uh, top guy has to stay active. He wants to keep the position. And I've always known that. And it's, again, and it's even the smallest little things, right, Jeff? Just a little body shots, any kind of activity, nothing too crazy. But, you know, I mean, and that's, I'm with you 100%. But it, boy, Joe was, he is against it. My man was like, that's just no way. And I think DC, yeah. the same thing. They were both listening to those two. I was like, I, I get it. I get it hundred percent. And you're right, brother. Like a huge part of it's optics, man. At least make it look like you're doing something. You know, yep. that's what the, the judges want to see. That's what the people want to see is just a lot of this is optics, man. At the end of the day, you got two very talented people fighting. 
whoever makes it optically look better is going to win the fight. That's why I knew I loved you before I even met you, my friend, because everything. <laughs> oh, well, because as we got what a round right there, it's at the end of the first round. But that's the one thing, right, is it, and I tell everybody, it's not just that straightforward who landed the punch. It's it's everything. It's how you sell taking the punches. It's how you sell throwing them. It's how you stand up. Everything the you do is all yeah, optics, all and you're trying to impress three people and get them to vote for you, right? And that's what I love. Yeah. Yes, 100%. All off, especially it. especially the way the the judging has been in the last couple months. You know, Ooh. there's been a lot of criticism towards it, man. So optics is huge. Like, even if you are losing, act like you're winning. You know, some yep. of that some of that sells, man. Like you said, you got to convince three people, and all and, these three people have different angles that that maybe other people don't don't see. So, well, and that's it. If you it's, take one shot and everything, so you got to sell it and stay in their mind for five minutes. You know, what I mean, you got to remember. It's like what happened in that first minute. What happened in that third and fourth minute? It's the way you sell yourself at all times. You know, it's impressive. But, okay, now this fight, though, is – I can't look at – Dober is bouncing. Alves looked like he might have spent himself a little bit Man, after that I first think round. the longer the fight goes, the more it favors Dober. I do have Alves winning that first round just with the top control. But I do think the, the longer this fight goes, uh, the more I like Dober. You know, and, it, again, you can tell – and I don't know if it's something maybe – like, see right here is Dober is trying to work his way in. You can, He's up on his feet. I like that he's moving, cracking, feigning off to that side, and a good left to the liver right there, punch, uh, and a I, good left hand. Jump in. I love the open stance attacks here. Like, the Do Dober's kind of playing patty cake, trying to shut down that lead hand. I, I love that from open stance, man. It, it just All right, makes so you're a big fan cross. of that slap hand, slap hand. Man, with the I, lead. I love that, especially from the open stance because their lead hand's closer to you. So if you can just shut down that hand, they only got one hand to throw at you. And uh, Dober just waiting for that little pull cross. Oh, Dober puts Ooh, together five punches story. right there. See, that's the thing is I think Alvis is kind of taking some time off. I don't know, maybe certain, but see, Dober is starting to pick it up, those kicks. That left look, he's already kind of switching up his stance a little bit. Alvis is. And, and for someone that's not known for the for the best cardio in Alves, Dober has, has a good idea going, just push him against the fence. That forward pressure, man, gets you tired. Just backing yeah, up I mean the whole time. And it's intimidating, isn't it? Like I said, it, speaking of your teammate, Elliot, that's one thing. Constantly jumping in your face, and he's always oh, in he's your a face. Motherfucker, like, dude. Can Jesus. I get a breather? Can I get <laughs> yeah. a breather? Please stop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I know I'm in shape when I when I can hang with with Timmy all, all three rounds. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm in great shape. I love it. I love. It. See, look at Dober going out to the belly hole. He's doing a good job keeping that range. You know, and, and, and again, Alvis is, I think he's just going to sit back and he's got to figure out how to, he's going to have to get active. He can't just sit there against the fence and allow Dober just to tee off. And I think that first round we saw Dober was able to re-guard a couple of times when, when Al uh, Alves had passed the guard. And that just kind of goes to show how good Makashev is because he sliced through Dober's guard like butter and oh. was able to just kind of do whatever oh. he wanted to on top. And Alves is no joke <laughs> on the ground either. He's a high-level black belt, nasty guillotine. So for him to be able to, to kind of re-guard and, and not, Alves wasn't able to land too much from that top position. It just kind of shows that that Makashev's on a different level, man. Oh, well, which will go in and we'll be rapping about that because one of the biggest things is he's going to go right after oh, Olivieta, right on the ground, right after yeah. him, and just try to shut it down. You know what I mean? So it'll be a lot of fun to see. Yeah, yeah. And and in the last, like, couple of years, we've kind of seen jiu-jitsu not be as effective at, at the highest level, right? Uh and in, in local shows, on the regional shows, amateurs, early on in the pros, jiu-jitsu works a lot more. And then at the high level, just everyone's so um, cognitive of, of submissions and, and knows how to defend submissions. Um, so it's very rare that we see jiu-jitsu work at a high, high level. But Charles Oliveira is like one of those few, man. Like there's only a couple I can name like that are specialists in jiu-jitsu that they're dangerous no matter at, if they're fighting at the highest level or not. Like Damian Maya. Yeah. Yeah. We're doom, uh, Ryan Hall, like people that can actually chill on their backs and, and be effective. And Oliver is one of them, man. So I'm interested to see how, how Makashev is able to uh, control on top without getting caught in something crazy. You know, and that's the thing is, it's just like kind of like the way I break down wrestling. And it's one of those things in high school wrestling, you can get away with those high acrobatics, the throws, and you can be a really big scrambler diving into legs and, you know what I mean, going for the split, you know, the, the, getting a splatal. Nice combination by Dover's he's pressuring him. But, you know what I mean? But then as you get into college, hey, everything hunkers down and gets really heavy. And it's 8,000 setups to that one single leg. And that's kind of what nice jump knee by Alves. Trying to back Dober up, but you know what I mean. So it's it's one of those things where you really are trying to it, it slows down, and that's what we're doing. And when you get to this level that you're talking about, but to be able to do all of it at that high level, such a rarity. Yeah, man, it's um, 
it's not like it was 10, 15 years ago when when we had people like we were just Gracie and, 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 no, were, yeah. Yeah, and nobody knew like yeah. jujitsu. Like uh, had no idea what area. was going to get you in trouble. I didn't even know like a triangle choke. I didn't even know what heel hooks were. Yeah, or that, anything. that was a shape <laughs> to you, you know. Yeah, you didn't know what well, it was. Um, but the game's changing, man. And uh, I don't think that was an eye poke, was it? We got eye poke, or was that a jab? He fired a big winging left. Dober seems to be the one on point. We have an eye now. Was it a was it a poke because of the punch, or yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I do believe the the rule set has changed. I'm not sure if it's a an, an effect here tonight, but I did see that it got a, I guess passed or approved. The they're now given five minutes for for eye pokes. Before it was a discretion referee's discretion. Uh, that's yeah, that was right. Poke, they just pa- but, okay. So that's what it I is. I always like a- thought was like, dude, you get five minutes for a nut shot, but you don't give them five minutes for your visibility. Like that's kind of important to have in a fight, you know, a hundred percent. I always thought it was, maybe I'm just out of it or something. I always thought that was the rule. You got five minutes no, to but, let this thing recover. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've been commentating fights for about the last uh, year and a half uh, on that, on that local show. I was talking about off air yeah. um, uh, on FAC. It's on fight pass. We had a great show last night, but uh, yeah, dude, sometimes the referee would only give the guy 20 seconds and this guy's like still blinking, can't see out of an eye. And I'm like, what's going on? Like th- th- having what the full five that minutes fight is super start, What time did that fight start yesterday? Because we were on and there was, there was three show, two shows that were on at the time with fight pass. Oh, he's pissed. He wants to, he's ready to fight. But, and it must've came in right when we were finishing up. Cause we, I think we yeah. started a little early cause I'm on fight pass. Uh, we started at 9 PM about- uh, Midwest time. So I think we're at oh, CFFC. Okay. We had just finished. And, and LFA. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. CFFC yeah, yeah. and LFA were going on at the same time. Yeah. 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 Okay. I do think this little break in action favors uh, Alves, man. He's not known for the so any, any break he can get. This dude's just a pure athlete explodes into things that are high energy, like flying knees. We saw just throwing some spinning shit earlier. Oi! They tried to go back to like Alves tried there to throw is. a high kick, and then you got Dober trying to come back and throw a high kick of his own slip. See, now Alves is taking his moment. Oh, Ooh. they're both swinging. Alves catches Dober with one, but he just took it, and he's coming right back at him. Look at him. Oh, my man's rope a doping like a boss, <laughs> hitting the what dance G, moves. Man. Come on. Come on. Alves, he's going to burn himself out. I do think Alves is down this round, though, man. I got a 1-1 unless Alves can do something here in the last 10 seconds. Yeah, but I like that. I mean, if he can catch him, he win it. Now, okay, he was shooting in for a single leg. Dober called it oh, a day. I don't, but- I don't like that. I don't like that body language, man. Failed takedown and then uh, pulls guard pretty much. Oh, big left hand, big left hand. That was a good round. That was a Dober's fun such round. such a nice guy, man. I mean, what a fucking good looking dude, too. Jesus Christ. Looks like an yeah. Andrew Comedy model. Now he is. Fight, a, man. Is he not a, he's a leave. model, isn't he? I believe it. I if if Jovan can model, Dober's got to be that model, too, right? And he's a super, yeah, yeah, he's a super nice guy, man. I've I, I had the pleasure of meeting him and chatting with him. He's a super cool dude. Just oh. like you see him smiling before the fight, he, he does the same when he, like, in person. <laughs> same dude. I hear it. I hear it. Uh, so, really, I'll be talking to the powers that be. So, are they going to be coming back or? So we figured out that okay. So we have storms are keeping our other, are keeping our other one. All right. So it might just be you and I. He's got storms. So the big ticket, can't he's got storms happening right now. Look at the eye. Look at the eye of Dober. That right eye. Yeah, some good swell in there. Oh, oh this you, is going to be Walt, him. Uh, Walt's yeah. dealing with a uh, storm. Thunderstorms. Out there. Yeah, that's a good excuse. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it works. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Where's he at, Florida? No, where is Walt? he? Where is Walt at? Is it... Wait, yeah, wait. I'm at. I don't. Where, where is he at? I thought it was. Now I'm listening to these two really quick, huh? We'll have to figure it out. I thought he was in Texas. I love I this four pressure by Dober, man. Back Alves up to the fence. It's it's really easy to telegraph or to see stuff telegraph when when their backs against the fence. Well, they can only go one direction, right? It's exactly. either got to be right or left. There's no going back, and you can utilize that as he shoots in that single leg. And this is the one thing that, you know, as tired as he seems to be getting, Jeff, I don't know so much as, you know, I mean, these failed takedowns can't help. Yeah, definitely not. I, I don't mind him, though. It gets his back off the fence. He's able to take control of the center again, just to kind of get Dober uh, defensive for a second instead of just pure offense. I don't I don't mind it. Um, as long as he knows he's not trying to finish exactly every take, then I'm just using it to kind Okay, of yeah, so you're not holding on to a level yeah, change, yeah. which is good, K- changing the level and stuff, and Alabama. So he's in Alabama. Okay, that's – dang, all right. 
So the Storms in Alabama. But that's the one thing. When you're kind of worrying about conditioning, but he is bouncing, and he looks like he's, he still has gas in the tank. So overcommitting, I suppose, on the single leg. Nobody has issue. such a clean one too, man. A lot of those southpaws just have that clean cross that comes right down the pipe, splits the guard perfectly, and Dober's one of those guys, man. And I like how he leads with it. A good straight yeah. left down the middle, but then again on the same side, that inside leg kick by Alves and a straight right by them can kind of do the same. Oh, Ooh, he hit him with the heavy. Nasty Speaking of. Nasty liver shot. Jeez. It was a delayed shot, right? My favorite punch on the planet. My favorite punch on the planet. Yo, a left to the man. belly hole. A left Jeez. to the belly hole. <laughs> man, it doesn't oh, matter how tough shot. you are. It doesn't matter how tough you are, how good your chin is. It'll shut down anybody. It doesn't matter how how tough you are, man. Like that, that will just fold you. Like, I don't care if you're Francis and Ghana. You get hit in the liver, you, you're shutting down. It, it shuts down it, your whole system, man. It is my favorite punch on the planet. I mean, I love Let's how see, again, oh, kind of mix it around. And it's it's if you don't see it, and that's one thing is we're getting ready to watch the replay. See that jab? He reacted the way Please. he reacted. Money. He turned and he thought that shot was going high, and it's that delay. You know what I mean? Look at how he, he gets that in. He flinched. I mean, Man. just ripped that liver Beautiful. shot. And from open stance, you get a lot of torque because that's a hundred percent when it's your power Ripping shot, it. Jeff. I tell everybody all Holy the time, shit. it's risk and reward, right? A lot of times because he's throw, we're throwing from our, our rear shot and we're leaving ourselves open ish, right? But it's it's your kitchen sink. You're throwing. That's like going in with with a full. You know what I mean with a pair of fours. You, yeah. That's your. It's a one hitter quitter if it lands. Yeah. So it's a risk and reward, and it pays off. You know oh, yeah. what a shot. That was beautiful. Chef's kiss to that man. That was. Ugh. But then when you guys get that to get inside and be quick with that lead hand, pip pip. You know what I mean? That Mickey yeah, Ward yeah. style, and you can hit the liver too. That's. That's yeah, rugged, Tyson, but... Tyson was really good at that, man. That same side would just liver hook, liver hook. And the like, way he dealt with it, right? Boom, and just boom. explodes, yeah. Heck yeah. You guys, you work a lot on, you guys work a lot. Liver is just, it's mandatory, right? Go after that liver. 100%, man. <laughs> there's no better feeling of dropping somebody to, with a body shot. In the gym, in a fight, there's no better feeling, man. Like, <laughs> oh. making someone almost shit their pants. Like, and, and if I'm going with somebody that I know isn't, like, on the same level as me, you know? Like, and as maybe like a meathead or he's going a little harder than he should, but I'm not, I don't want to hurt him to the head. Like, you know, brain damage is for life. Like, so if I'm going with like a, the other day I was going with this, uh, like 17 year old kid and he's just swinging at me. This dude's 100%. fresh out of high school and he's trying to rip my head off. And I'm like, all right, dude. And I tell him, Hey, I'm gonna go as hard as you do. And he's like, okay. Okay. And just keeps trying to rip my head off. And I just, I switched to the open stance. I throw like a teep right to his liver, kind of giga kick-ish and just shut him down, you know? <laughs> I do that all the time, man. Like I, I'll rip, I always say like, if we're going light, body shots is free game. You can go as hard as you want to the body. <laughs> to the head, definitely oh, different, Lord. you know? Yeah. Free reign to the body at all times. Free reign on the legs. Free to the yeah. body. Oh, you're speaking my language. I love it. I love it. And brain damage it. for life, man. The liver's only going to bother you for the rest of the night, you know, if you hit yeah, it pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> what a win for Dober, man. That's a big win. Yeah, Alves is no joke. That was an exciting fight, man. Back and forth, back and forth. That was and impressive. I think, I think Alves is one of those dudes, man, super talented, but I think he's one of those guys that if you get out of the first round with them, you're, you're a little safe, in my opinion, man. I think he's one of those guys where like, at our gym we call it the 501 rule, meaning like, Everyone can be good for five minutes, especially someone so athletic and explosive as Alves. But like, I love 501. It. Let's see it. Let's see how explosive you are. Let, let's see, like, let's if see you if can, you can roll with that. Waters. If you can roll with that in the fifteenth minute, you know what I mean, and the la in the championship rounds and and stuff, it makes you deadly. And I see our biggest yeah, thing was always about again, as tired as you get, your form, and everything start to get. That's when you want to have perfect form as the rounds start going on. That's when that chin's down, those hands are up. And you got to keep that perfect form because we tend to open up and like a, like we a blossoming every weekend, flower. Man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We see it every weekend. That, that's, yeah. that's so true. Like especially in like the heavyweight division. Like how many times have we seen the third round coming around and these guys have and their hands on their knees, win. hands on their hips. You know, these guys yeah, are yeah. juiced. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's how, that's how you get caught. And that's when you want – and I always tell people that's when you want to work on the most is that's when I'm starting to get tired. That's when everything – get those hands straight back – Make sure everything gets back, and you know, what I mean, this fight right here, this Morono for this one, and Samuelsberger. Oh yeah, I'm pumped for this one. I think people are sleeping on Morono, man. I I think uh, 
I don't think the the lines are respecting him. The, the odds are respecting him. This guy's a good grappler, man. I, I think he can. Uh, I think he can use that grappling to kind of take some pop up. Smells Semmelsberg's uh, strikes, man. I know he hits hard, but people are sleeping on Morono here. I think, and then again, just that doggedness. I don't know how else to explain it. Like the way he just comes diving in and just, you know, what I mean, that doggedness that he can. Ju- yeah. He doesn't get tired. Yeah, yeah. There, uh, there was a fight, I think it w- maybe against Mickey Gall, where he got tired in the third, and, and I think kind of that's why the lines are disrespecting him a little bit. But, man, it's going to be a good fight regardless. I, I might eat my words here in a, in a minute, and some of them get the first-round yeah. knockout in 30 if seconds. If it happens, it happens. But hey, So real <laughs> quick, chat, exclamation sweeps. Today is the last day. UFC is giving away a one-of-a-kind gaming PC featuring a Ryzen 5900X and RTX 3080 built by Paradox Customs, plus more prizes. So enter now for a chance to win. Um, you'll see the link and restrictions do apply. Really quick, Ramundo, huh? My my father, my dad is a big fan of the UFC. Uh, would like to say hello. His name is Juan. Juan Francisco. Yo, Juan, how you do, Juan? I hope you're well. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the show. Exclamation sweeps. We're one day left. I don't know. How many people, like, there are people, I'm telling you right now, Melina, that there's a lot. <laughs> they got like 30 or 40. Reg- you can register as many times as you want to, I think, to try to win this thing. So we got people Go in there. And, and, yeah, yeah. It's a sick in, computer. Man. Try it to is, win that. It is. I, it sounds like a sick computer by all the, like, numbers in there and the, the X's. Like, that That has to be good, right? Yeah. That's what you want from your computer. Yeah, I'm telling you. just It's got two graphics cards. That alone. Woo! I've already started to have <laughs> I don't know. Look at one with the I like this Semmelsberger. I think he's man, this is gonna be a scrap. I'm excited for these two. Yeah, yeah. This uh I think it's be pretty similar to the last fight, man, where it's just back and forth, back and forth. We'll have to see that. Oh man. So what is going on with you? What's next? Man, uh I think late October, early November, I would love to get on that Madison Square Garden card, man. Uh, I grew up in Jersey. I'm a Jersey kid. and Oh, yeah, yeah. Madison Square, Madison Square Garden was always that place. It was like, um, you know, there was concerts, shows, uh, sporting events there. And uh, we could never afford to go there. But, like, my parents know Madison Square Garden. So it, it'd be pretty sweet to, to be able to fight there. And I got oh. family still out there in Jersey. And it's like an hour, hour 30 away. So uh, if I can get on that card, man, that, that would be uh, – That'd be awesome. Like I know a lot of fighters don't want to fight there because of taxes, but dude, it's worth it to me. I'll pay whatever the fuck their taxes is to, to hop on that card. <laughs> taxes, I, <laughs> I hear it. Is he? I hear. I he, hear it's like the highest tax state uh, if you're gonna compete and fight in as a as a fighter. You know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be like, you hold on to that and send it to me later, and you know, <laughs> yeah, in yeah. my state, and we can just go with that. Or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love it. I love it. this now. Yeah, Morono. Coming out the sweet. Does he always? I love this song. I didn't know this is all right. Yeah, but he looks fired up. He looks ready to go. Yeah, somebody else who was, oh, Yanez, I think was another one that he's trying to get out there. And and everybody wants, man, I just want to bring the stream out there. That'd be kind of cool. Go to Madison. Yeah, that'd be sick, man. Yeah, Yanez told me he wants to get out there too. Uh, We talked about it just uh, a week or two ago. And Yanez is a a great fighter, good dude. And it'd it'd be cool to share the same card as him. How you liking it out there in Kansas City? You enjoy it? How long you been out there? I've been here for about a decade, man. I, okay. I came out here when I was uh, like 13, 14. So he's been out here for a decade. Well, because the biggest thing is I got to interview you and let, you know what I mean, for the chat as well. So yeah, yeah. You're like, what the heck? So I know what the heck. But, so you like it out there? You Are you liking it in the Midwest? It, it's different, man. Uh, man <laughs> if you move out here for training, like – you, you know what you're giving up. You're making the sacrifice. Like, it's nothing pretty out here, dude. Like, you're in the Midwest. You're, you're out in Iowa. Like, people don't move out here for the weather. They don't move nah. out here for the pretty beaches. Like, it's a really, uh, like, nose to the grindstone. You're here for like, one reason, right? Mentality. You're here for one yeah. reason. And, yeah, so yeah. it's got, uh, like, when I, when I tell people I live in Kansas, they assume, like, I live on a fucking farm or something. But I'm pretty How close many to Kansas How many of them hit City. you with the, so I tell people I live in Kansas City when they ask. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never had a tornado here. Uh, it's pretty suburban, man, but it's good, man. I love the training. I really think we have one of the best gyms in the world, if not the best gym. Um, our head coach, James Kraus. Is, uh, He's putting it together, man. I, you got to love him. He's tonight. getting more and more active. Yeah. And, again, having Moreno to come out. To, that was the next thing I was going to ask is, so what was that like with him making that transition? Is it – you know, sometimes when people start changing things up, 
right? It, it, it's either a good thing or a bad thing. And really quick before this fight starts, how do you think? Is he adapted? He's got to love it. He's awesome, man. I think uh, his energy, his his character, his personality fits our gym perfectly. Like just that type of energy he brings, it fits our culture that that, that James has created at the gym. There's just fine, you know. He he fit in perfectly. We're not one of these big super gyms, man. We don't have hundreds of fighters. I think there's about 17 or 18 of us that are in the UFC, and um, Timmy and I are, are two other fellow flyweights in the UFC. So yes, sir. I, I I think it was just a perfect fit, man. And um, he's he's made us better. We've made him better, and it's just a it's a good combination. Man, iron sharp and high. I love it. I love it. That's yeah, man, perfect. it's been great. Is- it's great for me, dude. Like, what what better training part can I get than than the, than the former world champ and yep. hopefully future world champ? Um, yeah, <laughs> it was, it's been really good for my confidence and, uh, it kind of shows me where I'm at, you know, I love it. I love it. And that's another thing. Just having that now, my question, how close you, you close, you close, huh? It's like, I they you, like, you gotta, Man, you gotta it, do it. It, it, it's made, how it, works. It's, it was a huge, especially like me being in camp, him being in camp for his fight. We were kind of in camp together and we just kind of fed off that and. He's he's a great dude, man. But it, it was really a big confidence boost to be like, dude, I'm not I'm not too far away, man. I, I'm I'm knocking at the I door, love it. I, and uh, I just turned 25, man. So actually, you're um, a young yeah, it's exciting, I brother. <laughs> I love it's well, exciting. That's the thing and no hesitations, you know. That, yeah, I love it. I'm glad everything's going well out there. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah dude, someone's burger hits like a truck, man. So these first couple of minutes got me a little nervous because I have a little bit of money on Murano. Okay, all right. Well, I was going to say, I noticed that this is one of the things. Morono is attacking, but he's trying to do, you can tell he's doing, oh, lead hook, trying to judge that, gauge that range a little bit more, a little hesitant on trying to yeah. hit and make sure he's getting out of the way when when uh, Semmelsberger throws back. That lead hook, uh, though, seems to be an issue. Go ahead. I do like Morano addressing that that low kick, man. Like, a lot of times, it only takes one or two, especially nowadays, everyone's going to the calf with those those low kicks. So, oh. he addressed it early, man. I like that. <laughs> Let them know that I, I know about these calf kicks and you're going to have to check yourself. And that's the other thing is the way that he, the way that he wants to move in, kicking that inside, the inside of that lead leg. Oh, good right hand by Morono. Cause again, it keeps him from stepping in, popping that jab. Yeah, dude. And, and those calf kicks have really changed the game, man. So it's I so just... important to address those. Like I'll never forget the first time I got hit with one. It was uh, my last amateur fight, like 2016 and, I tried to check it like a traditional low kick, just kind of like sit into it. And yeah, golly, was that a mistake? I, I couldn't walk for like two weeks after the fight, man. It See, that's terrible. I'm so glad people really didn't start doing that when I was still fighting because you know, checking the front of it, like you said, leaning into it and stepping into it well, that, would that have been the way like, I would have that was the way yeah, to really do the low trends, kick. They, they, that changed the game, man. Like before, it was just like a low kick, so I would sit into it and just throw like a hard cross, but Step you right, yeah, kick, you're, you're, you're gonna be on one leg for a little bit. That's yeah, that's crazy. That, that, yeah, it's no good. No and that just kind of shows no. the evolution of the sport, brother. Like every every month, there's like a new flavor, you know, something different that people are doing. Like for a minute, it was the calf kicks. For for a while, it was the fence wrestling. No one knew how to wrestle on the fence, and people were getting taken down off the grappling on the fence. Man, and it, it just the sport's so new. I think it's like 28 years old or something like that. So yep. things are changing all the time. Left and right, and like I said, when you got these youngsters that have been that's young, you know, the kids watching this going, Oh, I'm gonna do this and start to develop and work on their, you know, what I mean, what they want to do, the strategies, their yeah, wrestling, yeah. their boxing stuff coming up. In the Khabib era, it was the Dagestani handcuff, everybody was going for the wrist. Oh, trying to wrist ride, you gotta you know? get that far wrist control, hold on to yeah. it. It's a good grip, throw a leg in. You know, you got Hamza out trying to do that nice combination really? by Morano. He looks like he's ready to step in there, yeah, yeah, and a lot of warm up, man, but he's 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 getting his licks in too on the feet. People thought it would be one-sided if, if the fight was uh, kept on the feet. You know, I didn't realize the size of, of Matthew. I mean, he's big. He's definitely – dude, man. Yeah, he looks like he's filled my, my out. My teammate, uh, Jason Witt, fought him. And, and Witt's a big dude, man. Solid 70-pounder. Cuts a good amount of weight to make 70. And Semmelsberger made him look small, man. Yeah. He it, made him look tiny. And I like that Morono is trying to move around inside, try to be active. But Matthew, see, again, I like how he does this. Just try to just walk him straight down. Just kind of walk through all the BS, close the distance, and land those shots. I want to see Morano initiate the ground from here. I like that one-two from the distance, get him frustrated. See, him do a one-two and maybe shoot him. Can he take him down would be the thing, yeah? Try to close that well, even, Or even just to get him to think uh, about the wrestling, you know, get him to, to defend the takedown. Top a level change first head. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. once. Was that an eye poke? I thought that was a jab. Eye poke ish. That's another one. Dang. 
All right, he's good. Oh, wait, let me see. Yep, there's that oh. open hand. Never mind. Yeesh. Oh, pinky. Jens, have no. you ever been hit with a, with a good old eye poke in, in a fight? I had the front part of my pupil removed in a fight in Japan God, against Sakurai. Man. It was horrifying. He scratched off the whole front of it. But I didn't, I just kept trying to fight. But yeah, it was a, it was a rough, it was a rough ordeal. And they, they had to remove that portion out of your eye? What happened was when it was, so I had to sit back and wait. And then when it scabbed over, they didn't numb it. They didn't give me any kind of eye number or nothing. I had to go home back to the States with just this eye patch. And every time I moved my eyeballs, like ripping the scab off. Golly. And when they, they put this dye in my eye and they ran, they ran a screen, you know what I mean? They said, all right, well, we'll see what the scratch is. Cause it'll be a dark, you know, it'll be dark on the screen. Yeah, yeah. And the whole front of my, the whole front right there was dark. And they're like, oh, oh Lord, he scratched the whole front of it off. And they put this, but they wouldn't numb because they said something about healing. So I had to sit there for almost 24 hours with this thing constantly moving. And I was like, Extremely every time painful. I move my eye, oh, it's like someone's ripping the scab off. Oh, God. And so I finally get back to the U.S. and like, what? Why didn't they give you an eye number? I was like, why didn't they? So, yeah, it was, it was <laughs> a horrible one. Chat, oh. you got to respect some of these fighters, man. For going through things like that, these little small injuries you don't hear about, man, that, that's crazy. It was, it was the most painful thing. I was like, Ugh. every time you moved your eyeball, I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, but I don't know what you know. You yeah, can't, yeah. oh, it was. You can't not not move your eye either. You know, it was if, numb. If it was, somewhere. it was. Yeah, it was horrifying. It, it tore me Close up. Round, Ooh, that left eye right there, nice and swelled, got a cut on it of Semmel's burger. But yeah, it was weird trying to do the fight with Sakurai. I'm trying to like after he does it, I didn't even get a timeout. And, so, I just, so what was it? and I'm trying straight, to throw straight finger in the eye. Oh, yeah, he did the, again the usual, right? When they think something's gonna get closed, and you got those open hands, you kind of just yeah. get off out off guard, you know what I mean? You just kind of reach out and just rip the whole front of it off. What was funny, yeah, yeah. they wanted to interview. We had an interview afterwards, and I'm sitting there, I'm going, I think I, I have something in my eye. Oh my, I got something in my eye. And I'm like, can somebody give you me you win something? that fight, Jens? No, he ended well, he ended up winning. They stopped the fight. But yeah, he ended up winning. I'll just give him yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And they they're stopped trying to interview it. afterwards. I, I looked on my back, so they're trying to interview me in the back afterwards, like a press conference. And I was like, "There's something in my eye. There's something in my eye. Could someone give me some?" And I'm trying to wash it out, and that's what it felt like. And I was like, "Yeah, there's not. It's not. It's not happening." I'm like, "I can't." And I just said, "I'm sorry. I can't continue can't the interview." And they had to take me to the hospital. And when they took me to the hospital, that's when they put the dye in there and they oh dude he lost the whole front of his eyeball <laughs> golly is it good now you haven't you have no effects no i effects was good no there for a yeah. while they thought he's gonna have to do laser surgery but then they put the steroids the eye drops and stuff which got rid of that the scar tissue so to speak so yeah. i didn't have the double vision i, I think it was God, like man. two or three weeks or something wearing that stupid Thank eye God, patch yeah. thing but you hear horror stories one. like bisping or like even winkle john who got his, his eye slashed by a toenail like yeah, it's from a kick. That's what I mean. Just getting crazy. kicked in the eye. Yeah. It's a dangerous sport, man. You fighters are crazy. I don't know why you do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all are nuts, me. you know? Yeah, 100%. No, no, no fighter is sane, man. No and way. That's what they, now, you look at this thing right here. I don't think they're going to go to the ground in this fight right now as Samuelsberg is trying people, to walk him people down. I thought Murano would look lost here on the feet, man. He, he looks good. good. Good little counters. There you go. I like that afterwards, right? After Selmsberger throws that shot, he comes back with those one, two, three punches. And again, the way he's got that left eye, that lead eye, the way he, obviously Selmsberger's throwing in, yeah. throwing that right hand. The thing for Selmsberger is it only takes one from him, man. He hits like a truck. Yeah, he. If you notice that right he hand, he just tried feet, to bring. Just, yeah. Well, that's something else. See, I like that you said that about planting your feet, right? Something you work on, like, again, move, move, plant, and just dig in and back up on your wheels and move around. Yeah. Yeah, you, so, you, like, uh, Miranda right now is being elusive, but there's a lot less power on his shots for, from doing that versus Selmsberg, who's just walking him down, and everything he does is planted. Yeah, that's see, that's what I like with Morono. He's trying to, look, he's always up on his wheels, bouncing, bouncing, and trying to stick where, yeah, you're saying – Samuelsberger is just like a tank, just trying to walk forward. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good dichotomy, you know, like the just kind of like the styles of of fighters, like uh, like when you get a striker versus a wrestler, you always want to see how that plans out. Yep, look at that. Morono tried to spin a back fist, landed ish, and then fired a left hand after. But he's picking on that eye. That eye is slowly closing of Samuelsberger. Yeah, and if you're if you're Morano, you want to keep attacking that side, right? If, especially if that vision's compromised and you can't see it coming. Like start start winging that a little bit, trying to go around that. So his peripheral can't catch it, you know. And then the other thing that right, I, I like that. 
I'm listening to what Dean's saying there. But see, that's the frustration. Morono, he's doing a good job of pressuring, but he's not. He seems look at that. He's just getting out of the range. Look at that. Three jabs in a row. You see what I mean now? He's just he's just out of the range of Samuelsberger, but close enough to start throwing those jabs. Yeah, lucid. Oh, even got a little fancy on him with the spin and heel kick. My man goes, he goes to spin a kick off real quick. I love it. Oh, nice jab. He is picking him part with that jab. Morano's showing a, a different kind of part of his game here, man. Looking real lucid on the feet, just kind of picking at him. Uh, I, I knew his striking was good. He knocked out Cerrone, maybe uh Maybe it's Cerrone past his prime, but I really feel like uh, people were sleeping on his striking in this fight. He, he was a pretty heavy dog coming into this. Yeah, but I like how busy. Oh, big one, too, by Selmsberger. But I like, yeah, his hands. Like, again, just picking those shots, right? Just pop, pop, pop. Big overhand right every now and then. But yeah, he's sticking even, that even jab. Right there, uh, Selmsberg threw a jab. He kind of slipped inside to try to counter with the overhand. The overhand missed. But just the thought of doing that is, uh, is a high-level striker, man. And I like how he came with that rear uppercut back with that lead hook. He's putting the hands together. Boom. Nice one, too. The classic moving, like you got the quick fighter just putting in the shots in the one, and then Selmsberger's trying to throw the heavy shots. Yeah, Selmsberger's trying to take his head off, and Morano's yeah. trying to kind of snipe <laughs> at him, you know. 100%. 100%. James, when, got, uh, when, when you were fighting, what, what was your favorite, like, combination? What was your, your go-to, like, if, if, you, if you're hurt? Jab, maybe cross, hook, left, left hand to the liver. Come back with that yeah, yeah. shot. And I love the, the shell big, up. You get the get him the shell. Up. So that was the yeah. first thing, right? Start throwing that jab upstairs. Throw it left to the belly hole to start getting those hands to go up and down. And then yeah. you're like, okay, I got him. Start adding in those things. Jab, crop, boom. Once and then obviously I watched so much Tyson. I always yeah. try to double up on the left side, double up Nasty. on the right side, you know, but that jab crossed the hook because then it brought me back to because being left-handed, try to fire that left and hit that Nasty. liver. Yeah, I yeah. love a left to the liver. Oh, oh Morano no. tried to go over the takedown. Semmelsberger just said no. And that could have lost in the round there, man, to, to end the round like that and what was kind of a competitive round. Uh... We'll have to see Morano. what kind of judges we have today. Oh, he's going for an arm oh, bar. We got an arm bar by Morono. GG is going to take some right hands to the face by Semmelsberger to defend it. Not your traditional defense, but man, does it work. It absolutely does. He's ripping big elbows. Morono's trying to catch armbar ish. Man, I lost in that round, brother. Ah, well, oi, man. Just the, the, we talked about optics earlier, Jens. Just the optics. Oh, that eye is shut. That eye is done, though. And again, not with just those optics, but now can you, but are they going to remember the four minutes of that peppering? Peppering exactly. jab, and you see that eye and the cut that's above it. You know what I mean? Or like you said, they're coming out last thirty seconds. Again, that's he. He looked beastly. Summersberger looked like he just ripping elbows. Yeah. It looked bad, but I don't know. We have to see those judges. We got those oh, man. These judges these days. I don't know. Yeah, I don't tell know me what about they, it, man. <laughs> what, Jen's uh, hot hot topic here. But what, what's your opinion on uh, open scoring? I want open scoring. I I definitely think. I would like to see live scoring just because for the I want I I want them to be a, a, the accountability of the judges. I want them to have to deal with it in in between each round. That eye is closed of yeah, Semmelsberger. Really oh, they're testing it. I don't know. It. I don't know if they're gonna be able to. They may not. That might be done. He can't see. Oh, they're gonna let okay. it go. Let's go. Oh, left eye is closed. But yeah, you know what I mean. But I think they should definitely change the scoring because this is an MMA. Fight. We shouldn't have the boxing 10 point must system as much as I'm almost, they could start flipping cards, flipping the scoreboard over like re old wrestling match, flipping points. Man, it, it's Whoever the only most where you points. don't know if you're winning or not, you know? And, yeah. and I, I, I don't understand certain arguments. Like I, I know uh, the boss look at, he said, said, look at Norgliata's like, he's refusing. He's like, go back. He's bringing him back in. Look at this eye. Dan didn't let him like his doctor's opinion. He doesn't like it. It looks bad, but dag, they're back you in. Can see. Oh That's my twice. God. See, so that was the ref. Gangster, man. You know, I like that the ref was really looking out for him right there. Yeah, yeah. But now let's see if Maroon. Now here comes Summersberger. Burger fighting with a with a reason. He knows this fight can't go. Oh, oh! he just jumped. He knocked him down. 
He Selzberger throws a jump knee and catches Morono on the you face. You got a bad cut on you, and the doctors think about stopping her. If your eyes completely shut, you got to fight. You with got the, nothing to lose. You might as well dive in. You got to fight with the oh, sensor. Urgency, oh, man. Morono gets hipped over back on his back. Selzberger can't spend the whole round sitting right here. Morono does a good job of locking up the guard now. Chat holding on to the hands. Oh, selzberger has got to get back up. Yeah, yeah. If you got a guy hurt, man, create space. But. I don't, I don't know if he's a little worried about that eye, how, how good that vision is. Morono is going to go high with that leg. He's going to hold on to it. He's, <laughs> he's going to rubber guard like a just boss. Just for a little bit. Hold yeah. him down. Go for the arm bar. Go for the arm now bar. we're out of there. Throws it by. Uh-oh. Stay out in front. I don't know why people don't like to be out in that front headlock. I like it. They're back on their feet. Oh, Morono. Is he out? Me. I think Morono's still he's out. He's skates, man. He's hurt. Yeah, he's still hurt. I don't know if Semmelberger knows it because he's got the body lock looking to try to take him down again. Oh, free up. Wow. Look at they're yelling. You can hear him. They're like, he's hurt. He's, he's hurt. hurt. Yeah. Step back and let him throw. He's got him right in the corner. Oh, no. Now stop what? Oh, mouthpiece. mouthpiece. Okay. <laughs> I thought they were going to check his eye for a second. Right? I was like, don't was check like, the eye right yeah, now. What a terrible time, man. <laughs> All right. So now, again, he's got the head in the pocket. Um. Oh, Jensen, Jeff, your prediction for Megomed, Uncle Live, and Anthony Smith. Oh, we'll be rapping about that one. First fight coming up in the, in, in the main card. Woo! What do you think about that fight, Jens? Oh, I can't go against Anthony. I love him. I hey, just got to stick with yeah. him. And yeah, Uncle Live, is, he's a beast. He really is. But Anthony can get pissed. He can get mad. And I, I hope he does. I need him to just go out there and just, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Man, I, I know Anthony pretty well. Um, he's kind of been training with us a couple times, and I've known him throughout the years, just coming up in the Midwest. And great fighter, man. I, I just think Uncle Ives kind of. Um, I know. I don't. On a different level, man. My, my, I got to stick uh, with my veteran. I got to stick my heart, with my heart. <laughs> my heart says Anthony. My, okay. my brain says all Uncle All right. Ives, all right. You know? Well, there you go. All right. So, yes, the fight, the fight, and, you know, professor in here says, well, yeah, Uncle Live for sure. But the, the me. It's super interesting to see the live odds here. Uh, Jens, it just said minus three fifty for Murano, so that that means I'm assuming most people have him up two rounds, which would be interesting. Yeah, he's got to be up at this point. When you look at that eye, I I can't imagine. Well, and again, I don't know because you have to look at. Yeah, I don't know. It, what yeah, we're talking about with right that now, last this, round. this round is for sure Semmelsberger's fa in, in Semmelsberger's favor, you know. And if he keeps hurting him, this could be a ten eight. Uh, right now, it is in the course, but. Morono's kind of letting him, and I, again, I don't know if Selmsberg is this, how much he's got left in the tank. You know what I mean? Because Morono seems like he's kind of back up, but he was able to pull the fight into the way that he's been fighting from now, which is throw his shots and kind of get out of the way, piece him up, not get into any of these really big scrambles. Yeah. But then, see, because Selmsberger, here he goes, walks him down. I don't know. Uh, and even there, he didn't land clean, but just optically, it didn't look good, right? Morano yeah, got he looks, up like, as, looks like he's stiffed, oh, he, right? Yeah. The way that those hands kind of go flying back, yeah, even yeah. if, you know, and again, and, and it, I think moving forward, nice, good counter shot. Good right. Go ahead. Oh, the left eye. It sounds like it's going to be so hard for the judges to see that and think winner. Big right hand. Chat, I don't know. It's a close one. Yeah, this is this is tough, man. Summerberg's like, round for sure. I like how Morono though he's up. He's got a minute left. Somebody can still he can still try to steal it back. Maybe we still got time. He's getting out of the way. And now he's just got to figure out to get inside again. He's out of the range of Semmelsberger. Semmels, look, there's that big Superman ish to close the distance. Oh, he's gonna go over that body. He's gonna get the takedown. He's gonna try to steal this round with the takedown. morono has got over under position. Go for the trip. Outside trip. Nope, but he's got balance from Summersberger, man. He's shown yep. great takedown defense this whole fight, even with one eye, you know. There you go. Pummel inside, squared him back up, get him up. See, now right here, I like this. Hang out on that head. Yeah. I, there's nothing wrong with a good front headlock and just try to snap him down and wear yeah. out that lower back a little bit. Man. I feel like front headlock used to be a, a lot more popular position, but now it's just so well known, Jens. I feel like I know so many people would rather go to the back because, like, I, man, if I, you wrestled at all in high school, middle school, everyone knows how to defend front headlock, man. Yeah, they, they, that's what I mean. But I mean, just position. sit out there. When I'm like, yeah. I like to just sit out there and just kind of be heavy and just make them Way work. On the right? head. Just make yeah. them work. 
rip body yeah. shots and just keep pulling I'm a big off fan that of, lead elbow. Snapping down from there, too. Snapping down. Snapping yep. down. And if they pick their head back up, shoot. Because that's what they'll they do to you in college all day with that snap down game. Like that's what I was talking about. Yeah. That kind of that level up you'll run into from the high school style of wrestling to that college 100%. level is heavy yeah, hands, yeah. heavy hands, and snap. And you're just like just what? more what? high percentage moves <laughs> yeah. versus doing the, the fancy splatles and shit. It's yep. just hundred percent whatever is most effective. But man, what 100%. a hundred percent. That was a fight. great fight. I can't believe he knew he felt it again with the eye. He's like, oh, I got to do it. And he had him wobbled. But Morono, that kid is so tough. I don't know if he just guessed what numbers were up when the doctor showed up. But no way oh, he saw. Oh, you think? Yeah. He's trying to look uh, with his right eye. Yeah, for Someone, sure. It's like close, someone's close whispering right his eye. This three, guy's doing this. Three. Yeah. Man. I would like. I, to, I would like to see a picture for, for of my that money, on Monday. I would love Morono to win. Yeah, yeah. That's that's gonna be gnarly, man. <laughs> We'll have to see, chat. What a fight. Yeah, this was a great fight. This is the way to end end the the prelims. Love it. I don't know who you got. Who you got, Jess? Man. Ah, it, it's got to be. I Morono, it's going to like the second round. I can't allow it. It's got to be Morono, right? Unless... We've got that 10 8 out. There's always a, there's that 10 8 judge somewhere. I just, I just oh. remember how the, the end of the second round went. Yes. And that's, I, that's where I'm stuck. But I remember how the first four minutes of that round went 30 27. What? That's got to be Morono. Yeah. Unanimous decision. You got that 30 27. So they even gave him the last round. Stilted. Stilted. And they gave him the last round. Wow. That's scary. Those are some scary judges. I thought he did. I don't know about thirty twenty seven. I love twenty nine twenty eight there, but man, I, I'm not sure. He got he got I, hurt twice. As soon as I heard unanimous and thirty twenty seven, I knew that it was Morono because yeah, of the first two rounds, or at least the first round. <laughs> you know, but I didn't think. I can't believe no no love for the um for like you said the elbows at the end when he was on the second round, and no love for literally having him stilted for. Oh man, Twice. what for three, Two four, knees. three yeah. minutes or something? That knee was Crazy. impressive. We'll have to find out. And I don't know how long of a break they'll do in between now and the main card, but the pay per view. They usually got a, a pretty long open show. Oh, Jens, I'm, gonna, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a leak here. I won't bring my you. AirPods. I'm not Calvin Cater. My man. All right, brother. We'll Thank see you in a minute. Man. All right, yo. Hey, chat. So we got a we got to open for you. Three minutes, fifteen <laughs> seconds. <laughs> we'll see y'all in a second. So here is the first time UFC title challenger, Juliana Pena. Whoever comes for the throne must rise above the expectations of those who know what greatness looks like. Amanda Nunes, she's the greatest of all time. No question about it. Juliana Pena is a huge underdog in this fight. She must block out all doubt, thrive in her own self-belief. I am not afraid of Amanda Nunes, and I've made that extremely clear. And envision a world in which she is the champion. I expect to get my hand raised at any and all costs. So that come fight night, she can make it a reality. Oh, she got caught with the left. Pena's doing a good job of just getting in her face here. Oh my goodness. Juliana Pena is making this a war in the stand-up. Oh, oh, oh my God. This is the type of fight oh, she wants. Oh, oh, Juliana's oh catching her. Oh. This is crazy. Oh, oh. 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 my Pena. Oh my goodness. And now Pena to the back. She's not joking! She's got oh, time! She's she's it. It. Oh, Juliana oh, Pena shocks the world! In December, the women's bantamweight title changed hands. And as the UFC returns to Dallas, Texas, the tables have turned. The challenger retains her GOAT status, but it's her turn to prove it. To take back what is hers. And to let the world know that it's in her power to restore order. First, it's time to crown an interim champion in the flyweight division. As the assassin baby, a Mexican-born brawler who has given the division some of the most exhilarating bouts, is once again ready to seize the title against a soaring contender from New Zealand, whose time is now. Winner of three straight fights, including a pair of explosive knockouts. Oh, oh, he's he's the walk -off. oh my God! Ready to avenge the first meeting and bring a title back to Auckland. 
two rematches, two titles on the line. And enough firepower to set the Lone Star State ablaze with action. She rewrote the record books with the most wins and finishes in women's bantamweight history. And now the lioness is roaring, hungrier than ever, to once again become a two-division champion. I know what I'm capable of. No matter why this fight goes, I will finish her. Yet, it's no one-hit wonder holding the belt. It's the Venezuelan vixen herself, a pillar of strength and execution, who isn't here to give up what she's earned, so much as show the world that she's here to stay. Live from the sold-out American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas, it's UFC 277, Pena versus Nunes 2, and it starts right now. Like, what do y'all think of the new graphics? Like, we have a new, we have, have you seen, y'all watching the stream, what, have you noticed? Have you noticed it? What do you think? What do you think of the new ride? You know what I mean? What does it look like? Y'all, y'all seen it? What up? No shot, astronaut. What? Is it not bad? You guys like that? By the way, let's not forget exclamation sweeps. Sweeps. The PC giveaway today is the last day. You like it? Good. I'm glad y'all are liking it. I hope y'all enjoying it. Huh? Pretty clean? Good. Good. I'm glad y'all are liking it. That's kind of why we had to be, we were being a little quiet. I couldn't say anything. You know how hard it is to keep me shut up? It is craziness. You know what I'm saying? Um, UFC's giving away a one-of-a-kind gaming PC featuring a Ryzen 5900X and RTX 3080 built by Paradox Customs plus more prizes. Enter now for a chance to win. You'll see the link and restrictions do apply. Irish dude 81. Irish dude 81. Man, I don't want to jump too far ahead because we got this first round, but that last fight, man. What do you got? What are you thinking? Pena and Nunez, Mr. Molina. Pena and Nunez. <laughs> man, uh, I gotta go with the goat, man. I gotta go with the goat from a betting perspective. If you can get Nunez. Anything under like minus nine hundred, like she usually is, take that man. Um, obviously, Pena, you know, lasted in, until the second, and then put it on her, and um, just kind of outlast her. But I don't, I don't think we got the best Nunez there. Uh, I like Nunez and and the rematch. I you know, and it is. And then there was something that sold me a little bit. It's just they're like. And somebody said this, I, I'm sure, I think Dana was one, but we know Juliana is going to be on. We know she's going to be on. She's a savage. Oh, she's just, man, she can, she just comes to fight. Right. And then it's like, but what is, what is, you know I mean? How, what is she doing? What is Nunez, Amanda doing? Is she going to be ready? But this time around, I think with that extra fire and the whole deal of doing the ultimate fighter, right, against each other, how much that kind of can just drive you nuts and really push it. I don't think she's going to be running out of out of gas this time around. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I think, like you said, it's going to be tough. I, I think the changes – I, I'll be excited to see the changes that Pena makes because she's going to have to make some changes, I think, when it comes to the stand-up stuff. Because if Amanda Nunes is on, Amanda, she's sick. Like her her, her striking and is it's she's nasty. Go for the reason, you know, yeah. in two divisions. Um, when she's on, she's on. Uh, cardio has never been her, her strongest asset. Uh, so I think the longer the fight goes, again, the better it favors Pena. But, man, she's a savage. She hits hard. Um, yeah, I'm taking that wrestling. Time. And that's what I keep trying to tell people all the time. Wrestling. It's a different world. It's a different kind of conditioning. Failed takedowns wear you out, man. That anaerobic side of things hits your shoulders and zaps you. And if we, and if you wrestle long enough, you just learn how to deal with it, right? The numbness, the burning that you can't make fists and you just learn I how to this, deal with it. Go ahead. I say this all the time. You could be in, in shape. And then still be in a bad wrestling shape. You know, you go to a wrestling practice and you're juiced. You're you feel like you gotta throw up, man. A hundred. Uh, the wrestling pace is, is just different, man. It takes it uses different types of muscles. It exerts different type of energy. Um, yeah. So I want to see if Juliana path to victory in this fight is, is is heavy grappling for me. Just put that pace on her, man. You, you know, uh, Nunez is known for the best cardio, and just to avoid those big power shots by shooting. 
just uh, yeah. not really a failed takedown unless you let it be. You just keep chanting stuff together, and uh, I think it'll eventually wear on her. Oh, my Lord, boy, you are a commentator. I love it, man. I love it. That's yeah, perfect. That, no, let's that go. is beautiful. It's perfect. But man, that's it, right? It's like a, like a fucking truck, bro. Like, yeah. Man, like we, we haven't really seen it with um, – Look at her when she's on, and it, but see that was the problem was she, it was a desperation type. The first time she fought Pena, she was trying to do it because she was tired and People she knew great. she only had a few. People forget that. People forget how good she looked in the first couple minutes of that fight, man. Yeah. She looked yeah. like she looked like vintage Nunes, and then and then we saw some quit in her, man. When the going got tough and and the the tables were slowly turning, and yeah, but that I, I anaerobic is scary, and, Jeff. The anaerobic brother, is scary. I, I think when you're on top for that long. And, and you know in the middle of building a family and you've got so many other things that you think you you know when you're climbing you the like, ladder it's it's easy yeah, to say oh i would do this right? i would do what, this what's that saying like this, it, when you it's get hard to there. wake up for that run when you're sleeping like silk sheets there, there's a saying <laughs> like that right and i, I think for Nunez, man she got used to being the hammer for so long like 100. nobody was holding her shorts you know she was knocking chicks out left and right and it looked like it was going to be that same the same type of fight going into this last one and it looked like that for the first couple of minutes, but the second she started being the the, the nail instead of the hammer, yeah, you just saw her like mentality switch. And I do think she quit in that fight. You know, she she did. Oh, give I know up. she did. Bro, you look how she and, got uh, choked out. She hit all fours and called it a day. But yeah, the wrestling yeah. was too much. The wrestling was too much. Too much clenching. Too much pummeling. Too much trying to time, peel man. you up off you, get you up off my legs. To a failed take, you know what I mean? To getting taken down to try to push back up. It, it was, and that's the pressure. She just in your man, face, and it literally fatigue, melted you. Fatigue, fatigue makes cowards of, of grown men, man. Like. Ah. Uh, and that's one of my biggest fears is to be so gassed out in a fight. Like we see, we talked about the heavyweight factor earlier where some of these heavyweights, they get tired in that third round, man. They're, they're putting their hands on their hips. Their hands are down here. That's like my biggest fear, man. That's, yep. I train my ass off every day in practice when I'm getting ready for a fight to ensure that that never happens. Like you can get tired, but there's oh. levels of getting tired, man. Oh, you there's, are the, you are the, oh. there's levels of getting tired, bro. So that's like my biggest fear is like being so tired to where you're just like, Oh God, I can't even put my hands up, you know? And that's why we push the way that we do, right? When we get in there, we train as hard as we do because I, and I try to tell, I'm telling this chat all the time, you don't, you do not want to be going in that locker room going, man, I wish I'd have ran a little more. I wish I'd have trained a little harder. You want it. You need that comfort. I, I have pushed it as hard as I can. Whatever happens at this point, it, it happens, but I know I'm ready. And the one thing I used to love is if I'm burning, you have to be melted. And that's just that wrestling attitude man. we had, you know what I mean? At I all times, it. I'm going to push it, push it, push it. Same thing if people try to run with you and you're like, all right, I'm just going to pick up this pace. And if you're sticking with me and if I'm, and you just push it to that point where you just got nothing left and you know that deep down, they got to be melted in the process. That gives you something. Yeah. I, I love that, Jens. Yeah. That, that mindset of, and I feel like uh, our gym ha has that mindset too, yes, man. You do. Of like, yes, you it's do. like, hey, man, like you want to go to the deep end? You want you want to go swimming? Like, I'll, I'll hold your hand. Let's go. We'll see who drowns first. You know, like, yep. like we're, we're used no, to hundred percent. Let's go if swim into the deep if, end and drown them. And it, yeah, it's, yeah, like if we're on a treadmill and we're both sprinting, let let's see who who dies first. You know, like, not going up point five. They go up point five. Like you go yeah. up point five, and then like they say, take a break, and you just go right past the break. <laughs> man, I'm not doing. <laughs> You know, everyone's gonna get tired in the fight. Like, if you don't get 100%. tired in the fight, then then something's something's wrong. You know, like that. That means you didn't try hard enough. It's just a, a matter of how you fight when you're tired. You know. Yep, and um, get used to it, and know. And I think that's the biggest thing is having that comfort. And when you ha there's no better belief, in my opinion. And I I just seen um. Oma Plateto, my brother, how you doing? You know, coming in there and, and the same thing is you want to know, man, if I am, if I've got nothing left, I know they have to be tired. If I'm feeling that lactic acid, oh my Lord, they, if they got to be hating life and it'll build you up. You know what I mean? Fifth round, 100%. you're sitting and you're bouncing and you're getting ready and they're looking right at you. And you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I'm telling you right now. You know, they, anybody just, can be good for five minutes, man. I said that earlier, but it's true, people. man. Anybody well, can be a motherfucker for five minutes. A hundred percent. And that's and it, there's so many people that they, they talk about these fighters and these fighters and how they would do this. And I tell everybody, you know, the only difference between a lot of these top level fighters that make it to the UFC and continue to fight is they do the one thing that other people don't. The time they put in the work that the constant training, the running, you know, what I mean, all of the boring, mundane things that we have to do every day it's your lifestyle right it's your lifestyle because that fear of being scared i don't if i get knocked out there's nothing i can do if i get caught in a submission man shit happens there's nothing i can do but i will never 
ever, ever get tired and break because that's on me. And there's nobody else except that that's only that's you. You know what I mean? Everything We're else speaking the happen. same language here, Jens. Oh, I preach what I you just said, and, and uh, <laughs> I have a coaching position at, at Glory, and I preach that, man. Like, when I'm in camp, there's no shortcuts, man. I don't have a piece of cake as a cheat meal. There's no cheat meals in camp. I follow my nutrition to a T. Just I, I want to make sure that that's never a factor, man. That's my biggest fear is, is being to mm-hmm. the point where I'm so fatigued in the fight that I, I do something stupid or my hands drop or my hands are on my hips or I'm fit, like turning away. I never want I never want to experience that in a fight. So – when I'm when I'm in camp, there's there's no shortcuts, man. I'm going on the extra runs. I'm jumping rope after practice. I'm I'm doing all the extra work. I'm I'm making sure I'm waking it. up at 7 a.m. for strength and conditioning. Uh, I'm making sure there's no no corners cut here. Just because I again, avoid that at those all costs, are the things man. that you control. You know what I mean? Right. Whatever happens in that fight, man. Shoot, I might dip one. With, boom. You know what I mean? Like oh. And I, I come to peace <laughs> of that. I I told uh I told my coach that uh, before this last fight, and I. I, I really think that I've come to peace with like with my fighting style, with uh, how aggressive I am. Yeah, I, I'm probably gonna get knocked out one of these days, man. I'm probably gonna wake up don't. after. I'm probably gonna wake up after fight. Statistically, the chances are kind of swaying in that favor, right? Like one of these fights, I'm gonna look up at my coach and say, "What happened?" He's what like, happened? "Hey, man, you got there caught." It is. <laughs> I've come to peace with that. If that never happens, perfect. I, I prefer yep. it that way, of course. But I've come to peace with that. But what I can control is, is my cardio, uh, my body language in a fight. Uh, to ever be so optically. tired that you just get, you can't get off the stool. To be so tired, no. it's such a right. See, it'll we've, never... we've seen it so many times, man. Yeah. Oh, every it, every weekend we see it. Because it, it, and it's so fun to break people. And I know yeah. having the coach that you have, I know James. I know you know. What I mean, he's breaking people. That's the funnest thing to do. That's like the James best part says this all it. the time, man. J- James verbatim says this all the time. He goes. Uh, I made a career of just not going away. Yeah. And it's true, man. Like, sure, he might lose the first round, but like he's literally made a career of just like, okay, you had a great first round, but let's see if you can do that here in the second. Let's see if you can do that here in the third. And he's right. won so many fights like that. And I feel like um, not to try to compare myself to James, but no, man, you should. I, I've I've done that in fights, you know. I, yep. my debut I did that. The guy had a great first round, but I just I was like, Hey man, I'm you not gonna keep you're grinding. Gonna get, yeah, you're gonna have to get me out of here. So you had a good oh, first honey, round, but no, we still got two a, more of those, you know? That's a beautiful mindset to have because, like I said, in the fifth round, going to the fifth round, like when me and BJ Penn were fighting, and I and I knew, man, I could just see it. I'm on my feet, and I'm just like, oh, man, I can't wait to get in there. And I could see it in him over there. He's tired, and he's like, he's dragging. But it's that Iowa wrestling. You go out of bounds, you run back to the center, and you wait, and you sit there, and you wait for them. There's you, nothing. You treat it, every it round just, of wrestling oh, like a blood round, you know? A hundred percent. It's so it's it, 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 it's so demoralizing to the other fighter when they are tired, and you're, they're looking at you, and you're just like, and it's like, oh, my, nice. are you kidding me? I, and really? as, as fighter A, <laughs> As fighter A, who's who's maybe not as tired as, or at least putting on that persona that he's not as tired, you, and that's you, another you, thing. You, you, you smell that. You smell that blood in the water. You're like, yep. oh, you know, I, and that that. It's funny how like, um, if you hurt somebody, all of a sudden, I don't care if it's third round, four minutes in, you get this burst of energy. And but like 100%. before that, before you hurt them, you were so tired, you were so fatigued, and it's like that one thing where people are like, hey, raise your hand as high as you can go. Okay, now raise it higher, you yep. know, and you always have that. But in your head, you're like, "Oh, I'm so tired. I can, I can barely throw right now." But if you hurt them, all of a sudden you're not tired anymore, and you got all you this energy. Rush. Well, and that's it. And the other comfort that you can always tell yourself, and and what keeps you going is, if if I'm this tired, I know they have to be hurting because that's how hard I train. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how hard I push it, and that'll get you through it. That is kind of that left hand or that right hand that has them hurt that all of a sudden you feel that burst. That's one of those things you can say to yourself is like, I know and believe it. Like, you know what I mean? And believe it. Like, I know they got to be hurting. And that that gives you some comfort. Like, man, I got to go back out there and heavy on the head again, heavy on the hands again. Yeah, push yeah. him, push him. You know what I'm saying? It is that, that mentality, man. It's just, it's a mental thing. At, at the highest level, I think everyone's good. If you're yep. in the UFC, you're good. But I think what separates that, that top 10. Hesitation, top belief, and. Is that, it's just a mental part, man. So everyone's training hard. Everyone's good at that point. I, I think it's the mentality thing. And um, It's just hesitation. I know, I know I'm not top 10 plan, yet, but. You're getting there and you're on the pathway. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all that matters. That's you know what I'm heading, you know, and that's what I'm rooting for. And I, I think, I really think that's the, and that's the talk I had with Moreno, um, it was a couple weeks into my training camp and it was after practice. We had a tough practice and, and that's what he told me, man. He's like, dude, uh, you know, you, you, talent wise, you're, you're there, you're hanging with me. You're doing more than just hanging with me, but it's a mentality thing. And it's yeah. true, man. Um, top 15, 
mentality is different than top 10, top five is different than top 10. Well, because it's, then you, uh, the, you know how close you are and see what happens. It starts to cause that hesitation. It starts to cause that, you know what I mean? It's like, I want to make sure everything is perfect. And you, and you want to make, you know, like, I don't think, I don't know if I'm feeling this, but when you're climbing that ladder, you just hung. It's like, just get me in there and let me just, and somehow if you can grab that mentality to go in there on, as you're, as you've been through the wars, as you've climbed the ladder and now all of a sudden you're up at the top. And the one thing I wish I'd have learned as, you know, as a champion would have been like how to get that. Like now everybody's gunning for you. They're looking at you, but yeah. now it's like the, the, the mentality is now I'm going to show you what I had to go through to get here. And that's yeah. what motivates, you know what I mean? So that's mm. what I can't wait to pass that on. And I hear yeah, James yeah. do that a lot with, you know what I mean? That's what I love about Kraus. And he's, he's man, he's a good, he's a gosh dang good coach. He's I hated coach, having man. him coach me, man. Because I don't want him breaking me down. Him yeah, and yeah. Matt Hume, and I'm like, I don't want these ones breaking me down because they know me too well because they think a lot of the same way. And you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> but to have yeah. that mindset, I mean, it's big. It's 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 super important, man. Yeah. And, and I, I we see it every weekend, brother. I hate to keep saying that, but no, like every but weekend when we see you. a fighter either either break from a, a mental lapse or or break from fatigue. It happens all the time, man. Oh, and sorry, really quick, chat. So one of the things with Walt, um, evidently there's a lot of storms that are happening where Walt is at. So he's having power issues and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, but that that this is the beautiful thing. It's going to be us two. I'm having a blast. So me and me and Jeff and Lena, I, I introduced once, but maybe. I, by the way, everybody, welcome. I want to welcome my guest. Here on the stream, Mr. Jeff Molina. How you doing, my friend? You good? Thank you, brother. I'm great, man. I'm great. Enjoying these fights, man. Chatting to a legend. Uh, what, what's there not to love? Well, like I can say, I forgot because we did the one thing, you know what I mean? And let me, oh, we need to give a shout out to, what's up to everybody out there in YouTube, everybody out there on Twitter, and all you out there on Facebook. Make sure you drop over here, Twitch TV slash UFC. Drop in, hit that follow button. We're on here every day doing something on this stream. I feel like it's every day close to it, but the water's fine. And this is the only chat that we can see. So make sure you drive in. Also, all subs go to support the American Cancer Society. So on top of the fact we're talking about fights and, and breaking things down, we're also raising money for a great cause. Uh, it, <laughs> after that. I did, but like I said, so we've got a busy schedule Monday. So Sunday we have a little breather. Monday we're breaking down the fights of fighters who fought on Saturday with an interview. Tuesday we've got the Dana White Contender Series. Myself, Adrian Yanez. Wednesday, man, I don't even know. Like we just dive in and start watching fights again. Thursday we relax. Well, it just depends because this Wednesday we were breaking down the prelim fights, which I still like doing. Break down some of the prelim fights of fighters fighting in Saturday's fights. Friday, we're watching fights of fighters fighting in Saturday's fights. Saturday, we're always doing a watch along. If I got it all in there. Sorry about that. Are you good? <laughs> so what are you thinking, Jeff? What are you thinking in this fight here with Uncle Liev and Anthony Smith? Man, uh, Hart says Smith, just a fellow Midwest guy. He's a good dude. Got in the train with him. Um, he's cornered against me, though. So, no, ah. But uh, <laughs> Hart says Smith. Uh, Brain says Uncle Liev, man. Uncle Liev's a stud. And uh, maybe it's a patch, passing of a torch type deal here, but. I got I got no uh, no skin in the game. Whoever whoever wins, I, I'm happy with. But uh, my brain says Uncle Live here. You know, and I I'm, I'm hoping maybe Anthony he's got to develop a rhythm right off the bat. I I mean, and he could prove me wrong right now and grind it out. But I wouldn't want to get into a grinding fight with Uncle Live. You know what I mean? But if as long as in the beginning everybody likes to go toe to toe for a little bit, everybody likes to kind of get their hands warmed up and get in there, and that's an opportunity that Anthony can go out there and dictate with a couple of those longer shots. You know what I mean? I, but I, as I say that, he's only got a one-inch reach advantage. But normally, he has a pretty decent reach advantage on people if he yeah. can. But just sticking those shots, landing some combinations, and then start making Megamed shoot on a, a, a quote-unquote desperation rather than a planned attack, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, 100%. And I, I don't think the reach says it all. It might be one inch bigger, but I, I do think he's a taller fighter too. Um the one the one fight that plays in my head when I when I look at this fight is the the Glover fight against um against Lionheart man that was a, a mauling and yeah. uh, Glover obviously was champ material became the champ and is uh one of the best fighters in the division and has amazing grappling but man the 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 way Lionheart just kind of looked like a fish out of water uh 
uh, yeah. on his back. Just uh, yeah, I don't like that. Make, makes me think saying. Gonk alive. Yeah, makes me think. Hopefully, you can the... stick him, stick him early, and then maybe have him hurt. But let's not play. I don't right, want to see a Brian fight. You were you know right, 100%. I mean? Everyone likes to, to engage in the striking at the start, right? Just come out. They don't care how good of a striker you are, and that's a perfect opportunity for Smith. To, it's to it's maybe, when uh, he needs to dictate some kind of pace, but again, the way that Ankalaev is already kind of bouncing around, and it, if you notice the open stance, righty versus lefty again, and that's going to be the issue. Southpaw Ankalaev, Southpaw Ankalaev. And again, see how Anthony's just trying to walk his way in. But I I noticed how, if you notice, I like how Uncle like, he's always keeping that lead foot on the outside. Yeah, and I love the subtle feints from both these guys, just trying to get reads, trying, trying to trying to create openings, not, not just waiting for the openings, but trying to create it, trying to get a reaction. And I, I like that. We always talk about that. You know, I always say the first 30 days, that first minute, but starting to work on getting those feints in there. Go out there, throw something heavy, give them something to look at. You know, right here, we started getting that. See, I, I love that. The slap hands, when you got righty versus lefty, right leg there by Anthony blocked. But you know, I love that. that. Feels- like, just because you always hear like open stance, you want to be on the outside of, of that of their lead foot. But no one wants to just stare at someone's foot and be like, am I on the outside? Or are you on the outside? So yeah, a good way to, yeah. to, to know that is just if your hand's on the outside, it usually means your foot's on the outside. So it's oh, a good way to know. I like it. I like up. it. I love it. And that's it. And then, see, you know, the one thing that I, I just noticed in all of these fights in chat, if you keep watching this, if you notice how they stand there, nobody just, man, and I, I don't know, maybe it was me, just take off in a circle. Where's my circling? Nobody's circles were going straight forward, straight back. It's like people want to sit there and they're going to play this man run run a, run a circle yeah, yeah. let's get some it really, circle it going it really seems the the higher the weight goes the less of that circling footwork is where they just kind of stand in front of each other which you would think would be the opposite right brother because the higher the weight goes the margin of error gets smaller and smaller because these guys hit harder so oh, and that's it man, but use- i would go out there and just run a fat circle right off the bat and just get yeah. that going but if you look they're always right in front of each other and unfortunately it's like they swing bats at each other and you're moving forward and backwards. There's so much shape. There's there's no circling, and it's yeah. and especially after you throw a combo and circle off. And like maybe, and I always say this: a lot of fighters, we can fight moving straight, maybe straight forward, and we can fight moving back. But boy, you start adding a circle. I don't know how side to move to this side, way. Yeah. I'm awkward. Everything's a little yeah. different. But I'm surprised at, at especially at a bigger fight like this, people don't jump that side to side and, and just circle. Yeah. I agree. Especially the higher the weight goes, you would think they'd want to do that more just because the margin of error gets smaller. Yes, you may weaken you may weaken their you may weaken their um their straights, but their hooks, and that's the thing. Do they know how to throw hooks? Do they like hooks? And that's exactly. something, but you can with the way that you are circling, you can set up that rhythm where everything comes off that lead hand, what we were talking about, yeah. slapping that lead hand, and you're setting up your power shoulders so you circle right into it. Dominic Cruz is a great example of that. His, his ability to, to to circle left or right, even circling into the power, but like with the intention of knowing that it's going to draw out that power shot. You and, know and what so you're doing, at, right? And that's yeah. I go after it. Go after the power shot. Go after the yeah. power hand sometimes, or like I said, with your pick on that lead hand, especially when you're righty versus lefty. Pick on that lead hand, or especially going against right. another left. And, and it's not wrong if you're doing it on purpose. If you're doing it with the intention of like I'm circling to his power to draw that out. Yeah. You know? A hundred percent. And that's again, the way these two are out are just kind of slapping on hands. See now uncle live when he gets up on his wheels for a minute and moves right and left. I, I just can't, I would like to see people, man, just circle a little more. It opens up so much more. And I feel like these guys are going to open up here pretty soon, but they're both just trying to get reads, just pawing at each other's lead hand. Oi, good high kick. Punch, two punch combination with the high kick. And Anthony ran out of room as he bounced off the fence, trying to throw a big right hand. You know, now see now he's starting to try to get his hands up a little bit. Anthony is, and and that's a that's a tough guard to pull off in, in this sport. It's it's super common in Muay Thai, that big shell, or even boxing where yeah. you got bigger gloves on, but not many people can pull off that that high guard because block, they'll come around. Know? They can hit the they'll come around the, the sides and hit those ears. So you man, there's just to, so much room for error. Yeah, there, you know? and that's why and not you to hold the body. on to the. I tell you, hold on to the visor as you're coming in, so you're protecting the yeah. ears. And you can close because there's not going to be the closer you get, there's not going to be so many straight punches. Everything's going to be coming around the side. So around open guard, up a yeah. little bit and in you go. You and know, just oh, like any defense, there, there's, oh. Did you see the size of the right hand? He tried to throw right. Anthony Smith chat just tried to throw the biggest right hand. 
And then he, he he's so kind of threw it so hard he put it on his back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> sit back for a second, and think about it. But Jens, just like any Go defense, uh, there's a flaw. You know, every, every defense is flawed. There's always a hole somewhere. Uh, but not many people can pull off that high guard. The, the only name I can think of that that's affected with that in MMA is Dustin Poirier. He's real good at just kind of combing his hair. Yep. And it's not like he just solely relies on that, but he's good at, at doing that high high guard defense. Yeah, and it, again, when you get in, in in close and being active and just constantly showing those hands, boom, and shifting the body and making yeah. sure you get out of there, move. Are we limping already? Yeah, was he I, limping I, on I his left leg? Like limp, yeah. Not sure what what went on there. Yeah, Maybe that's is, what shot, is that from chat? Why is he? I didn't see too many calf kicks. Was I just? Oh, he kicked him right on the front of the knee with that rear leg. That's no, I don't like those. And, and man, we've oh. seen it in the last couple of weeks with fighters getting injured. Uh, you know, we had Rakic that like took a, took a low kick or maybe stepped wrong and yes. hurt his leg. Isn't it weird? Man, like, maybe they softened their legs saw, up with too much tra- pad training. I don't know. Like you know, what I'm I saying? saw commentating last night too. Someone took a shot and it, it kind of rocked him, and then the way they 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 took a step uh, hurt their knee, and they couldn't continue to fight. So, you know, and that's something else with all the tie kicks and stuff, or maybe the training of the knee. I don't, but that's one thing when you get kicked in that front, I had somebody, it was my, my piece, my posterior, I think is what they called it. The backside of my knee from trying to check the front of it. And he was kicking the front of my, my knee like that. And it hurt the back of my knee. If that makes sense. You felt that in the fight. Yeah. I I fought this kid, Iwimatsu in Japan. He was throwing a lot of shin kicks to the front of my knee and it, yeah, it ended, it hurt it. It, it 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 tore the PCR, I think it's called, on the back side. Yeah, or something Anthony like that. Smith coming out with a sense of urgency here. See now he started pressure, swinging. See, I like that. Things. Put those yeah, hands no, down and let's box a little bit. Use that right hand, but he got hurt with the left. He's going to go in for a double leg. Interesting to see Anthony engage in, in the grappling here. And the way that he kind of did, you see how he's like he was peering through the weeds to try to look yeah, yeah. in and, and get that takedown. But I don't. Maybe it's because he's feeling this on his and on the. Is it the ankle? Yeah, yeah, that's what it seemed like. And now he's got a little zoom in on the ankle uh, during the 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 break. See, and this is one thing right here again. Anthony's trying to push him against the fence. Uncle Live's doing a good job of fighting the hand. I just don't think like in a in a situation like this. I mean, he can try to peel off that foot, but see, that's one thing. Uncle Live's doing a good job of peeling that foot off. And see, this is gotta be look at Anthony's back the way it's bent over. It's gonna be a lot of wear and tear on that lower back as he tries to pick him up. And, you know, you don't want to be there for too long. Yeah, one, one thing in wrestling you're, you're taught, uh, especially in folk styles, like, you always want your head up. You know, you, you never want to yep, be, have your, your back punched over with your head going down because where your head's facing is where your head's going to go. So if someone sprawls out, you're going to face plant the mat. Interesting and to he, see Smith kind of pull like a seated guard here. you see him drop to his butt like that? He butt yeah, scooted like to try to pull. Yeah, guard. And now and and, he's uh, got that body lock right there, and Uncle Live trying to throw a couple of shots to the right and left. I, I know he's a black belt in BJJ, but – I don't know. Many we talked like about this. I mean, I think guard in, in MMA. some people don't have just Damian just, Maya. Yeah. I, I don't know if you can pull off a seated guard here, man. Well, and that's it. Even though some of us don't have the belts per se, so much grappling and so much jujitsu and so much combat grappling, you start to learn and, and know the sport enough, right? To add yeah. in your side of whatever it is. And that's, I think, and again, it's a rarity when you see uh, a Maya and stuff that can just go out there and just dominate other black belts. In yeah. MMA. And this is a see, this is scary for Uncle Live. If he's gonna sit there and get heavy, Anthony's gonna try to butt scoot and continue to pull guard. And now he's got the the butterfly. But Uncle Live, I think, is just by choice is choosing to be heavy on him. You gotta think that ankle is 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 worn or something. Yeah, that. something's yeah, wrong. Yeah. Maybe it is it could be. I mean, they say the ankle, but maybe it is the knee. I don't know, but the way that he's trying to keep him balled up like this and then getting his head pushed up against the fence, Uncle Live's going to push away. Big shots, the ground and pound. See, and then he's just going to start throwing the shots. Anthony's going to cover up, give up his back. There. He's about five punches away from calling this a day. I'd go three more, but now they got to scramble. Rest playing situation. close attention, man. I mean, it's all, yeah, something must have happened. You know what I mean, Jeff? Something, something hurt him. Yeah, for you, for you to pull guard against a, such a good grappler, and and Yeah, 
And it seemed, I mean, it was almost seemed like it was inevitable because he walked out there and he just kind of hunkered him down, the, pulled the, him the on first top 30 of seconds him. Of the round, though, he looked good. He, he yeah. came out with the sense of urgency, was throwing big hooks, pushed the Uncle Ab towards the fence. He's saying something. I can't even get up on the stool. His leg is broke. Legs broke. So is it got to be his knee and not the ankle? Like that front when he kicked that when he kicked that front of his knee right there. Yeah, there's that so many hurts bones on the that... bottom half of that. But that the bottom half, the kneecap there, that the, you know, and but like I said, the way he kicked me so hard that he actually tore the back side of my knee. I didn't even know what it was, yeah. but it hurt. But right here, you can just tell. Even though he tried to scoot, get in here, he just got overwhelmed. I mean, you can tell hurt. But I don't know, Uncle Live. Look at him just ripping these shots, yeah. and he's already his covering leg up. Is broken, so it makes me think maybe like a tibula fracture or something. That's something uh. I, I've had in a fight before is uh, my contender series fight. I threw a, I threw a high kick and he kind of ran into my knee, but it hit like the left portion of, of my knee slash leg. And I had like a, a proximal fibula fracture after the fight. Oh. And dude, I didn't know for about a month afterwards. And I was in so much pain for a month and I would go lift and I would squat and I would just be in so much pain. And, and then I, I finally got the MRI. And I was like, yeah, your leg's broken, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's so why he hurting. did it when he broke it above the and ankle. Tough. Look at that. They're looking at just above the ankle chat. Tibia and fibula, the two bones down there. Right? Fracture the inside. Fibula, tibia, and fibula. Oh, I don't know. That's the way you want to win, man. But I, I believe that was an offensive injury that caused that. So, you know, all is, all is fair in love and war. I, I don't think that was something that it was like a misstep. So why is this happening? I noticed the chat saying 30 event in a row with a major leg injury. You know what I mean? I'm curious. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what was last week's? I know Ortega, that was his shoulder that got dislocated uh, last week. Or, that or was when he before. pulled out of that. Now was being pulled out of a yeah. – he pulled out of that submission. So is that – that's a win, right? And, and so was this because technically I believe this was caused by an offensive injury. This wasn't like a misstep and out of the blue, his, his ankle Aspinall. snapped or something. Aspinall was the one. Oh, that's yeah, right. remember Aspinall threw that leg kick, and I don't even know what happened. That's right. Yeah. That's that right. is right. But that's – I wonder what's happening. It, it's those calf kicks, y'all. It's those calf kicks. They're, they're, they're game changers, man. And, <laughs> and so so much can uh, can happen in there, you know. Like the – you know, we're, we're throwing our legs like baseball bats, and we're throwing our hands trying to oh, knock and somebody out. All you got to like, do is just connect happen, the top man. of your foot and so many little bones are waiting to get broken in that bad boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, start, I got two oh. broken bones in my foot from my fight last month. Uh, yeah. I fought, uh, June 4th, and I, I got two broken bones in my foot that if I put on my shoe too tight, it still bothers me to this day. You know, So, <laughs> so many little things can happen. You and know? They, don't, they don't cash anything like, ah, it'll, it'll be better in a couple of weeks. It's like, yeah, no. That, that's I don't what know the doc said. Like, it's like, yeah. Hey, yeah, we can put a boot on just don't do anything for a couple months. And I went to practice the next day. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it, it's crazy how you just, yeah, the feet can be busted up. My ankles, like that's the one thing I'll tell you, Jeff, to this day, when it, people always ask about the retiring side, everything felt good, but my feet. I was like, man, my feet and my ankles just don't, just all the the twists just and being on the mats and for how many, X amount of years, years and years and years of just beating on them, the not mats. icing them, you know, as much or just re-injuring, and they they felt like they were getting loose. You know what actually helped a lot, but when What's I was that? over in Australia, I spent so much time on the sand. It actually did make a big difference, but. Really? Unless we work on a get a sandbox in here or something, you know, <laughs> got to keep all the neighborhood cats from crapping in or something. But the sand actually did, ironically, did help did with my wonders, feet. Yeah, you know, yeah. because they, it just felt so loose. And I'm I don't sure know how to keep those things tight all the time too. Uh, yes, in high I don't school. like to be yeah. barefooted. I didn't. It was not. I didn't like being barefooted even in practice. If I could yeah. avoid it, I tried to at all times. And I think that might have been one of the. That might be the old school side of us, right? We all used shoes for the longest time, even when we were training. And then look at Matt Schnell. By the Matt way, Schnell. that kid with that Sumu Darji Man, fight. That, that's a oh, fight I would like Giannis. is Matt Schnell. Yanez. There he is. And uh, that's, what, that's a fight that my management team and I are trying to go for. Schnell, a uh, great dude. I got and to then train they, they show else. Mike Tyson and everybody Mike goes Tyson. Look at Terrence Crawford. Crawford sitting right next to him. I think, do you Tyson, see my man, man behind him massaging his shoulders? They better yeah, be yeah. friends because Tyson be like, I oh, you saw me. the plane video, right? Some, yes, someone was giving him a hard time. Yeah, man. Yeah, 
Yes, I did. Like, man, y'all. And that was warranted 100%, man. That guy deserved it. Yeah, don't don't mess. Like, leave him be. On, and then you just got to keep Come messing on. with him. And, like, you're yeah. going to start dribbling with his ears and flicking. Like, who would do that? You wouldn't do that to anybody. But it's Mike Tyson of all people. Why would you do that? And, yeah. you know, especially when it's things you deal with all the time, right? And it's like, yes, hey, how you doing? And I feel how like Tyson was nice pretty patient, you know? Very patient. In that scenario. Very yeah. patient. And then you got to get those drunkards, man. Them damn drunkards sometimes. Dumb damn drunkards. Right, I'm telling you what. So, with that one in, so now we're gonna get Mr. Pantoja and Perez. Ooh, this weight is class, baby. Right on me, here. I'm telling you, come on now. It's 125 is these two. I like it. I like it. They're both 24 and 6, 24 and 5, breaking down their fights, man. I, yeah, I like these two. I like Perez. I like him. You like Perez here? Predators. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I got stuck looking at this movie. Is that the Predator? Wait, what? Look at him. Y'all see this movie? What? <laughs> I got Pray. Close. Close. Pray. All right. The opposite, All right. actually. I like it. Yeah, no, who you rolling for with with uh, Pantoja and Perez? Do you have a, man, a uh, personal pick? or P Pantoja's coming off an injury is, is the only concerning part, man. But he's he's a monster, dude. He, he's so good. And, dude, Perez what has a What was his injury? I think it was a knee injury. Uh, maybe knee ACL, or MCL or something. Okay. Um, but dude, I, I have buddies that train at ATT. I hear how good he is. I, I, I've heard stories. We've seen how good he is. He, he choked out Roy Val, who's not easy to choke out like that. He's really good, man. I think he's that, that upper echelon of the division. I think he's top three, really. I think he yeah. goes Moreno, Figgy, and then uh, Pantoja. I'd put him before Kai. I'd put him before um, who's the other guy that's knocking at the door. Oh, I, I can't know. remember. But um, oh. yeah, I think Pantoja is really good, man. Perez, um, dude, Perez hasn't fought since his 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 title fight against Figgy. It's been that was like a, two years right? ago. It's, yeah, as you say, it's been a long time. Like two now, years. He could he could be dialed in and, and definitely come in with a new style or something this time around. But we have to see. Um, hold on, I'm trying just, to think. Just, Go ahead. No, to see talking. the way uh, to see the way Figgy subbed them was off a takedown, and he kind of just like butt scooted, butt scooted, pulled for the guillotine. I think Pantoja's jiu-jitsu is probably the best in the division, if not one of the best. And, man, I, I don't know. To get caught in that kind of guillotine and not really try to, like, fight hands or even, like, roll to your back, get mounted, it was just like he tapped from that guard position. So um, Fatigue, fatigue. But, man, it was the first, like, minute of the fight. It, it I happened know. so fast. I know. But well, I, I guess mental fatigue, I suppose, yeah, would be yeah. the way, right? Just... And, of course, you're fighting, the, the, you're fighting for the belt at that point. So I'm sure there's a lot that goes on, uh, especially in the mental – part um yeah i like pantoja here brother i got I'm money on it too I'm okay well good all right well, we, got that, we gotta do it oh, by the way mike davis make sure everybody go out there and follow twitch.tv forward slash mike davis mma what's up my brother how you doing how you doing mike's the man isn't he boy yeah he's i gotta that get we gotta, good, we're trying man. to get him in the pub against gilbert burns brother gilbert burns he's 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 the man I feel like he's gonna get his, his credit real soon. His, his just do credit real soon. As long as he's, as long as we got that PUBG going, it, that that's enough for me. <laughs> Try to get him on do, do you uh, do you game pretty hard, Jens? Um, I ish. Yes, I, I'm, ish. I'm diving into PUBG. Are you get you game much? I used to game a lot, but I'm afraid yeah. to game on my stream. So I just watch fights, break down fights and stuff. You obviously yeah, got yeah. the UFC stream, but I do game. I love gaming. I was trying to get into Apex, but you got to have two other players. So I'm trying to get a group, but, and then I just hopped in old PUBG and I'm hooked right now. I I can't stop yeah, playing yeah. PUBG. Yeah. What are you Let's playing? Go. I'm playing out of Warzone, man. I'm, I'm a Call of Duty guy. Okay. I so you PUBG got Call of Duty? When was, yeah. When it was first like big, like a couple of years ago when it first yeah. popped off and then I got on Fortnite and I'm, I've been pretty hooked on, uh, on Call of Duty for like the last year or so. All right, diving in. All right, so the biggest thing is I'm gonna message you on the um, on the uh, Instagram because I, I I know I follow you. So and then but yeah, I'm down I'm trying to get my, yeah with Mike too, and we we'll start we we'll start gaming. I played, man, I played a little Call of Duty. I'm not as good on Call of Duty, but because there's definitely I want to do some UFC streams. We wanted I want to do some gaming on and get some of these UFC fighters to game with me on PUBG on the UFC stream. So um, is that Let's do it, brother? Is that is is did anybody just see that? Okay, never mind. I won't even talk about it. Play some Apex. I mean, I can do that, but I need to get my crew together to get this game going. So number six versus number it, four. Bro. 
All right, I'm in. I'm in. Stay fresh, 91. What weight class do I fight in? I fight at 125, but I'm nowhere near that weight right now, brother. I'm fat. I was Where just are we living at right now? Weeks. Where are we living? How much you at? How much are you right now? Ish, ish. All right, dude. ish. <laughs> high fifties. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was in Italy for two weeks, man, and, and they have the best diet that consists of wine, pizza, and pasta, man. So that's all there I it was is. Eating. <laughs> I love but it. Back back in the gym, man. I, I'm gonna get the weight down, and you know, obviously, I told you about the couple broken bones I have in my foot. So there's a couple yeah. things I can't do in the gym. So we just uh, enjoyed a little vacation for for the first time in a while. The weather, this last bit, this last August, I hope gets a little hot and muggy, makes it easier to cut some weight. You know, get the yeah, yeah, out a little bit, run outside. Yeah, man, Pantoja is good, bro. I, pe- I feel like people sleep on him. Um, I, he and was talking some prob- shit at the press conference, which is good. I, I like that for him. Let, let's talk some shit. Let's get some more because he has the fighting skills. I just think he needs to incorporate some of the entertainment aspect behind that too, man. Because not many people know of him, and, he, and he's good. And he's he's the cannibal. Like literally yeah. the cannibal. That's huh? You know what I'm saying? It, it's but that's the one thing is yeah, he's he is an angry feller when it comes to Panto. I like him. I like him. Uh he's good, that is cranking. Oh, this is gonna be crazy. Really quick chat. What? Oh, Viz. oh TSM Viz. All right, I'm in. Yeah, for sure. I got to make sure Anthony Smith broke his leg, so he's going to the hospital. Also, it was his leg that was broken above the ankle? Did they say what it was? I'm sure we'll find out. Remember, Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern, we'll be breaking down with highlights, fights of fighters who fought on Saturday and possibly an interview. And so, plus, anytime, people can just drop, jump in. I'm, I'm just saying, Jeff Molina, you want to drop in, interview, just, just saying on Mondays. Heck yeah, man. I don't know how you're doing. Bro. Keep in, you know, keep up. Let's do it. And then, yes, Walt Harris. We we lost Walt with the um, weather. I think right now the Bama weather is is an issue. Right can, now. can we get Mike Davis in here? I, I think he's available. Oh yeah, I don't know if we throw on it. Well, now we have the, the cut. Look at it, my man. <laughs> we got to. I don't know how it's set up. Don't, the mods probably just went. No, no, we just had everything set up. <laughs> red flag, red flag. Yeah, 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 red flag, red flag. I got to get the set up. I don't know how it works. I'm, ex- I'm excited to see how Perez comes back after two years, man. That's a long time to not be fighting, you know. And I want to see how he handles the first minute again because Pantoja, he's a mean, he, he's mean. He's no, fast offense, starter, I, too. Yes, he's very fast. And that's what, yeah, by aggressive right off the bat, going to jump off and not let you get any kind of rhythm going, right? You know what I mean? And that's a hard thing because that's the first way, a good way to derail somebody. Go right out there and not let them, they're like, ah, oh, man, I can't get this, I can't get this. And instantly, right, I always tell people, pushing that rock up the hill, right? And once you yeah. get to a certain point in the momentum and it's going downhill the other side, but to be able to get in there and rob the bat and just shut them down. And then it's like, man, really make them dig deep. And like, you're not going to get away with this. You're not going to get away with this. The mental side of it. Yeah. That's why the first minute and a half is always my favorite. First 30 seconds. Yeah. It's uh man. Live betting has become one of my favorite things to do just because like, you can tell a lot from that first 30 seconds, minute of a fight. of how like, <laughs> It's really going to pan out. And of course, one shot can totally change the momentum of a fight, but most of the time, it's kind of easy to tell like where the fight's going to go. Okay, wait. So you live betting. like You can bet while the fight is going on and and be like, oh, I'm going to put – I got to get into this betting. Yeah, so like after the first round, uh, in between yeah. that, that break, you can you can put a live bet in. So like after seeing the first round, you're like, man, this guy's whooping that. And of course, anything can – like if the guy well, gets clipped – Of course, but the, the, still, the, but you could still do that. Ah, oh, I didn't realize such things. Yeah, brother. I'm All a right. full degenerate. If you need any tips on okay, degeneracy, you, Then we're going to keep talking. All right. Hey <laughs> – we need to have that one. We need to have our one odds maker and our one gambler on all the on, when we do all these watch alongs. That Let's might be it, your, all right. Oh, I'm your guy. all right. We'll drop him in. Man, who's Jez, the one that they up? do for the UFC now? Vinny, Vinny, oh, they got the, so many shows now, bro. They got like uh, odds breakers, the live they bets, do a couple of them, Komodo. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I but it'd be cool to have one in the last month or two. Hold Jez, on, uh, what's Go your ahead. opinion on uh, on ring rust here, brother? Well, With now, see, people always ask, years. see, people always ask about, you know, I mean, people start asking about that ring wrestling, but it just depends what you've been doing, like mentally, whatever, what kept you, what kept you away from the ring? 
right? And if if, if like things in life and that might you might be down and you're not training because you're you're too busy dealing, but you're still fighting because like it's all you know, like right? Or you know, sometimes it's a healing process and you can change who you are, get away from the like I gotta stay in this grind. We go back, revamp, refix, remodel, you know what I mean, redesign who you are, and you can come out there and and just explode because you know how it is when you haven't fought in a while and you've got that energy and you're fired up you're like you don't have no hesitation you know the youngster yeah. fighter youngster fighters they just i'm gonna just gonna throw 50 shots and let two get through i'm gonna throw four shots and let three get through you just want to fight you just get out and just start mixing it up right so if you take those yeah. two years off or whatever it is and you get that kind of mindset then there's no such thing as ring rust i don't know i'm going real deep but does that make sense what i'm saying is if you've had man. if you've had pardon me shit going on in your life and you don't fix that now you're just going back in like man you know what i mean your, your camp sucked your life isn't where you wanted to be and you got these that that's that's ring rust right but if you've got you went and you fixed and, and achieved and changed things and you're fired up to dive back in there shoot that's reinventing the wheel you know what i mean yeah, I think. yeah. Now, if I'm hearing you correctly, <laughs> it, it's kind of dependent on what you were doing. Uh, yeah, and if you got it in fixed, and, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, and if you got it fixed and you were able to repair, redesign, you know what I'm saying? I could take a car that's beat up and I could leave it in the garage because I'm too busy because I can't fix it and then go ahead and race it again in two years. Or I could spend time on that car for two years and when that thing comes out, it, it's a completely different missile. It's like, good Lord, look at it. You know what I mean? What'd you do to this thing? You remodeled it, you rebuilt it, you repaired it, you took care of it. You fix it, and if you do that to your body, you see what I'm saying? Th then the, the ring rust is like I don't I wouldn't call it rust, really. It's just like it was a benefit. Yeah, no, if that I, makes I agree, sense. <laughs> I agree. And I think in Perez's case, man, he had a bunch of canceled bouts. I think uh he missed weight a bunch. I, I think uh I it's one I think one other time it was the, the opponent that that couldn't make the weight or he had weight complications, but I, I think multiple cancellations on on, on his fault of not being able to make the weight or some sort of complication. So, but he looks a, fired a up now. Coming. You know what I mean? Yeah, and he, he made the weight fine. He looked, he looked good on the skills uh, yesterday. So, I'm excited. 6'2 in the UFC at 19.5%. Oh, look at number six. So, it's good to see him. I mean, again, it's like this. It's, you know, he's looking fired up right here, right? So, now the question is, is he firing himself up or is he legitimately fired up? Because, you know, no matter what, when we get in the cage, we're fighting, right? It's just what did we do to get when we got in before we got in there? I don't, it's the best way I can explain that. Yeah, no, I agree, man. Like uh, a lot of times some some antics that happen, you're like, is that nerves? Is that is that what they do? To, like, And everyone's different, of course. Like uh, you, you go to a locker room at a, at a local event and you see so many different Way it's people are um, such a trip in it. Getting the, ready I for a that. fight, right? Some of those guys put on their headphones and they're jamming out and they're rapping, and you got other guys that are beating their chest and they're screaming, and then you got a guy that's super quiet, just sitting in the corner taking a nap. Like everyone's <laughs> different, you know? Right? The ones that are taking a nap is just crazy. I'm like, Woo dang, my man, I love it. The shorts are pulled up, and here we go. Oi! See, and that's that Wasting no time again. Here. Oh my god. But Jesus Alex is moving Christ. backwards and going. But see, the problem is, as much as he's trying to load up that end, see, Pantoja's going to get right in your face, and Alex has already tried to shoot for a single. And I like this from Pantoja, man. You got a guy who hasn't fought in two years. Let's let's not Jump give him any time right to now. get those cobwebs out. Yeah. Oh, and he took his back. Jumps you see what I mean? And he's like, wow. it just overwhelmed him he's right so off the bat. He's fast, just figure force the body. And that's exactly it, Jeff. Just overwhelm him right off the bat. And he's like, man, I wasn't expecting this to happen and start derailing him instantly. And this is not where you want to be 30 seconds into a fight, completely dry, not, not much sweat, and you got a guy on your back. And right? it goes and back not, to not what just we, a guy on your back, but a guy like Pantoja, Pantoja like one of the best grapplers Boom. in the division. Already throw, throws 11 shots, nine significant strikes, and a takedown. And again, like I said, when it comes to pushing that rock up the hill momentum-wise, like I said, he walked right out there and just derailed him instantly. And look, even though he's cranking on under and he's got his he hand stuck, he's like taking thing, it right across the nose and trying to submit it. And he's so good at, from this back position, just pumbling his hand and moving your face, trying to just look how he's your nose. his face up it, right there, trying to get the arm underneath it. Look, yeah, he's, he's an asshole there, you know, and that's what you're supposed to do, man. Is he's so good at pummeling his hands back and forth, back and forth until he finds himself under the chin. But it looks like he might now he readjusted. 
And this, Ken's this the is Mega so Man painful, Smith man. screen is still showing. Is I don't so have painful. control over he taps. that. He tapped him. Wow. Like, do you see what I mean? But you go back and watch the beginning, Jeff, what he did right off the bat. He went out there and overwhelmed him, started throwing right in his face, jumped off, and capitalized on those two years of timeout. And that's what, again, Perez, I've been out for two years. Where was that? Like, ah, oh, let's go and bite back. Ah, 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 and just start, you know what I mean? And just fight. But he just got overwhelmed. But that's Pentoja. He just didn't wow. give him a chance. That dude is good, man. He is good, man. I, I think he deserves a title shot, man. Okay, real uh, he needs, quick. He needs to get his name out there a little bit more with uh, the mouthpiece. You know that this is an entertainment uh, industry. You, you, even though he's a, an amazing fighter, I think you gotta you gotta sell the fight a little bit. You so. have to talk a little bit, right? Just part of the game, you know. But I, I think he's learning that, you know, because he's got the talent. He's got that part down. The dude can fight, obviously. But, but see, I mean, just right here, you watch, boom, and he's just, entertaining, man. Golly, just walking through. Just walking through everything and just throwing. It's rolling. And, and not the best technique, right? Kind of going no, Terminator style. No, I didn't style. need it. Feet are squared. He's not really doing the best technique, but, you know, just, just walking he towards just, him. Just. Yeah. He just didn't need it, and they just kept walking him down. And that's the part. Like, Perez is trying to move backwards, and he's like, I don't do it. Hey, um, I don't know if the, if the mods can hear me or not, but did they get the – uh? we had to change the – we need to change the – um. Oh, you can hear me? Oh, we got okay, okay. Thank you. Sorry. I mean, this type of jaw crank, dude, like it's that I'm it's, more, I'm surprised more people jaw. don't do that, Jeff. I'm surprised more people don't just crank across and just and go right after the mouth. Like I tell people all the time is put your put this wrist bone right in the mouthpiece and try to just cave their teeth in. And I, I don't mean to be gross, but you just crank right on the mouth. Stop messing with the neck and put it right across the face and just crank that thing. <laughs> Man, uh, my old jiu-jitsu coach used to say, anything below the nose below the nose is the neck. Is <laughs> anything below the nose is the neck. So just, you know, that's all free game, man. Um, and a lot of times it hurts so bad or they don't want to get their jaw broken. I remember Cub Swanson it's talking scary. about that. I remember Cub Swanson got his jaw broken from Frankie Edgar in, in that fight. Just It was a jaw crank. Cub didn't tap, and his, and his, and his jaw got snapped. It's it a one, horrifying one feeling painful. when you get cranked like that and it's on your jaw. You're like, uh, it'll Cubs make you it was, panic. It said it was the most painful thing he's ever had to go through in, in his fighting career was the, the surgery and all the, the drinking out of a straw for weeks. So after after that, after that fight, he got put in the same position in the fight and he tapped so quick because he didn't want it to happen again. And a lot of times you get that over the jaw and they'll pick the chin up because it hurts so bad and then you get the choke, you know? Yeah, it's and that's – I don't know. I'm surprised everybody – Oh, and what a perfect card for him to have this performance on when, when they're fighting for the interim belt of, of for the, the interim of the division, belt. You know? He's ready to kick the door down right now. You know, he's. I mean, that and was he, yeah. And he, like Joe said, he just made a statement, man. Like it doesn't get much. Most than wins that. in UFC flyweight history with nine. Figueroa's got ten. Benavides with thirteen, and Demetrius Johnson with thirteen. Yeah, two of those guys aren't even in the in the UFC anymore. So yeah, and the way that he, I like that he's fired up, and the way he's, yeah, I mean, most finishes in flyweight history, and he's sitting there with six, Demetrius with seven, and Figueroa with seven. Look, he's ready. Look, he's like, I'll go in two weeks. He's he's ready now. I love him. You said he's got to talk a little bit. <laughs> I love him, man, and I think he realized that at the press conference he had a line that was like. Uh, I'm letting my kids fight this weekend. Talking about uh, Kai Car France and Brandon Moreno, and I, I like yeah. that that little. Uh, that little well, he went out there and from, made a know? statement quick, and I mean, if you're if you're Perez, you know, again, I go back to I'm not sure. I, I mean, it's tough to say. You can't. I'm not going to say ring rust or anything, but because Pentosi just did the right fight, you know what I mean? He did the right thing, and he just jumped on him. So even though whether or not we quote unquote ring rust. You haven't fought in two years. I'm gonna dive right in. You know what I mean? And find yeah, out. Yeah, I'm not giving you any time to, to warm up, you know. Well, none of that feeling. I'll okay. Now this kid, this Sergey Pavlovich, second longest active UFC knockout streak. And he, he he's big. Sergey Pavlovich, he's just a thick, thick person, Jeff Molina. He is a thick, thick person. And you know, Derek Lewis will. He likes to come back. Like he'll take some shots and kind of allow you to think you're going to win, not on purpose all the time. But then he has that knockout power pretty much at all times, right? Yeah. Ooh, it's going to be a tough fight. 
Man, I, I think Lewis just has uh, that detonator, you know, just that, yep. that, that off switch. And skill for skill wise, I think Palovich is, is the better fighter. I don't I don't think Lewis is uh, technically that good. I, I, that sounds terrible. This guy has a ton of knockouts, and I, I don't mean to be. He makes it work. He makes but man, it work. Dude, heavyweight, it's just about being athletic. You know, if you're a sheer athlete, you can get away with making a lot of mistakes. And that's why someone like DC was such a, like a unicorn in that division because. He actually was super technical, one of the, an amazing wrestler. I don't think his striking was the best, but his, his grappling was just on a different level. He know? made up for it. He guys. made up for it. Inside and close, the way he dropped a steep A and stuff. You know, I mean, he made up for a lot Lewis, of things. Man, it doesn't matter. He, you you could be winning two two rounds and a half of the fight, and then he has that that off switch in, in his hands, man. So uh, I'm excited for this one. This is a as you see the the champ. Juliana Payne walking in. But see the now champ. this. But when you see Nunez like this. Now, I understand we got anger hype. We're fired up. We're getting ready to walk in. But do we have gas in the tank? And that's all. And I'm talking about it's going to be this, Jeff. This is going to be that, what we're talking about, that wrestling. You're going to have to wrestle. Unless you can hurt her fast, you're going to have to wrestle. It's going to happen. And whether or not, you, if you want this fight standing up, you're going to have to sprawl. You're going to have to defend takedowns. You're going to have to push away from the clinch and without tire. You know what I mean? So we're going to find out if you prepared yourself for the kind of fight I think we're going to see. And uh, from what I've heard from her coaches, um, she, she's ready for this fight. She's, yeah. She's, well, she's and then hard. again, having to deal with all of that ultimate fighter and the, the back and forth that happened. Yeah, and she, she made a, a move from ATT. She didn't do her camp at ATT. She did it kind of her own. She brought in training partners. She brought she brought in coaches. So sometimes um, we That we could that be a, a good and bad thing, but I think this sure. might have been the right thing because if you we build the right lot. people around it. And you know what the biggest thing is? You just got to make sure you don't bring in yes -em. Yes, yes, people that are just yeah, whatever yes, you man. say, whatever, mm -hmm. like, I don't feel like practicing. We're not practicing today. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel like sprint. You need to have, like I always say for me, go grab that old timer who has the stopwatch that'll just give you the middle finger and go, you're doing this, whether you like yeah. it or not. That old you school can't wrestling have, coach. You got to have yeah. somebody that runs those practices that you, that you don't like because you're like, because otherwise you can convince your friends. Guess what we're not doing today? Sparring. You know what I mean? Guess what I'm not doing today? running sprints whatever yeah. and they're like whatever you say whatever you say you know <laughs> and that's the easiest path right yep, like no one wants 100. to get up and go on a run no, no one wants you to gotta spar 10 rounds that's the easiest route I, to take. Hey, if i'm not bitching and complaining i tell my coaches you're not doing it right if literally if i'm not complaining and just, that's why they call me little evil it's because of that exact reason i sat there with that cup pissed off and just ah, 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 and militant yeah, ain't yeah. you a little evil bastard today i'm like yeah <laughs> i am you know what i mean oh and i like that name i want it you know but that was it is you don't you just you can't have the that's the thing about having yes people around you is in a situation like that because there are going to be days you don't want to do it and you just need to have that old time that says well you're doing it and my yeah. point is to get back to it hopefully when she now that she has ran this is kind of her gym it ain't built around her in the aspect of, you know what? Not feeling today, everybody. Well, tomorrow. All right, well, we'll do it tomorrow, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we shall see. This kid right here, though, this Pavlovich, you know, just looking at him, he just seems like if, if, you were to, if you were to put a picture up for somebody who was heavy boned, a heavy boned individual, it, you would put him on. He would be the poster boy of heavy bones. You know what I mean? He just seems like he just looks like a rock. I don't. Yeah, just, <laughs> he just dense. Uh, yeah. He's got his Man, dome Derek is Lewis big. Is, his is, hands is, are big. Yeah, I wouldn't consider Derek Lewis a lighter bone, though. You know, like he's oh a, he's no, a hundred percent. He's, he's but a that's dense what I mean. Well. But when that's you look at this match tank, yeah. But see, Derek Lewis, he can swing. He can throw. And that, like I said, 6'3", 264 pounds. But just this guy just looks like that. He gives off that that vibe. But yeah, with Lewis. I mean, the one thing he's not, you can't never count him out. Every second he is, he is functioning. He's a threat. And that's what I think Derek's entire career has been based on it. That would be scary fighting somebody like that, even into the 
third, fourth, or fifth round, and they can still knock you out with one shot. That's got to be yeah, horrible. Still put your lights out, yeah. Hundred percent. But you look at this kid tied fifth longest active win streak UFC heavyweight division with three, 12 wins by knockout, and their 12 first round finishes. So he's got to do in the first where Derek, he, I don't know how he does it, but he can kind of roll with the shots and make it out of that first two rounds, but he'll put you out at the end. And he's, he's scary all the way to the last bell. Yeah. We, we saw it with, uh, with Vulcan. I think Vulcan was winning that fight until the last 30 seconds, last minute. And, <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, he just has that, that detonator, that, that <laughs> off switch. Uh, he does, he do, got, do you see this fight going the distance? I don't, I don't, I yeah. think. Like I said, I, I I get I'm sure chat gets tired of hearing me saying all the time. The first thirty seconds, let's go. You know, the first it just, thirty it just, seconds, you, you can gain so much intel from it. It's it's a little more difficult with the heavyweights just because again, yeah. you know, they, they just have that 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 one thing that can put your lights out. And that's it. And they tend to move a little slower. But when it comes, and I don't see anybody shooting a low single right off the bat. You know what I mean? They're going right in for a for a, a, a over under body lock. But they're gonna kind of walk and out there. I think it's important to to note that man Lewis hasn't done so hot at home. Like when he fights in Texas, he. I didn't want to bring that up. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think he's won, bro. <laughs> we talked that's about terrible. It. Yeah, uh, it's it's bad to say, man. But golly, yeah, I hope he can pull through for the the state of Texas. I hope he does it for Texas. I mean, that's his one thing. You know, is he's. <laughs> I just, he he cracks me up. He's, man. he's due for one though, man. Like, come on, let's, let's get him a win in Texas. Look at him. It, it, it's just, yeah. He, I mean, just his whole career, everything about him. You know what I mean? It, it's I, he, I love him. Every it just his vibe. What is after fight? <laughs> you know what I mean? It, he's it, always it's clowning. Just like, he's uh, just something it's authentic. You know, it's not. He's not trying to be somebody else. It's and I think that's why people appreciate it. He's just being himself. He's a funny dude, just naturally. Yeah, he cracks me up, and then and he can just turn the lights off quick, which makes it, you know, what I mean, I like it. AK Snoo, do it for Texas, right? I love it. I love it. Go for Texas. I gotta go, but um, we'll have to see, man. We'll find out. But I, yeah, this is gonna be a good fight. I think fifteen and one is, you know, and again, one's coming off a loss, and he's again, he's. I want. It's got to be in his head. I'm sure he's probably been asked. You haven't won in Texas in a. You know what I mean? It's like, how about y'all stop? T- that could be a good thing or a bad thing, you know? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it could be motivating or it could be like, you know, disheartening. <laughs> but look at this. But when it comes down to it, most knockouts in UFC history, second most wins in UFC heavyweight history was 17, and notable wins, Blades, Volkov, and Francis Ngannou. So, you know, it's he's been in there with everybody. Is this a passing of the torch? I don't, you know, I know, yeah. but we shall see. We shall see. I'm excited. I'm excited. We're going to have to. Oh, he's in. He's fired up. Look at him. He looks like his version of fired up. He could. The beast. Oh. I'm excited for this one, man. Yes, I, I'm very much. Main card's been uh, what, all finishes? Yeah, they're not playing around. I think everybody's caught up by the by the, the magnitude of the crowd or they understand how yeah, big. We talked about that earlier, man, but that. that it's definitely a factor. I don't care what people say. I fought at the Apex uh, three times now, and then I fought in front of a crowd in my debut. And it's like, I don't, I can't, I have to fight in front of a crowd for my next fight, man. Like, yeah. you can't, you can't give me the cake and then take it away from me. You know? It's <laughs> like, I fought at the Apex. I, it's cool for what it is, but man, put me in front of a crowd because it's different. It for yep. sure makes a difference. And I'll tell you, I had, I had the best of both worlds. Like I said, when I fought over in Pride and stuff in Japan, because there'd be fifty some thousand. It'd be the Tokyo Dome full, but it was just, it was loud when you came out for the fight, and then boom. Then it was then it was apex during the fight, and then it was boom! It was massive again when the fight ended. Like what? What did all come the Japanese from? are like very respectful in that aspect. Horrible. They're very, it's uh, like Wimbledon. It's Wimbledon during the yeah. fight. They're just they're clapping when you can hear a pin drop, and you can hear the coaches just talk to you. But then when they know that the fight, oh, yeah, yeah. And they they come out and be like, oh, and then they just and go, they're they're going, they understand certain they're, they're oh, clapping they at the on. right time. They understand certain positions. A hundred percent. They knew That's the cool, guard, man. and they really like to the guard and stuff like that the guard pass yeah. and they were yeah. clapping on the guard pass that's awesome man. we're booing when you here in america you get like <laughs> rick flair woos you know oh, when, yeah. when, when they think you know there's, you there's screaming stand, they're screaming stand up yeah, yeah they're screaming yeah. stand them 
<laughs> always, always. Yeah, I love it. But yeah, it's so that was the one thing I always tell them is I got the best of both worlds fighting in pride for sure. And Shudo and stuff over there in Japan. Yeah, yeah. But because then when they would erupt, you there's that many people, you know, and then yeah, the antics. They were really big on set, you know. The, the, I like that. The lights and the show and the you know the the the, the, the pre-show where we were hanging from scaffolds and yeah, they've yeah. got this big, you know, all the lights and stuff. I'm I sure you it. have some stories from fighting in Japan, man. Like, oh, it's like something. the way you were paid or like oh, what was it's, the contract. It's, yeah, and yeah. You hear they've got all kinds of stories. I I've heard stories. Uh -huh, I don't know, yeah, yeah. but you know what I mean? First round, here we go. Now, the first 30 seconds right out there on the monster energy. Now, you know, and that's the one thing is I like how Lewis is always down. You have to just kind of like he kind of sags back and see if you're going to get too aggressive and, and charge him. And look at Sergey's kind of just. And he'll make you pay, man. You know, inch, I know you see how he, look, he's inching his way in a little bit. I like that flinch, flint, faint, faint, faint a little bit. Try to get him to commit and throw that hand from too far out. And see Lewis if he can catch a, you. Like deceptively, uh, such a good counter fighter. He just waits kind of for you to go first, and he'll, he'll come over the top with a big hook from either side. Like, like that. right there, right, right there. But then there's here they both started swinging that right Wonder hand. Pavlovich hurt him. Pavlovich got that right hand. He's Pretty got him. He's, got he him can't back get and too up. Crazy here, man. He's got a oh, smother. He's oh, he's back and down he goes. He's gonna take oh, three more, wow. and they stopped it. Wow. Overwhelmed him. Overwhelmed him. Lewis I don't not know. too happy with that stoppage. No, man, he, he was the, the body language is important, man. You can't drop to all fours like that and just cover up. Like I, I maybe you could have let it go on a little longer, but it's also just the you know, the referee. But no, I get what see that's it. what he does. He kind of folds back like that and tries to load up that one big shot, right? And but the problem was when he fell the way he did with the shots again, what we were talking about, body language is everything. And that that ref has to make a choice quick, right? And I, I don't know, maybe he could see the punches. We're going to see the slow motion. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he has a different angle that we didn't see, but... You know, these punches maybe, were... Do I agree with the stoppage necessarily? No, but I, I see why it was stopped, you know? Yeah. I, I don't think it's too too crazy of a stoppage. You know, there's a big shot right there. Yeah, yeah, the the only thing was they were wrist, and then the that one hit him, another one hit him. And see, then he starts kind of flumbering forward like he's looking for you. And that's the problem is right here. See the way he goes backwards, and he seems off balance. He's sagging backwards, and then when he gets hit, and then he falls yeah. to all four, and your forehead hits the canvas. You know, okay. Now think about this. If that was a bad, if, 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 okay, if he didn't stop it, then he fell for it and he was out and took two more to the head, we're all cussing out Mergliata. Boo! You should have stopped it sooner. That's why I don't want to be a referee because of a situation just like that. Most referees, like, you know what? I'm going to wait sure you are flat on the canvas. And then you got the crowd screaming, stop it. You've got commentators, stop the fight. Stop it! You know what I mean, and they're yelling, yeah, and then you get a fight like that. Seconds, man, you yeah. shouldn't have. And my man fell on all four, and he fell and he hit his head on the. If you're conscious, you don't fall and face plant on the canvas. I don't care how you wake. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. now you're forcing that referee to make a choice when you're against heavyweights. You can throw the heaviest hands on the planet, right? It, it's. I, I, and when sucks, you're face but, down on all fours doing this, you, you best believe the follow-up shots aren't going to feel too great either, you know? Well, but imagine, Jeff, again, how mad they will be if he was out and he ate two unchecked shots to the face, yeah. you know? And that's, again, that's, I mean, that's tough. But the way that he fell and he kept backing up, backing up, but I know that's kind of his way is to back up and throw an overhand, a big overhand shot, but. The crowd is going ham. Yeah, man. In Texas, man, the Texas curse lives on for Lewis. And it does suck and because, you know, Pavlovich didn't do anything wrong. Pavlovich no, is just no, trying to fight. he did his job. He did his job. He did what he was supposed to do. And, man, I, I don't know if the, the, the result would have been different if, if Murray Lotta stopped it 20 seconds later. Maybe Lewis would recover. Maybe he wouldn't, you know. Well, and it goes back to – and it goes back to the idea that he was trying to sit back and wait to try to land that one big shot, but he was getting overwhelmed with, we got 17 punches to two in the amount of time that it, there was, you know what I mean? And that yeah. was it. He threw the two shots right there, but the way that he went face down right up here, or you can see it, boom, 
and then he lands some big shots, overwhelming him. I'm curious how he got cut. Then that big right hand on the air hole, the uppercuts. And see, what was even worse was the fact that he started covering up Jeff before he even fell. And then he took two more and he face planted. And it didn't look like he was too hurt. I don't know if maybe no, he didn't back but, up. But like the way he bounced right back up and his legs didn't look wild. It's, it's hard. Yeah. Again, see, you, you said you it. Just, you bad. just can't you fall said like that, though. You just can't fall like this. Like if he would have done something else, like maybe just leaned on the cage a little bit. But just falling like that, man, it's, it's not a good look. Well, and that's what I keep trying to tell everybody, Jeff, every time is I go, that right there. In a situation like that, the way that you fall, like we had, I can't remember chat, but I think it was the last week or something, but the way he fell, he literally just teetered back, boom, just completely stiff as a board and hit the canvas. That referee is on a run, and it doesn't matter that he popped up and was ready to go. It doesn't matter because he already made it up in his mind. The way that you fall, again, the way that you react – is is huge it's massive yeah yeah and i've done referee courses and they talk about that the, the way you 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 fall the way you go down if you brace yourself they know you're still there but if if you fall back and there's no brace that they know your your brain and it's kind of like what just happened there like you don't willingly face plant unless even for that brief second you're out i mean yeah, no yeah. matter how much if you've got any kind of you know wit about you wits about you you'll catch with your hand you know to, and go straight yeah, into a face plant. I agree. And, and I kind of agree with both sides there. Like, yep. I do think it was a little early stoppage, but I get why he stopped it because of the way he fell. So it's a situation right there that to me is very, and I'm glad you said that about the way that your hands land. See, have you've done that. So that's kind of cool. So you really are taught like that, how your hands go and how you fall. Yeah, referees is, are, are, are told like if, and there's, there's certain names for these, the way like you fall too. Like if, um, like if, if you fall and your on your arms are extended in front of you while you're falling backwards, that's an immediate like the referee's told to like immediately get in front of the other guy. Um so he doesn't, you know, further attack the, the guy that, that just got knocked out. Because th this this is like a flexing position, I think it's what it's called, where like you fall back and your arms are extended and they're told to immediately step in. And, and there's certain positions that just kind of show that like your brain's not there, man. Like it's not not in tune with your body. I love it. All right, so chat, we got a, we got a co-main video um, for y'all to check out, and then we'll see it. We'll see it when it ha we'll see when it's over, and we got a fight to watch. Let's go. Have a 2019. I knew Kai Kerfans was and is a dangerous opponent. I definitely won the first round. I dropped Brandon twice in that first round, uh, but he did well to adjust. He knocked me down in the first one, but then I started to put pressure on him, second and third one, and I won. It was very close, it could have gone either way, and uh, he ended up edging out a decision, so it's a fight that I've always wanted to get back, avenge that loss, you know, I'm a different guy since then. He's always been the underdog, he's always been the smallest dog in the litter, but nobody ever outworks him, and that has shown. When they count me out, underestimate me, overlook me, that just fuels a fire. Cody Garbrandt fight. Everyone's saying, oh, Cody's just going to walk over this guy and, and then he's the next challenger for the Flyweight World title. Early knockdown for the Kiwi! But um, I was more than ready. Oh! oh that's it! Kai Kara Front has done it! Unbelievable. This dude's got some high-level striking. After that fight, everyone was counting me off against Ashkar Ashkaroff, a Russian that's high-level wrestling, and people thought he was just going to lay on top of me. And once again, underdog spoiled the party. So now I've got this brand of right in front of me, and I'm going to go in there and shock the world once again. Last fight, I lost the flyweight title. I feel like I did enough to win the battle, but definitely hurts, man. And at the same time, I love when it hurts because that means to me, like, it's important to me to we will all be back and now we are in Kansas City in Glory MMA. They are pushing myself to get better every single day. So right now I feel like the best flyweight fighter in the world. He felt what it was to be a champion, to be at the top of the world. Now he wants that back. Moreno is a man on a mission. I'm more hungry than ever. Kai Karafans proved all the evolution in his game, but man, I'm on a whole different level than the last fight against him. He got back! Brandon Moreno oh! has done it! I dropped on twice in our first fight, so uh, this time I'll make it count. I don't see it going all five rounds. I see me putting my hands on him early, finding the shot, and putting him away. I can see some holes in his technique, so I need to put pressure there, man. Throw my hands and kick his ass. Whoa! 
I want him to bring his A game and bring the fight to me. So then when I knock him out, it's so much sweeter. Oh, he stopped him! Moreno, don't blink, baby. UFC 277, Mexico will have the champion again. He looks like 125 kilos, man. He looked huge. Really? Uh, he looks like a big dude, man. So I think uh, Figgy hits just as hard, if not harder, than, than Kai. And Moreno was able to take those shots, no problem. Um, or he did he get dropped able to, in, that, like, in their last that, fight. Just but. the war with them. But I'm saying just the wars that they had, is it, it has to change you, right? It has to change everything. It has to change you as a fighter to go through those kind of wars. And then to have, and now you've got a rematch. Well, a rematch-ish. You guys are fighting again with Kai Carter France. And, you know, Moreno's, he's on a path. And like you said, you get to train with him. So you know he's on a path. He's changing everything up. So you're not going to get the same. You're going to get that, what I'm assuming, that scarier version. Or he's taken all the things that he's been through in the last couple of years, used them to improve and, and build on top of what was already there. Not rebuild. You know what I mean? We get into some fighters where we just got to rebuild everything. Because we've just been on a bad streak. We've had bad things going. We got to just erase everything, take everything out of the room, clean everything out, and, and, and start over, right? But that's not, I don't think that was, that's not Moreno, I don't, in my opinion. Yeah. Maybe you can answer and that. I, and I don't think that was the case. Like we see it all the time. Yeah, like right? every weekend, a fighter loses their fight, and their reaction to it is always like, oh, it wasn't my fault. The, the accountability isn't always there. It's always yep. the gym's fault. It's always the coach's fault. It was always, uh -huh. always not always. enough this fault. You know, there's there's always that that variable. And they don't like to take accountability for the, the L, and it's always something else. And we see them switch gyms, and we see it all the time. It happens all the time. A fighter loses a fight, they, they join ATT. The fighter loses yep. a fight, they join AKA. They, they, yep. they leave the gym they were currently at or whatever. I don't think that was the case with Moreno uh, in, in the last title fight. I, I think um, – he didn't really have coaches and he didn't really have many training partners in, in Tijuana. And he, it was a move he was going to make uh, inevitably. And it just so happened to be after that last fight. And uh, I feel That's like what I mean. so it's like, I, he kind of just stuck right where he was at. And now he's just building on top of it. He didn't just blow the whole house up and like, that's it. I'm starting over with, that's what a lot of them do. So it's basically what and, they're saying. But, and he won a world championship without really having a head coach, which is just crazy to think. So it makes you think like, where, where's the ceiling for a guy that, that man, his story is incredible too. Like, was in the UFC, got cut, uh, I the know. or the ultimate fighter even before that, got cut, came back to the UFC, won the belt, became a world champion, had these crazy fights. And, you know, his story is just uh, – it's, it's really cool, man, the, the adversity he's gone through. And uh, I think this is just another part of his story is losing the belt in a close split decision and then winning the interim belt uh, here here tonight. So You know, and the one thing now is, is Kai Carter France walking out, speaking of having champs around and speaking of the vibe and things like – I don't think you can get a better vibe than 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 just the terror that this gym and you know what I mean what from and you got to think that's motivating man it's got to be motivating because it's just the vibe that's in there and they're all feeding on it you know what I mean there's champions all over the place and as having being a part of that old school militage where there was two champions three champions at one time everybody else underneath you were champions because you know what I'm saying. Um, they, they, everybody underneath you is it, it, the the it raises everything. Yeah. And that's the one thing he has going for him in that aspect is everybody's all fired up. Everybody's got championship fights, everybody. And he's just part of that crew. And he's like, now I'm going to go get me my belt. <laughs> you know, and that's the one thing I like on, on his aspect, like you said, but getting back to Moreno, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm excited to see what he's done with all of you out there. You know, in Kansas, cause, yeah, I'm, I love it. And for Kai, man, just just speaking to what you were saying to piggyback off that, man, like to kind of see people before they were champs and just kind of see their story and just know like it's doable. Like for me, my teammate, um, former teammate, I guess Grant Dawson, like to see him take a similar path that I was taking. Right? He got he's mm -hmm. six and zero in the UFC now, and and he was on Contender Series, and we fought on the same promotions on Victory and then KCFA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he got there a couple of years before I did, so I wanted to follow his path, and I'd always ask him, like, hey, man, like when I got put on Contender Series, like, hey, man, what's that like, you know? And to see 100. somebody that was my teammate and kind of see his path, him getting there, and then I was taking the same path, and it's easy to, like, kind of put yourself in their shoes and just be like, I've seen this. I've seen him. He did it. I can do it. Yep. You know, I, I saw somebody 
that I, I know how he works. I, I'm doing the same thing he's doing. I know I can do it. Well, and I love it because now you're not wondering. I wonder what they had to go through to get there. You can read about it. You can try to study and listen to other people. Oh, they did this and this. Or you can watch them literally. And if that's the one guy, thing. And that's the conversation day, yeah. I was having when I was talking about doing the Ultimate Fighter and when I was coaching is I have literally watched fighters go from the ground to becoming world champion and like the Matt Hughes and stuff like that. Jeremy Horn, even though he didn't get the UFC belt, but to see what he's in. And I was like, and I have personally done this, gone from, from wanting to become a fighter to becoming the UFC champion. And that was my big speech. You know, one of my things I was telling those guys when we were doing the ultimate fighter, because I had lost to Joe Lazon and I'm like, look, but I go, things happen in each fight, but I understand the pathway one because I did it. And two, because I watched others in my gym do it as well. You know what I mean? And that's yeah, the yeah. one thing. And that, even training that, at a legendary that, gym, like Pat Miletic is like, I'm sure that was, inspiring even 100 percent coming up you were seeing 100 percent. i knew like, Milikic and i'd seen them fight and i couldn't believe i was sitting there watching jeremy horn yeah. and i'm like oh i see pat Milikic <laughs> and you know yeah. what i mean and I fired up like but a see, kid in the candy store yeah 100 percent. 100 percent. i hear i get to see these guys and i'm like okay and that's the one thing that when you got Milikic literally picking you up your first day of practice like how you doing, Mr. Militich? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Saying. Don't call me M Mr. Militich. On your best you know? behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right off, polite. And thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. You know, 100%. But see, I like that the way that he just walked out there. Again, with Moreno, this is what I really like about the conversation. I know I kind of keep browbeating on it, but the fact that with this change, these were all positives for a positive that he's already, you know what I mean? Everything was still, a, he's just building on top of it. So I'm excited to see him fight. This is going to be a lot of fun. I like that Kraus, man. I like him. He's the man. This guy single-handedly changed my life, man. I, when I got to the gym, I was, uh, I was 19 years old. I was one and two as a pro. And uh, I had retired after my third pro fight because I was undefeated as an amateur. And uh, after I was one and two, I was like, I'm done. I retired in the locker room right after the fight. I remember Josh Neer, my coach Jason High was there. And I told him, like, hey, guys, I'm done fighting. There's no point anymore. I'll never be in the UFC. My record's trash. And I'm, I'm 19 years old at the time. But I just lost yeah. a post-split decision in someone's hometown. And um, I remember I was done. Like, I remember I was like, it's whatever, man. I'm just going to quit. There's no point in doing this anymore. That night, I go out do some underage drinking, get pretty drunk. And I'm like, I'm not retiring. <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm in, no way I'm retiring. It, I'm in the air. And then I, I joined uh, Glory MMA full time and, and Krause has almost single-handedly turned my career around. And you know, again, I, I was it. super young, but just, uh, man, took me from I a one and two pro fighter to, uh, I don't even know my record now. I think I'm 10, I'm 11 and two 11 now. And two. Um, 11 and two, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, fighting for the biggest organization in the world and, and I'm ranked number 14 in the world at, at flyweight, man. So, uh, Krause is the man. I'm really excited to see Brandon's improvements and and just watch uh championship. The first thirty bus. seconds. This is the first thirty seconds. You know, I'm still not from you, seconds. man. When it's, I'm commentating, I'm gonna talk about the first thirty it. seconds all the time, brother. Because look at how they're staring. I like it's that a, mean mug. Are we gonna circle? Look, he's got that mug. So is he gonna run out there and try to land a blast right off the bat, or is look at the way Moreno's kind of just he's he's got a zen going. You know, just kind of breathing in. He had these in. five round fights, and I like that for him, man. I I, I don't think Kai slows down. I, I'm not saying Kai has a bad gas tank, but Moreno's been here, man. He's he's been in these five round fights multiple times. Well, if you want to get favor. into a war of attrition with him, that's a boo boo. Unless it's yeah. your style, and let, let, then that's when we're going to have a great fight, right? Like I said, yeah. I'm taking you to deep water. Well, I'm going to deep water, but I'm taking you. Go, then I'll beat you there, and then you're both going to deep water and trying to drown each other. That's what makes it the best fight on the planet. You know what I mean? One hundred percent, the best fight ever. It's when somebody, they, they hold on to something and they're too reserved and they're like, I'm afraid, to do, I don't want to let it go too soon. Or, yeah, man, these two will just go ham right off the bat and just start punching each other. It'd be crazy. Or at least I that's know, I'm a little think. biased, but 125 pounds, man, just the technique you see in this division is just is beautiful. I love it. You got to be, got to be biased. You look at me. I'm the godfather of the 155 pound division. <laughs> There's no weight class better on the planet. You know what I mean? <laughs> Every time I see yeah, these guys take the center stage, I'm like, yeah, I'm the proud and godfather. To think, <laughs> and to think uh, this this division was once going to get scrapped from the UFC. You know, there was talks of people were getting cut. People were getting sent yep. to different companies. And they were getting really cool to see the resurgence, man. And and it's gotten more entertaining. You know, it wasn't that entertaining. For me, it was when DJ was there. And 
was demolishing everybody, but to the to the common, I guess, casual, it wasn't that entertaining. It because wasn't of the that way much. He was dominating. Yeah. And now we got exciting people like Morano, Kai Car France, who's knocking people out. And the biggest thing was, Mark, can you, can you even get enough twenty five pounders? It's like, trust me, there's a lot of people out there. there man. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's there's a lot of people out there. And, and Figueredo, you got to give it to him back in the day. And that's again when it comes to power and stuff like that. When Figueredo came in here, he really he flipped this thing around quick. Yeah, and, and Nick Manor a lot has done a great job of, of bringing the right talent in, right? He's not bringing in these boring wrestlers. He's bringing in young people like like myself. And there's Mohamed Bakayev and these younger guys who, who are exciting and, and really always looking for finishes. And you got I really two feel like champs just whistling and going ham for him. I'm not interrupting you. Keep going. Yeah, man, man I, I just think Mick has done a great job with, with bringing in people like Moreno, Kai Car, France, even doing that Ultimate Fighter tournament, just brought in a ton of talent and really – like was a rebirth for the division, man. It's exactly what, what we needed. And now 125 is one of the best divisions in, in the UFC. It's on it. Well, and that's the one thing, because I always said it, you know, back in the day when I was fighting at 170 and no weight class, and I was able to create, help create the 155 pound division. I go, my whole goal, like I'm so old school. I was like, I don't ever want anybody to say they're too small to fight in the UFC. You know what I mean? I don't ever want anybody to be too small to fight in the UFC. And maybe we'll get that 105 pound. I don't know. You know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the first 30 seconds. But look at the mug. See, and then you just seen two world champions sitting there hooting and getting ready. Look at him. Kai has got that. He's got a mean mug going on right Ooh, now. There's no better feeling than a co-main event, main event type feeling, you know? Oh, yeah. The first 30 seconds. This is it. First 30 seconds. Look at him. I'm telling you. Is he going to run across the cage and Yahtzee do a quick jump? Boom. You know what I mean? That'd be I wish you could never be too big for the UFC too, chat. All right. So look, they start off mean, but what I love is they're professional about it, right? Is I still have my game plan. I'm still gonna stick there, and that's why it's not a street fight, which I love. And they also know it's it's not a 15-minute fight. This is 25 minutes, and that extra 10 minutes is huge. So a measured approach is, is good. You know, and I like how they again this feeling out this this, this process, you know, it is Kai doesn't want to – nobody wants to make that first uncomfortable step. But I like this, the faint. I want to see someone shoot a double. Shoot a double. Oh, much love, Zipwig. And then, so like I said, now we're just kind of popping that jab, popping that jab. By the way, chat, really quick, you know we're on the last day? Exclamation sweeps. The last day to win that PC. I believe this today is the last day UFC's giving away a one of a kind gaming PC featuring a Ryzen 5900X, a Ryzen 5900X, and RTX 3080 built by Paradox Customs. Plus Wait. more prizes. Good little shake go. hook landed by Moreno there. Look, is he shot. hurt still? Okay, he's still got to be hurt. Like they weren't going to wave it off, but now he's like, I got to wave it off a little bit. Check it, check it. Like no, two middle fingers. Did he? Is he middle fingering on purpose? I like <laughs> that. Sure that's on on, that would be awesome. But <laughs> Been playing some head games, and, and now that the fight started, I can talk a little bit about Moreno's game plan. Part of the game plan is to grapple in this fight, so you can expect uh, some oh. upper body, some upper oh. body throws, maybe oh. grappling to the legs to come up to a body lock and and look for a takedown there. Okay. Well, here's the question: Has he? Has, is he still in the feeling out process? Should he have started to close this up yet, or is he still? Is he on on par? He's, he's on track. It, it, it was towards uh, the end of the first, uh, second round that we wanted to start grappling. Okay. I like that high kick he threw right there, but, man, I like it. Again, he's got that feeling out process. I, you know, he just kind of sits there and he's just waiting patiently. And that's the one thing is I like that Kai isn't – he's not just charging in. As much as he'd like to get in there and get a piece, you know, throw a couple – throw some shots – He's still being pretty um, pretty passive. And, and people don't know this about Kai just because he has, you know, a lot of knockouts and, and, and is good in the striking department, but he's more of a counterfighter. He kind of waits for you to go first. He forward pressure, forward pressure, and, and the way, he waits for you to throw something, and then he, he counters back with the big hook, and that's how he's knocking people out. So it's, it's interesting that's, to see him try to go first. Oh, see, now, oh, one went high with the kick, and France goes low. To try to sweep that, he almost swept that foot off the ground. Oi, all right, man, this is okay. Ew, I'm glad, to, I'm glad they're keeping reserve. I'm glad they're sticking to their 
to the plan because right now I'm just stuck watching but man <laughs> you just have that feeling somebody there is a different yeah there is that different feeling oh, oh there was look. that hook just missed just or did it land it landed enough yeah but i, I like that I think, I think it checked in the top double jab right hand you know it oh, i was stuck watching chat but again he just kind of he's just balancing down that double jab right hand or well, actually wouldn't have been a double jab with the straight right and then the left hook Try to catch the foot. It's the third time that little check hook comes over the top. She's coming right over the top of that guard. Get in there. See, the one thing I'm going to give Francis, even though it's slow, he's circling. Oh, he tried to throw a big monster right hand. He went over committed, and there's that level change. Now we've got Moreno in on a single leg. I liked it. He waited, let him get a little overzealous with that overhand. Dropped it down. He's going to climb the body and take his back. Ish, but and, now we got to. This fight is the something hands. we worked on a lot. This camp was switching from the the legs to to the body lock and good defense by Kai. Nice way of getting out of there. That right eye, no. What is that? All right, but he was able to get back to his feet. I like it. Oh, not only break the body lock, but create separation, get space to go back into the open, man. That's a problem a lot of people have is they'll break the body lock when they just remain in the clinch and they're still getting grabbed. Oh, yeah, man. I like that. He ran out of there like it was, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the house is on fire, kind of. He took off running. And that's what you want to do get away, get back to the center and start over. You know, and he's starting to attack a stalk a little more. You know, see, there he goes in with that big right hand, which. I'm glad that Kai Carter France is still throwing that big overhand right, even though we know that Moreno's gonna try to level change and shoot that takedown. You know what I mean? You don't want to yeah. get you don't want to get um and, and that's, just, that's so Kai's quick, best I guess. Strike is is his overhand. You know, that's how he's knocked people out in the past. He's shorter than most people in the division at five four, and he knows that he's got a nasty overhand. He dips his head down, all his weights behind it. Yeah, he swings it, he swings it. And Moreno ate that one uh, right on the chin. Kind of walked through it. You know, and that's it. I like he's going to chase him down and try to get that deep kick short time. I can deal with it. I'm all right with this feeling out process. Not bad. Not bad. I like. I like. Oh, he walked him right down and mugged him. Oh, I don't know how you score that one. Don't score it and just wait till the next round. Just leave <laughs> it, give it a tie, you know. Carry over. We're going to do a carry over to the next round. Love it. The 11 to say, ironically, total strikes, Moreno has 11 and Kai Carter France has seven. Okay. Sometimes those those stats can be a little misleading, you know. I'll go it, after, it, it, but then if you go ring generalship, Kai Carter France was more of the stocking. Yeah, and I don't put too much kinda, stock into the, the significant strike count, man, because like what they consider significant. Oh, it's mind blowing. I mean, you know, someone can like get hit in the chest and that's. That's significant. one significant strike, but then the <laughs> other guy can put you on skates with the shot to the chin, and that's also the same significant strike, you know? Here we go. Here we go. Now. I do like that advice from Krauss that you just heard there. If you don't have the takedown, punch on the break. You know, shoot to the legs to come up straight and just Always shoot again. Cap and I love it. Always capitalize you know, on the break because you know their hands will be down and their chin will be up. Smack. And if you know he has good defense, he's going to defend the shot, so might as well hit him off of it. Pummel, pummel, bang, and smash as they break off. I like it. I like it. Now, that's the other thing again. The one thing is, see, I, there you go. Now, the one thing that I, I, nice knee on the break, which worked, is, yeah, Moreno is definitely waiting for France to engage, and this might make a slow fight if you're normally the counter puncher. There's a good jab. Stick that jab out there. There's a leg kick. All right, by France. I like that Moreno jab 100%. I like his jab. He's got a nice jab, man. Just turns it over nice, stays nice and long. And him being the taller, longer fighter. Utilizing like that. that, yeah, utilizing yeah. that range. Inside leg kick. It's just patience. It's gonna be, oh, here it goes. You know Moreno's about to just cut loose. 
We shall Commentators see. talking about Kai's. This is his first round, five round fight. You know, and that's that. I don't know. Yeah, but we'll see again. You've got five rounders in your camp all the time, and they know what to push. You just mimic the workouts, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I just, the big, oh, he well, went for a big high kick, missed it. Moreno's going to get on his back. Now we're going to try to fight the hands again. Moreno's mm-hmm. going to throw in that single, get one leg right in, push him up against the fence. We'll have to find out. He does a good job just holding his position. Now, Kai's good. He's weighing him down. Look at that. He's starting to slowly pressure him down, pressure him down. He's gonna, he wants to try to get that leg right in. Oh, went good for a big elbow, elbow right there. GG on the break. Big leg kick by France. Oh, I'm telling you. There it is. Double jab right hand. I like that, Moreno. I like those jabs. I wish he'd throw more. Yeah, I like that to set up the power shot. Not, not just throwing like a naked cross or a naked rear hook. Just setting it up with the jab first. Oh, he went for a trip. and then ah, I like it. Then he, as he was backing up, throws that high head kick just in case his hands were down. It's something and you only see at 125, Jens. You're, you're not going to see that at heavyweight. <laughs> you're not going to see someone go for an outside trip, miss the take, then come up with a high kick. High kick, I guarantee it. But I like that double jab right there, too. That's Moreno. If he just shows that one, two, he can do this all day. France can't get in and touch him. Boop, boop, boop. He's moving well. Good moving. I like yeah, it. They're circling more. Guy Carr is really good at is covering the distance with hooks. He'll throw a hook, dip and roll into the other hook, and he'll switch his stance as he does it. See, now that the right there, I like how that jet, that slap, there's that lead hook. Moreno's going to start trying to pick this up a little bit. I like that side to side, jab, jab, boom. Um, why is it interim and who lost it? Figueredo's still holding his belt, but what was it? He Why couldn't he? Why couldn't he? Said he had a finger injury. There was an injury, another injury, and so now this is interim. Oh, just missed with that one, two, popping that jab. Moreno's head movement, slide the leg out of the way. We'll see. But now, like I said, again, just that process, the patience of these two. I love it, ish. I like that. Yeah, both of them taking a measured approach, not wanting to make a mistake. And, you know, at the highest level, one mistake could be what costs you the fight. So, are, are the legs hurting and adding up on Moreno at all? You don't want to take to me those calf kicks for sure, either way. You know, I don't think anything's, I don't necessarily know either one of them right now. You know, that's the one thing is right now the game plans are still. Who's winning? To be honest, like I, I, they both are really. They're just in this feeling out process. That first thirty seconds has kept going. Calf kick, calf kick by France, but then Moreno just pushing forward. Here comes Moreno, busy hands. I like that mid-level kick right there too. Moreno's gonna just sit back and hey, all right. All right. How, how how are you guys scoring these rounds, man? Chat, what, what do you got? Who you got so Chat, far? Who do you have? Who is Jeff the man Molina fighting next? Is it we? Who knows, man? Maybe uh Mikhaev. He's he's been chirping at me. Uh I like Matt Chanel. He's a good dude. I got to train with him. Um Ooh, dad, he's actually one of the reasons I, ah. I love it. But, Chance uh, calls the fight. Can... I love it. I love it. Dang, either one. Let me see. See that kick right there. Yeah, I love either one of those fights. Yeah, both these guys training leg kicks, man. Uh, this is money in the bank for a five rounder. You know, I mean, I, I wish there was more to tell you all, but it's just kind of look, he just kind of missed with that high kick. They're just, again, the significant strikes 25 25. It's really that. It's a little bit back and forth. They're both technically just kind of. You know what I mean? They're they're technically sound and nobody's really breaking yet. They're holding. I'm seeing they're a holding. lot of two O's for Moreno. I'm seeing a lot of one ones. 
They're they're holding they're 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 staying composed, but I can't see it lasting much longer. But we'll have to see, you know. Now again, that feeling out moving back side to side to side. Moreno seems to be picking it up a little bit, but oh a nice sweep takedown by France going into an arm bar ish by Moreno, but Kai better drop down. Otherwise, Moreno's got a closed guard. Now he's going to sit in the guard. Here we go. Moreno's crafty off his back, man. But like we talked about earlier, how uh, how effective jiu-jitsu is nowadays from, from bottom guard in MMA is, isn't as it was back in the day. And Moreno has a cut. Oh, big shots. Moreno's got to try to get up to his feet. He took too long. He tried to spin one off. Wow. Missed, ducked underneath big it. First minute in this round, Moreno's cut. Yep, right on that eye. Francis, now he gets to see that. What up, man? Huh? Do you still mess with this? I love this. Kidding me? No way. This, please. Yeah, it's cut, man, but it's underneath it. But here we go. So yeah, now, if you want to, if you have a cut in your eye, that's where you want to have it. Is underneath, not not bleeding into your eye, so it doesn't affect your visibility. You know, and that's the other thing is, it, it, Moreno is still the one standing out in front of him, cutting him off. It's it's France trying to see, trying to lunge in with that big hook, eight two on the process and that kick, popping that jab. I like that. We talked about earlier, Jazz was uh, optics, right? Optically, it's not a good look when the judges are looking at a fighter and he has blood coming out of his face. Yeah, but the one thing I do like about it is he's also out there and he looks like he's stalking. He's in front of him. Yeah, you know what I mean. And he's yeah. side to side and he's walking him down. And France is trying to land those two shots and then he moves. He's out on that outer track doing all that circling. And so that's one the way that it's Moreno come. Oh, nice counter one two right there. He punched him just too far out. Moreno did. Kai landed two right there. Beautiful. Made him pay for it. Yeah. Yep. Yep, but I like that again. Get there's that calf Ooh, kick yeah. by France. That's a heavy one. And now he's looking to attack. But I'll tell you what, he's starting to he's he's really starting to pick it up. But I like France because he's circling. And now when I say that, he's kind of stopping right in front of him. Oh, I don't know. See, but I I can hear what Rogue is saying right there. And I, this is coming down to will a, a war of will and keeping your composure. And I think Moreno's starting to lose his composure a little a bit. Little bit man. You got to think maybe that fight. first minute got him a little frustrated. But Having the blood, right? You know, the, he's, he's over, bleeding. He's, the he's, couple he's of oversetting a little bit. He's yep. oversetting a little bit. Got countered pretty pretty gnarly off one of those, the one-two that you talked about. You know, and that's kind of France. You can tell he's, he's kind of making it. He's counting it right here. One, two, one right there. There you go. Oh, he came back with a calf kick of his own, though. That time Moreno did. Attacking the back leg, too. Yep, I liked it. I'm sure you can speak to this, Jens, but, you know, old Muay Thai, they would, they would chop the back leg, too, and, and that hurts oh, it's 10 money. times worse because you're not used to, to getting hit there. That you back can, leg you is can not lead. It's conditioned. always softer. It's always softer because you're always back there. You can't plant down on your back foot. It's kind of – you can plant heavy on the front, but you, you kind of will step – and tap on that back foot, but it's always up. And if you can long kick back there, jab, cross hook, long to the cross the thigh, oh, it's a money it's shot. Gnarly, yeah. Money shot. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Not too many people. Everybody's always picking on that lead leg, but it's a beautiful thing to step in. If you can that set hook it up quickly. Keeps close, and you can take a big step yeah, and rip it. I like to rip it right across the front where they almost flinch because they yeah. think they're going to get kicked in the cup. And you just lay the thigh. It's like laying a bat across the front of both thighs. Yeah, yeah. Two for one. And it's because you step off to the side. You're, you're in a safe position. Hook. You step off. Lay that shin right across the front of both thighs. Hoof. And it's a, yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah, getting kicked uh, on, on your you're not conditioned leg, the leg you're not used to getting kicked on it is, is terrible. And it's your terrible. power leg. Charles I mean, Buffett, that's your terrible. power leg. You lose your power leg. It's just in general, like even that is just yeah. tough. Oh, oh he's liver, he's the liver. The liver. Moreno got it back it up. Hit him in the liver. He's curled up. You can do what you want. Fight's over. Let's go. Moreno did it. Let's go. Kicked him in the liver. Let's go. Caught him backing up and was able to get the top of that foot right to the belly hole. Told you the Fuck greatest yeah. shot on the planet, the liver. 
did it. Melted we talked it. about it earlier, There's nothing Jen. you can do, right? doesn't matter how tough you are, how good your chin there is. There's nothing you can do. And the beautiful thing about it, Jeff, that I love is you're wide awake. The body shuts down. You're fetaled up, and there's nothing yeah. you can do. Your brain's telling you, hey, keep your hands up, and your body's folding over. He was doing so good up to that moment. But, you know, that was – that was oh, that was it. Oh, man. And that's, he just got extra aggressive. You know what I mean? I liked it. He, he's got to be extra aggressive. And it was, wow. what a shot. Show of respect, big time. The liver. And, and Moreno was losing that round, man. That, that was oh. the one round I, I was banking for Kai. Cut him. Good ground and pound. Capitalized on the slip. I felt like Moreno was getting frustrated, overextending. And wow. Just for Moreno to, to land as that he up, As he was backing up. As he was backing up. And it just, Figueredo was getting booed. I better see a I better see a cast on that finger or something. <laughs> Man, uh, it, it was kind of odd because uh, he, he said he had a finger injury and then he said he wasn't going to fight Moreno because somebody from his camp said something that that was racist or something like that. But uh, I'm not I'm not too sure what what happened there. But man, if, if someone says uh, something that that you find racist or you didn't like the remark, you would think you'd want to fight that them would even motivate more. Right? You. You yeah, you're like I'm going to hit this guy even harder now. You know, like. Ooh, right oh, he liver, got man. him. He got him no right question. underneath the arm. He just right. I mean, that was, was beautiful. It a switch kick? Or are you show it? Let's see if they show. No, I think he just stepped through. Stepped through. You know what I mean? Left to the oh, liver, man, left leg. Switch kicks aren't that common in MMA. Like they are in Muay Thai. Just because I see this. He watch right here. Big the jab, and oh, then he, he just steps stepped, through. He just Look stepped at the momentum into it. he gets in that. He kind of exploded into that. He almost kick, skip man. kicked it. Moreno yeah. won with the kick to the liver. Body shot knocked him out. Or. Stop the fight. up with ground and pound after he went down. And he couldn't because he gone. couldn't. Uh, he, he was fetal. There's nothing he can do. Look at Kraus. Look at the guy trying to grab Kraus. He's like, man, yeah, get yeah. up off me. What That's a shot. Cool. There you go. He got his. I love it. Got his champion. Ah, oh, congratulations to all of you. That's perfect. Heck yeah, man. That's awesome, brother. Sounds like a what? Chat? It sounds like a bat for sure, right? And the way it just rolled underneath that, boom, the shot. Woo! And then I've dropped people even with the block, like hitting the elbow yep. and their elbow kind of digs into their own liver. Man, that, when that's nice. You cut nasty. that thing up there and then again, kick in front of it. Step yeah. off to the side and lay that shin off the front. But man, what? Wow. Can you acknowledge the tribal chief Roman Reigns? He just put Brock Lesnar down for 10 seconds. Is that like WWFE? Tribal chief Roman Reigns for beating Brock Lesnar? Jeff Molina, you, you, you much of that WWE? I'm not, brother. I used to do when I was a kid. But... <laughs> I, as a kid, hey. Rick yeah. the Dragon Steamboat. Ah, that's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> there he is by TKO. The new interim. So, nice job, Kai Carter France. Doing good. Look good. I right, just that uh, it boop. There he is. I like it. Amazing fight, GG. It was a good fight, chat. Yeah, interim flyweight champ again, Ralph. I mean, not again, but interim because there's gonna, another Figueredo fight. The fourth. The fourth. It, it's happening. They're going to be stuck until y'all get up there and look at this kick. The boom stepped in, and my man just, hey, you know, I don't think he was, I, I know France wasn't expecting him to cover that kind of distance, and he yeah. thought it was going to be head. You know what I mean? That's He, he, left, a, he left a little bit of a rhythm, I mean, a little bit of room. Underneath uh, there, and he did the correct thing. He he had the baseball back. Everything was up. right. The yeah. hand was ready to take some sting off of it, and just everything was right. A it's just overextension. Ugh. Misjudge, misjudge, I guess. But by the way, chat UFC exclamation sweep UFC is giving away a one of a kind gaming PC featuring a Ryzen fifty nine hundred X and RTX thirty eighty built by Paradox Customs, plus more prizes and now for a chance to win UFC. Dot AC forward slash so you'll see the link. Boom, get in the restrictions to apply. Exclamation sweeps. Look at him. Figueredo. 
Is this gonna get? Is this gonna get cringe? He's going in the cage. Let's go. Here it comes. Oh, hey. Oh, they're going to let him come up into the cage. Don't take away his moment. He got right in front of him and totally messed him up. My man's trying to say, Moreno yeah, he's got trying to give shout outs to his family, his he's wife. He's trying to give shout outs. He got Figueiredo just kind of sitting there looking at him. Oh, and there he goes. I love him. He wants to fight in December. Oh, no handshake. It's like WWF. WWF. Somebody's booing. Oh, there he goes. Oh, not bad. Vicky looks like the 145 pound champ right now, man. He looks he, big. Yeah, he does. I love this. I'm stuck. Ah, uh, too many. Got interim belts everywhere. You They're like the belt. intercontinental like belt. Yeah, you get a belt. You get a belt. Fight in Brazil. I like that. Oh, let's Put go. Put me on that card, coach. Put let's go. I like it. There, that's not bad. Not bad. That's awesome, man. Look at I love it. it. All right. I love it. Up. Oh, GG, what a kick. What a kick to the liver, chat. Oh, wow. and we still have we still have the another Made fight. A bet. Woo! Get out of here. Uh, yo, y'all ready? So speaking of with the main event, I've got a video for you to watch right now, and we'll see you afterwards. It wasn't anything personal. Actually, it's your time. It wasn't something like, oh, I hate Amanda. It's just she has the belt. And so I called her out for it. And I wasn't going to stop calling her out until I eventually got the title fight. Amanda Nunez, I want to fight you. Nobody's had a tougher road in the UFC except for me. And I want to fight Amanda. It's time for her to quit ducking. That's my fight. She is one of the greatest mixed martial arts athletes of all time. The undisputed UFC bantamweight and featherweight champion. 12 straight UFC wins. Nine UFC title fights overall. This is a giant fight for Juliana Pena. She's a huge underdog in this fight. But we've seen it time and time again when a fighter, even a champion, underestimates a huge underdog, wild things can happen. If you watch any of Amanda's fights, she's very dangerous in the first round. Oh, she got hit with a jab there. But I believe that in this sport, you're human, just like anybody else. Oh, Pena's doing a good job of just getting in her face here. You bleed the same blood that I bleed, and you can get punched and rocked just like anybody else can. Oh, big combination for Pena! It really comes down to guts and who wants it. Oh, Juliana's catching her! Oh, this is crazy! Oh, oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness! I have a no quit, never giving up type of an attitude, and I just know that no matter what, if you stick us both in a house and say only one of you guys can come out, I'm coming out of that house. Oh! by Pena. Look at this. And now Pena to the back. Oh, Juliana's got her down. She's got Joker. She's got her back. She's got oh, time. She's it. Juliana oh. Pena shocks the world. Oh, my.
my goodness. That's the biggest upset in the history of the sport. I have a bad knee injury going through my last camp, so my body no was 100%. Juliana got lucky. And you can be sure they will run it back, but Juliana Pena has done it. Now I'm fired up again. I'm 100%. I'm ready to step in again, and I'm going to be able to do everything that I want. Oh! Nunes said she could knock her out. We're seeing that now it's real. I know what I'm capable of, and I need to get my belt back. Amanda, your excuses, they're the things that you say to yourself so that you can sleep at night. She has not been able to get over the fact that she lost the belt. She's doing exactly what she said she was going to do. I am going in there to take everything to solidify my name to be done with this chapter. I am going in there to win. I told you, don't ever doubt me again. I know I can beat her April. No matter why this fight go, I will finish her. The belt's mine. We'll see, that's what you said last time. This is my belt. Come and get it. Half an hour, I go, no, I go, hold on, son. I go, we got to start training an hour every day. And, and, and he's like, well, I go, do you want to be, I go, I go, here's, I go, do you want to be a state champion? You know, in a year or two? He goes, yeah, I go, that's what it's going to take. You and yeah. me, an hour every day, working, drilling. It don't have to be hard, but that is like, what? I go, that's the dedication that we're going to, that takes, we're going to yeah. do. You know what I mean? So I'm teaching him now about that about it, it, it's something yeah. that we do every day right Go ahead. and man wrestling just the life lessons you learn from it man it's the hardest sport in the world it's, it's way harder than mma I, I really think like my kids my future kids are going to wrestle for sure like boy or girl I'm, I'm forcing them to wrestle um just the life lessons you, you learn from the man like it, they stay with you forever and yeah it's, it's humbling uh, well, you learn it's humbling. you learn like the, the work you put in is, is what you get you know and you learn how to lose you learn how to win and it's just so humbling and that's it. And it's not, it's, it's the best way to show your coaches, your friends, your family, just go out there and try and try hard. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. That, and that, how do you tell everybody you worked your butt off? You love them. You respect them. You just go out there and give it a hundred percent. And that's all that matters. Skills can be adjusted. Things happen in fights. Things happen in wrestling. You know what I mean? In your match. And that's, that's life you know, too. Jen, that's you know? life. That's like, everything. Yeah. And there's no hiding. You know? There's no blaming because it's only you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, man, it just it just teaches you so much, and it, you know there's so many comparisons to just what life is. Sometimes you lose in life, sometimes you take L's, and it just kind of teaches you how to how to react to that, you know. Well, now we talk about all the time in the stream, you know, like in other people in other professions, that world champion mentality. It, it's something that you have to have. It's just that you you get that co- solid concrete foundation, right? Your knowledge, everything you do every day, it, it's just part of your lifestyle. Period. You know what I mean? The training, you do all of these things, you build that foundation yeah. and then you start to drill. And it, like, anybody can have that in whatever field that they do. You and don't have to, to mention, just be a fighter. Yeah. Yeah. And not to mention how much wrestling sucks. <laughs> like oh. the, the waking up at 5 a.m., the, the having to go cut weight, to, to training every day, to being sore, your neck hurts from keeping to uh, Some your, people your just don't hurt. like to put on deodorant. Some don't want to wash their clothes. <laughs> some people just, the mat stage. Sure. Sometimes it's just too cold. The you're first sore, time you hit you gotta, the floor, you gotta go like, home <laughs> and do your homework after practice. You got a tournament on Wednesday. You got a competition 100%. on Wednesday. You got a competition on Saturday. You got to travel. You're cutting weight. Like 100%. all this while juggling school. And man, it's, it's such a tough sport, man. And I feel like that's why so many uh, wrestlers have this great transition over to MMA, man. Because they were made for it. It was made MMA for us. A little easier, you know. It's not. It as is tough. because you get the punch. You get the yeah. punch, and you get the. You're it's that one added element. Yep, a hundred percent. Every practice isn't a wrestling practice. Like, yep. I, I think that's uh that just goes to show, like. Obviously, wrestling is incorporated in MMA. It's part of that an aspect, but I think it's the mental that that really uh, brings success to a lot of wrestlers when they transition over. Yeah, and because they get that, it's that one-on-one, that one-on-one, no hiding. You know what I'm saying? By the way, really quick, chat, exclamation sweeps. We're giving away a PC. Is this the last day to enter? The last day to enter for the PC. Exclamation sweeps in chat. Facebook, YouTube, all y'all, you got to get over here. Drop into Twitch TV slash UFC. Hit exclamation sweeps. 
USC is giving away a one of a kind gaming PC featuring a Ryzen 5900X and RTX 3080 built by Paradox Customs, plus more prizes. And you can enter now for a chance to win. Restrictions do apply. So make sure you dive in and boom. You know what? Huh? Bunny Bread Slayer TV. I'm doing phenomenal. How you doing? So make sure you come over here, grab that exclamation sweeps last day. Last day. Exclamation sweeps, guys. I don't miss out on a gaming PC, man. They're, they're, that's what I that's what I game on now. They're cash money. <laughs> I love it. Like I built my first one, so I, I love the custom. Hey, it's just the way to go. Gotta yeah, yeah. It. Especially when you put in like effort to actually build it, you know, it's yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, and that was the one thing I, I finally did because I'm such a wannabe fan of, of building PCs and stuff. I finally got to build my first one, and yeah. it's the one I still use. Oh, it's my Cadillac. It's it's my boo. Yeah, it's you know exactly. I mean? It's like building a car. You have oh, more like when I hit power and it worked. Woo! I was you know <laughs> no better feeling. I want to do that, man. Incredible. If I get a bonus in my next fight, I'm building my own PC. All right. Well, if there's anything that we can do, like I said, 8K Snoo is heaven sent. He's the mod that running all this. So he helped He's me like get me started. Yeah, you want to make sure you order the right parts and everything. By yeah, the no, way, Amanda Nunes, UFC featherweight champion, uh, most wins in UFC bantamweight history with 11, most finishes in UFC bantamweight history. Is she, is she fired up? Is she ready to go? And can she deal with the onslaught? That's one thing. This time around, Jeff, that's different. Juliana, she's the champ. And she pushed it the first time. Now, how do we put this? Is it all, Is it easier for the challenger? Because they want that belt. They're going after it. Or is it, you know what I mean, to, get, to be motivated for the fight? Go ahead. I mean, dive in. A little bit of both, right? I, I think in most circumstances, the... You, you, you think the challenger would be the hungrier fighter, right? That they, they never, they usually have never had the belt. They're usually yeah. worked their way. It's up always that Rocky story, right? It's always that Rocky right. story, but there's never too many stories about the champ keeping the belt. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. But in this instance, you have someone who beat the goat, the, the best of, of all time and, and two different divisions and, and the blueprint's been set. She knows yeah. what she has to do to win. It's, it's survived the early onslaught. Nunez is, is hit super hard. She's super tough. And, and she has knockout power. And if you can survive that early onslaught, the blueprint's been laid out. Penny knows she, and then she also has that mental edge, Jens. Like she's, she's, she's like, I know I, I beat you once. I can do it again. It's, yep. it's doable. I did it. So, and, and it's not you, like, she, it's not like she did it a couple of years ago. She did it not too well, long And ago. you say her mindset. And that's the one thing like uh, Dana White was still talking about that moment. The first time I met her. Hi, I'm Juliana Pena. I think it was going to tell, I'm going to win the ultimate. I'm going to be the champ. One day. And that's, again, something that when they first meet you, you're going to see me again. I'm going to be the champ. And I know a lot of people say that, but then when they go out there and they do it the way that she has won, everything has been a grind. You know what I mean? And that's the one thing. Even though she's on the east side of Washington, I love her anyway. You know, I'm, I'm a Seattle kid. So I had to <laughs> – all my family was in Deer Park. So, But that's the one thing is – she had, you know, she's going to come into this thing mentally ready to go. No matter what happened the first time, she's always ready to fight. So this really does, in my opinion, kind of boils down to what Amanda Nunes, man, what is Amanda Nunes going to do? Yeah. Yeah. And man, you got to think for Juliana Pena, she, she, she's beat her. Like that's a mental edge is like, just knowing she, like, didn't just beat her, she broke her and, and, and exactly. And, and the way and she did it. Yeah. You're hundred percent right. And, and, and on a, a, Nunes is, is mindset is like, you know, her last fight, she lost to her. Like, yep. I always think whenever a, a rematch happens, just depending on the way they lose, of course, and this this case, it was getting broken, you know, and then uh, giving there up. You go. So you that has to play. It wasn't. And, Sorry, but it's one thing if it's if it was a freak punch or a freak knockout. This was an yeah. absolute. This was the worst of them all. She literally broke you. So you just hit all fours and got submitted. You got. Yeah. She broke you. And you got to think best win of all of this. At least besides the liver. At least a handful of times in camp, as she's getting ready for this, you know, as she's getting ready for this fight, she remembers just feeling tired, feeling fatigued, giving up her neck, you know. Somebody's reminding her, you know what I mean? UFC Bantamweight yeah. champion tied third most wins in UFC Bantamweight history with seven, tied third most finishes in UFC Bantamweight history with four. 
But did now did winning the belt? You know, some people did, did it make her too comfortable. Like I've got, I don't, I just, I don't think it. That's the thing with Juliana. It's like, well, now you became the champ. It's like Rocky Balboa going back. You know, the first time he's doing all this, this, this super training, and and Clubber Lang just comes in and dishes him a beating. Then he had to go back and get hardcore to get that rematch, right? But winning the yeah. belt, did it do? Did that do something to you? I don't think so in this fight, but right. Yeah, I think it's still so early on in her championship reign that I think the hunger's still there. I think oh, she's honey. still fighting the GOAT. She still she still has a point to prove that, hey, that wasn't a fluke. You know, maybe maybe Nunes didn't have the best camp or maybe she was going through something or maybe something affected her, but she wants to prove that this wasn't a fluke. And I, I don't think she's lost any hunger for the championship and fight. She, love- knows, she knows what this brings now. She she understands that this brings more money. This brings more notoriety. This brings the ultimate fighter show. This, this now solidifies you- it because, well, then Matt Hughes used to always, always, always say this to me all the time. You're not truly the champ until you defend it. And that's and I had to live with that. And I was like, easy for you to say, I gotta fight the guy that submitted you twice in 20 seconds in Dennis Holman. But I get yeah, it. Yeah. You're not truly the champ unless you defend it. And they used to literally religiously smash that into our head all the time. You know what I mean? And this is that deal. What what you're right about fluke. Amanda Nunes has to go out there and prove that it was a fluke. And Julian, so I think that's kind of the, the, that is the phrase. You couldn't have said it better. That is literally the phrase of this fight. Was it a fluke? On both ends. Was it a yeah. fluke? And we're about to find out. In just you know? a couple of minutes till we, yeah, till we figure it out. Ooh. And for Nunez, like, I, I, sorry, for Pena, I mean, I think she um, she's starting to realize what being the champion means, you know, the, the media stuff, the, the obviously the perks that and the pros that come from it financially, the opportunities you get. And I think she wants to keep that. You know, this is a great way to get financial freedom. Oh, uh, it's just, it just to wealth, be the you know? champ. So, well, I didn't yeah, even put you get the that. Perp- uh, It's just, it, it, it's, that's the one thing that I like is to get to that level. You're like, I'm the champ. And now it's like, try to beat me. Try to go through the things that I've gone through to get here. And this that's when you start to develop that mindset. And if I yeah. could, and I can't wait to become a coach, because that's what I'm going to tell every one of my kids that becomes a champion. I know how to keep you motivated. Go out there and clown them. How dare you think you can come in here? How dare you think it was a fluke? And how dare you think you can beat me? And go teach them why you are who you are. And that's the motivation you should have as a champion. I'm going to show you how good I am. Don't come in here weak and don't come in here half cocked and think you're going to beat me. Yeah, me fired up, Jen. I told you, but that's how you want your champions to believe. I love it, man. Yeah. Because you've been through too much. And don't forget it. Because the other way is, man, I'm at the top. And now everybody's gunning for me. Everybody's gunning for me. And it's like, damn that. Of course they are. You know what I mean? Get yeah. after them. I'm about to go on a run after this. After this <laughs> here, you got me hyped I'm, up, man. I'm just telling you. Well, that's why. Because see, now it's my turn to give back. So, yeah, yeah. Like I, I said, that's, but that's what I'll have. I'm going to have them all feeling that way. And I love this. And it, the, here's the other thing right now with Amanda Nunes is this. She wants to prove it with the first one was a fluke or, or whatever. She wasn't ready. Does she overdo it? That's going to be the issue number one. Do you overprove it by going out there and start trying to wing and throw and ah, you know what I mean? Or do you do you try to keep that game plan and get that and wait for that opening? Yeah, yeah. And I would think she would want a more measured approach because she definitely got tired. She she tried to knock out New, uh, Penny on the first round. She got she clipped her. She hurt her. But when it didn't happen, we we saw how the tables turned so quick. She became the nail, and she didn't like that, and and she she broke. So yep. I want to see if she takes a more measured approach. Wait a minute, one second, one second, chat. Did did we did I miss a full bunny hop from Boos? Did Bruce give us a full bunny hop? You know, when oh, it's it. time, like he had that bad knee. So there for a while, yeah, we yeah. had no stomp. We had a no, maybe no a half stomp, hop. but we got a yeah. bunny hop out of Bruce. Oh, he fired up then. He fired up right now. Let's go. That that's main UFC. event vibe. Yeah, that's UFC. And Bruce 300. is the man. Like <laughs> the, the, you can just tell the effort he puts in, man. He takes his job so serious. And that that's, that's real cool to see from anybody. Someone that just enjoys their job so much. Oh, and, and I enjoy seeing those it. jackets. Those jackets, yeah. that boy. He got jackets. Do you dress up much, Jeff? Like, is that like he only makes for commentary gigs, up. man? Yeah, yeah <laughs> only for commentary gigs. And I, I feel just like Bruce when I do it, man. When I put on that suit, there's no better oh, feeling. Oh, I love it. I love it. Ooh, All right. Nothing like she's a man. Got event, that, man. man, she's got that stare, though. Pena has the face. Like I said, you know she's coming ready. There's just, you know, she's ready. 
Oh, Lord, here we go. Right to the center tap. Righty versus lefty. And again. A lot of open pressure. fights tonight. Pressure. Ortho pressure. versus Southpaw fights. Now, now she switched oh, back up. Back, okay, yeah. so she now she went back to righty. Curious. What was that for? Only to, oh, Now she goes back. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I'm a huge believer in being able to fight from both stances. I'm um, definitely with this calf yeah, kick nowadays. I, I think that's where the sports the sports heading is being able to fight from. It doesn't matter where your feet are. From a ortho stance, a squared stance, a southpaw stance, it doesn't matter where your feet are. You should you should know how to how to throw strikes and be defensively sound from both. I love it. And then one thing is that's one thing I'm teaching my son is how to wrestle with both legs forward, switch up the stance and attack with this way. Because as wrestlers, we got so stuck with our power leg in front. And then all of a sudden you step that thing behind you for striking because that's what you were taught, right? As a, that boxing stance, power leg behind you. And so you instantly, that takes away your wrestling. So now you know you have to learn how to wrestle other leg forward or punch your way into a clinch then you can square up and shoot. But that's one thing that you have to learn how to shoot both sides. Yeah, Jen. And it changes the targets completely. Like any, anytime Nunez changes to Southpaw, Pena oh. has to ID that. She has to recognize, oh, big overhand see, landing. Did you see that? She stepped yeah. in without throwing anything with the hand down, and Pena's going to let that overhand right land. All day. She's going to throw it. You already know if that's what she was doing, not to cut you off, feeling out process, you get within range, Pena's going to crack you with that overhand. There we go. Now she's nice and tight kick. on the feet. She looks good. And you, if you notice with this one, um, Nunez is boxing. Where in that first fight, again, they were struggle busting. She was power shotting. And then yeah. she was getting frustrated because she thought she was just going to be able to knock her out real quick because that's what she does. And when that didn't happen, then she started panicking. Yeah, and Penny's staying nice and tight with her guard here. Yeah, Pena is always going to be this way. There it was. She got in too close and got that jab over the top by Nunez. And there's there's going to be the thing right there. Did you notice that? When Nunez is throwing that lead leg calf kick, she, her hands are down, and that she's catching that right hand by Pena. She's stepping in and throwing it. Yeah, no naked kicks can be can be had here, man. They have to be set up. Uh, twice now, Nunez has been caught throwing a naked little calf kick from the open stands. Now here we ah uh, oh see I like that level change and then she's popping that jab. Look at she the Amanda's kind of showing that wrestling a little bit level change. Try I like that the up things. downs, the up downs. hundred percent. Just go out there and fire a takedown right off the bat. So now you have that, you know what I mean? Now yeah, you and, have go ahead. Oh, that caught her on the temple. Oh, 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 there it is. That lead hook. See, painted. And she's not to getting too excited. She, she's been a little more measured this fight. Last time when she clipped her and felt like she had her urge. She, she now, let went. me ask you a question because is this her normal stance? Is, is there, She's in a southpaw stance. What that means is power hand forward. She put her power hand up front and is going to start landing that landing that lead hook, which she just did right over the top. Two right? times now where it's where, where Penny kind of dips down and she's in. Uh, Nunez is able to hit her almost behind the ear. Like she that. just did it again. She Little just did hook. it three times. She's put that power hand up front, and she's cracking her with lead hooks. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, and it's her, it's her power hand, and uh, twice it landed behind the ear there. It landed right on the chin. And, and look at that. See how she wants to jump back to righty, but they're like, yeah. see how she's sticking to this southpaw stance because that right hand is all day. But it might leave things open a little bit, right, Jeff, when you change up that stance. Not only does your striking get – your offense get a lot, but your defense gets a little off too because you don't feel comfortable blocking in that stance. And that's what a lot of people have to re recognize. But I yeah. notice – but this is money for her right now at this lead hook yeah she, she can't miss that lead hook and, and and you're right sometimes when you switch your stance you're not as defensively sound because you're not used to being there and we've, we've seen Nunes get hit a couple of times uh from the southpaw stance as well yep and that's and that's i think because again she just doesn't have a good she doesn't really not very good at blocking keeping that we don't keep that left hand or that right hand up you yeah. know what I mean? And, and the, uh, hand off hand. Different. The, the, the way you defend is different. A hundred percent. And that's something that people need to work on. It isn't just about offense. You got to get comfortable defensively too. And I think that's the only thing that's kind of allowing her. There she goes in. See, this is another thing that tells me why she's standing with her power hand forward. She's wrestling and she's been wrestling. Oh, Big but she's running hands. into that right hand. I don't know how long they wanted to stick in this game, but she ran into that cross right hand again of, of uh, Nunez, of a Pena, sorry. 
Oh, but now she's firing that straight left. Now she's bringing that straight left to come in with that right. She's doing all right as a lefty. And that attack's going to be there for both of them. From that open stance, the cross is what fits down that guard perfectly from both from both, uh, from both both ladies, and both of them have landed. I like this. Okay, I, I'm going to say this over and over, but I like, yes, it, it's, see, what are they trying to say? That that lead hook was money, Jeff. She Cash ran out money, a few yeah. times, just wobbled her. I mean, first round to Nunez. The other thing is she's keeping composure, and she's not, she knows, she, you know what I mean? She learned from the first fight. Obviously, you weren't in shape. Whatever those reasons were, whatever it was, and that made her panic. But look, she's staying calm and composed. Yeah, and when she did hurt her or land a big shot, she didn't get too crazy like like we saw in the first fight. Yes, she right. More, and which is good. This is a five-round fight. This is 25 minutes. Don't be in a hurry. The fight's going to unfold. If, if you hurt her once, you can do it again. And, and I, I like this approach by Nunes. Very good. And, and There's that check hook. Ooh, right I mean, on the button. Yeah. Yeah, look at the way, she, and then right to try to go with that knee. See, she's got to make sure, and again, see, sometimes that, that hand, when it's not used to being up, when it's not usually, your, it's your lead hand, like, it's hard to keep that thing, because that hand is your roamer, you know what I mean? It's your lead hand in the day. It gets to go out there and mess around. It's not used to being right here locked up like your power hand. Oh. You got to think 1-0 for Nunez, right? Yeah, oh, for sure. It has to be. And now, again, and see, the one thing about with, with, with uh, Pena is I wonder if Nunez would step back. She's trying to time that knee. And see, that's the thing that happened last time. That that right hand that that um, that Pena throws, I mean, I, it, it, there it oh. goes. She's getting countered. Her boxing, she just got clocked with that hook again and dropped. And that's it. Her boxing isn't, you that know what I mean? It isn't like, sharp. yeah, she's got it all day with that hook. And she's her, her patience. She's, she's, she's still not, her, her feet are still on, underneath her. Oh, man. And she has to be careful because that hook is there all day. And, Jen, hey, you can speak to this, but a, a great way to know when a fighter's still hurt is just look at their feet. You can tell when a fighter's feet's still not underneath them. And when she first stood up, it didn't look like she was quite still there. Yep, and then they get wider out, and they get sent better than – they'll bring them closer together, and they'll start being able to bounce. They're wide stanced. Boom! Ooh, look at dang. that time. She clowned her. Like, look at Nunez is literally clowning her penny is coming hook. in like this. She yeah, stepped yeah. back, stepped back, waited until she stopped throwing, and then fired and that's her. That's something I, I preach, Jens, is you can't put your shoulders in front of your hips. You're too off balance, right? If you start attacking like this yep, with your shoulders you in front of your hips, you you're can't pretty do much it. only one push away from Everything is over. a pulley system, and when you and that's the thing, like her striking is 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 not working. But you see, you see um Amanda way she's moving, everything's a pulley system. When your defense, your offense will work together, and she's just cl she's just catching her eyes open. And what I really like is she's seeing those timed punches, or she's able to see the, the timing and and land those punches. And then see what I mean? The way that see that's the one thing. The way that Pena is just throwing, just kind of straightforward shoulders, just and just trying to arm punch her way in. Now that this now that this Nunez isn't dogged tired, this is different. Yeah, it is. It's not the most technical thing. We saw her get knocked down once from it. When you start but coming, when she ahead. lands, she's landing multiple times, and she's landed a couple times like this. And even though it's not the most technical thing, it, it's being effective for now. Even though it wasn't earlier in this round, she's like we're seeing uh, Nunez's oh. right eye start to swell up. I wouldn't recommend it coming in like your Terminator and just going straight forward with not much technique, but she's able to land a couple times. Yeah, she, well, that's what she would do when you're tired, right? Just kind of that swimming motion. No, but the problem you. is it's arm punches, and what happens is your chin has to pop up in order to throw it. You can do 100%. this and keep that shoulder behind and keep your chin down, but when you're windmilling, you have to bring it up. Now, Big forward pressure from, from Pena with these – Jab cross, jab crosses. As she's but see, I like out. that. But see, because because look at that. Because Nunez is now she's not dead tired. She's not dogged tired. I'm sorry. Um, you know what I mean. And, and she's up on her wheels. She's able to float back and watch her miss those first few, and then she's off balance to get cracked with those counter shots. I mean, a great game plan. Oh, and then right there, see that's the other thing that I like. Is she, remember how we were talking about picking on that, picking on the jab hand. She's picking on the jab hand. Oh, hits her with a straight cross. left this time and puts her on her butt. And then she's going to let her stand up again. She's going to let her up. 
Hit to the straight left, again. and that's saying something, saying that's not her power hand. Now she and wants Nunes to go back to her. She wants to go back right-handed so bad. <laughs> Nunes has shown a great, great ability of being able to fight backwards. She, she's hit her a couple yes. times with either a check hook, and right there it was, it was kind of like a step back cross from the southpaw stance. And that's what I mean. That because she has that those legs underneath her, right? That's the first thing to go. The first time she was really dog and tired, all that wrestling, and then she just melted. But now she has her legs underneath her, and she's able to step back. Look at that. She just tried to fire that elbow. She's getting crafty now. Like you know, when you start having that kind of that kind of confidence, she's gonna yeah, come yeah, that kind of swagger that comes elbow. out. That just yeah. shows that, that you're confident. You're seeing everything, right? Other yeah, than like that's I said, what it is, yeah. Because that left look now she wants to go right. Look at that. She wants to do that right handed so bad. But think about it. She switched Ooh, up her stance and she's tearing her apart. She with faked the, the low kick, got a check reaction out of Pena, came in with a cross hook and nailed her. You know, I, I wonder at what round are they gonna let her go back to her right handed stance, or if they're just gonna keep this until finish or get her beat up, quote unquote, enough and then switch, you know what I mean, and really mess her up that way. That's like some Jedi stuff, man. You can mind tricking her. You're playing one way, kicking hitting her with the left hand, and then in the third round, you're gonna switch. Now go back to your right hand and put her away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And that's again, that's one of those big advantages. Ooh, hook right that, on the button, man. Putting that power hand up front. What a what a what a what a smart gameplay. Plant boom. Look at that. Backed up, Beautiful. planted her foot, and back. cracked Cross. her again. Keeping Jeez. that power hand in the front. And then hit her with the back with the with the other hand. Yeah, that's gotta be a 10-8. I would throw that one a 10 8. Yeah, with the amount of knockdown she got. And, but one thing about Pena, man, is she's not going to go away. We talked about the importance of someone that just doesn't go away. People can win fights just off simply not going away. Well, and, and Pena is that that person. She can take 100%. a shot. You're going to have to put her out of there. Um, yeah, I'm not counting her out of this fight. Say it yet. again. What does Krause say? There's something There's something about someone that just doesn't go away in a fight. The, just the don't importance go of away. someone that's... just not going away. And that's, you can win a fight off just not going away. The other guy might be technically better, is. stronger, Bigger, better wrestling, better striking, whatever. But just there's don't something go in away. you just not going away, man. And and that and that's Pena to a T. She's a champ for a reason here. Here we go. Here we go. And that is why Nate Diaz will beat Chip. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I love Nate though. I had to do it. All right, here we go. But and again, the composure. And I love this. Um the composure with with with, with Nunez. Is to just keep. I'm gonna keep just. Oh, she tried. Okay, see now she got a little crazy. Tried to spin an elbow and almost ran into a right hand. But I think I think Nunez just got so so used to putting people out of there early. Man, she got so no, so she much did. easier. To, it's so much easier to get someone out of than the first round. But you get someone like like Pena who's not gonna go away. That you can't take that same approach. And and I know a lot of fighters that even people I've trained with that. Are, are the best first round fighters you'll ever see. You're, you'll ever see, and they yeah. have 17 first round finishes. But the second they get to round two, it's they they, they quit. And it wears I think on you because you're like, I, I should have put you out. So, and that's all yeah. I planned for is to put you out. See, now we're in this over under position, but there we go and push up against the fence, you know. And again, see, look, Amanda has tried to switch up that stance enough times. But I'm curious, you're like, not yet, not yet. Or and you pointed it out a couple times, but you're like, when are you gonna switch back? Because you see her switch back for a second, and she's like, No, I'm supposed to be south points. I'm she, supposed to be south yeah, yeah. yeah, She wants you so bad though. Either that or has she always been in South Point? She's just on point. I just don't remember her being it. I don't I don't think she was. Because she keeps wanting to switch, but either way, if this whatever it is. That lead it. Oh, here she comes. So now this is what pen now. When you do this over and over, and you can with that just that swimming motion, make, make it a dog motion, fight. Yeah, she's got to. You got to bite down and get in a phone booth right now. And we tried to play the pretty game, and it's not working. You're getting picked. You're getting countered and hit with that hook. You've got to do this. And now and we're gonna smart. need that extra. If at a Big distance, you're, get, you're getting checked by hook. If at a distance, you're getting hurt. Make it a dog fight. You got to. You got to bite down and get in there and. And you got now she's gonna try to go in there and get half guard or step off to the side. Oh, now we got Nunez in the guard. Oh, we're going for elbows. Oh, we're going elbows. Our phone booth still a thing. They should be inside that octagon. The proverbial 
phone booth. The proverbial. There we go. Try to work on that posture. And she wants to stay in there right now. And the thing is, the pain is trying to keep a closed garden. No, she's opening her garden now. And she almost wants to invite the pass here. And Nunez is not having any of it. She opened her guard for a split second to see if Nunez would try to pass. And I'm sure Penny would use that to try to get up and create space. But smart on Nunez to just stay in guard. Top Hang guard and MMA is such a – it's not like jiu-jitsu where, where you're in danger of arm bars and triangles. You're still in danger, but you can punch somebody in MMA. This is a sport jiu She's trying elbow, to work her way up. And it's so dominant in the aspect of the judges. It just don't – just that whole old school boxing, you know, judging, whatever. One's on top beating the other one, and you're on your back. You must be helpless. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, yeah. If I'm on top, I, situation. I want, yeah, yeah. If I'm on top, I want bottom guy to play sports jiu-jitsu. I, I welcome that. I want him yep. to try to throw up triangles and arm bars while I try to put an Xbox logo on his forehead, you know? <laughs> an Xbox logo. <laughs> GG. I like it. But this is it. And, you know, and here's the deal. Go, the big reason is, and ironically, Pena's keeping a closed guard right now. I think she's given up at the idea that she's not going to be able to move. Yeah, she's Nunez. cut. Her. That elbow cut her. Oh, she cut her. Yeah, we've got we've got ketchup all over the top of the forehead of uh, Pena, and it, it, it's just looking brutal. And look, another elbow. This is one of those. You can tell Amanda's been sitting around biding her time, waiting for this and, for this and right moment. Now she's trying to play sports jiu-jitsu. She's looking for these triangles. She's looking for these arm bars. She's stacking up her legs. Instead, she's I would try to that. create space. I'd try to put my feet on the hips. If she can you use this kick to away, space, kick away and yeah. just try to get up and get back to your feet and try 100%. to get the takedown. She's holding on to the glove. Because the ladder there is sitting in bottom guard getting elbowed. And what? And then worst case scenario just happened. She now has half guard. Half guard and yeah. she's going to flatten you out and, and go across body. I mean, you just hopped out of the frying pan right into the fire. Yeah, and top half guards becoming more popular than mount. A lot of fighters will. Yes, will throw in a leg this because I, it's like I said. I it, I can't hate bringing this up, but it was when I was going against BJ. The more I got off to that side and I got to hook that one leg, that's natural wrestling. Natural, have a leg going cross body. It's safe. You can control the hips, and no two legs are going to come over and catch you. Exactly. It's very hard to meet head your way out of uh, out of half guard, right? From mount, you can almost athlete your way out, explode, buck. But when you have one of your hips pinned to the mat with someone else's body weight, it's it's very difficult to get up from, and, yeah. and you can still land a good amount of ground and pound from half guard. I'll tell half. you, it, it's she's gonna have to figure out, and it, it's how much gas do you have in the tank? Not to just keep the fight going, but she's going to have to put it, she's going to have to go extra. I think she's down three rounds, and I could, I could have 10 it. You could almost 10 it with all the ble bleeding. I won't 10 that one, but definitely, you know, she's going to have to. Player 10 on, for sure. Yeah, just completely dominated. Boom. And I, Big again, I that one round with, down. yeah, she tore up on the ground. She can't close the distance. She's getting out muscled in here because, again, what it boils down to is Nunes is not tired, and now you just found out why she's so good at, you know, the, that elbow. Oh, that was nasty. That nice little elbow that cut that. Just that torque. Open. She brings her hand to her chest. And look, at she's hungry. Torque. The right eyes got a little bit of swelling. But look, she's on her feet bouncing. This is intimidating as you go into championship rounds and you're both bouncing instead of, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I love to see Nunez like this. This is the old hungry Nunez. You know, she's even wearing some of that that oh that we haven't right seen in on a single as soon as look at and that was it. Now we're gonna go right back to where we started. Painted tried Love to it. step in to throw a punch and she changed levels, boom, Love right it. in on a double, running double across the cage, ran her across the canvas, boom, down she goes. And I now think she saw how much success she had earlier in that last round and how she didn't really have any uh any kind of fight from from Nunez or sorry from Pena from the bottom garden. Why not keep her there, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Well, that and let me look at her. She's keeping her feet closed. She's stuck in closed guard, and she's almost doesn't really know, you know, what to do. And she was successfully landing those elbows, throw that guard by. Now we might have another plot. This she's going to hold onto the glove. Look, oh, but then she peeled out of it. And those are big, big shots, shots because she keeps the going. The posture she has from that. Yeah, and then she goes right back into the guard again. But. And that's it. And I hope she does somehow pass that guard, sit on that one leg, and get you know what I mean, sit on that one leg, and, and just start raining elbows. 
Yeah, and she doesn't even need to pass the guard, to be honest, Jen. It's like nope. sports jiu-jitsu, you need to pass the guard, right? Otherwise, you're kind of stalling. Yeah. But MMA, I, I can just hammer fist, elbow, rinse I, and repeat. Well, because the issue is she is keeps throwing that one arm up and getting her stuck in this omoplata-ish position for a minute. And if she really wanted to, that's the one thing. If Nunes just sit on that one leg, honker down, go cross body, yeah, yeah. and just overwhelm her butt. I would love to see Pena maybe use these submission attempts to, to get space. She knows you're not going to omniplot Amanda Nunes, you know? So use that to create space. Oh, we got an arm bar. Oh, she's got she an my arm bar, though. Nunes. Oh, she's got the arm bar on Nunes. Nunes oh is trying to fight it. She's trying to peel the head. The, the thumb is up. The thumb is up in the groin. The thumb is up, but she's trying to twist. She's, she's using that leg like she's stuck. supposed to, though. That's good oh, for her to use that leg. Wow. Out. See, you play too much. Yes, but you're playing too much. See, you need to sit on one leg. Yeah, and pass you see guard. I mean? Jens knows what why, he's talking about why here. Why would you stop playing and that card? And look, now, now, we, now, now you've she's got to have... Sack control. There you go. Now, you got nowhere to go. Stop trying to step over and stop. She's going to turn into you and then give you mount. But don't just throw that leg over there and let her get get the guard back. That was too close for comfort. That was she way She had it fully close. extended. Thumb was up. Good defense, of course, by Nunes. And the judges, you know, again, they'll look at something like that. But now, again, she's got to – here we go. She's back in the guard. Nunes doesn't follow the hips around. I mean, she needs to posture yeah. up. Legs are open. Posture up and get out of there. You know what I mean? Stay squared up. Pressure up on the head. Push her into the fence. But don't – man, when the guard is open, you know where she's going, right? She's going to swift to the side and go for an arm bar. Or the triangle. Here it comes again. Stop throwing these elbows. You're going to get arm yard. Oh, but now I think maybe it's just not enough. She's got her back. But, but good on Penny to use that to create space. 100%. I'll take, I'll oh, get five. Leaking. Look, she is bleeding everywhere. She's got ketchup everywhere right now. And now to trying to walk her back. And here comes Nunez, right hand. Oh, she's trying to change that level. Boom. Goes in on the double. Drive, drive, drive. Gets the takedown again. There is a lot of catch up. Yeah, sacking man. up her legs, looking for for a triangle, for an arm bar. And that's it. Now you got to, again, drop those hips down. See, the hips are up higher than the head. This is when you need to drop the hips down, posture up, posture up. See, you keep messing around like this where you go into that tripod position. That makes it easier to land the omoplata, the triangle. That's what they want from you. And this is going to have, this has got to get a little tiring. You know, I mean, to keep fighting your way out of that is going to make you tired a little bit. Yeah. Stand up. She wants her Nunes up. She in, wants her up. Inviting the, the stand up. Look at, there she goes. She went back to right-handed for a minute, and then she went right back to southpaw again. The natural. Oh, she's trying to take that lead hand. Oh, she went for it. Right back to the takedown. Power leg forward. Zero Nunes. significant strikes for Pena this round. Yeah, Nunes to the stats fired there. that was trying to she fired a nasty lead uppercut. Control the hips. What? Arm bar attempt. This and is Pena a swivels round, her but... hips so fast for that arm bar. She she she's got an, a, a pretty slick arm bar from her back. But what a dominant round by Nunez. She's just destroying it. Game plan Zero is Zero significant perfect. strikes from Pena. I wish you would stop flirting around with that gosh dang triangle and arm bar. You know what I mean? Yeah. Posture up. And if the guard is open, yeah. posture you're, up and you're get playing out of there. with fire there. Why, why even put yourself there, in that position? In the you're last round, fire. Just, just don't do it. You're, you're coasting a little bit-ish. Yeah. And, and you got to think Pena's – Got to come out here with, with everything she's got. You know, loss is a loss, no matter if it's by knockout submission. The loss is a loss. So, you know, you gotta you gotta risk it for the biscuit. You gotta go out there and Do give something. it all you got. Do something. Fire those punches close to distance. Great game plan. Good job. I mean, it's everything we thought it would be if Nunez came in. As in, in fact, this has been an incredible fight because again, let's take it back to the other times. Nunez has ran over everybody up to this point, and even if you know, I mean, even if. 
Pena is still made this into a fight, but I love man. No, me, I'm a Nunez man. And like I said, I, I'm just for oh, both man. of them. I just want a good fight either cut. way. Yeah, yeah that yeah. one and right. It's been in a great middle, fight. It's Lots been an of incredible by, fight. But by, that's why I mean, Pena. think about how tough Pena is because she is just bringing the fight out of her no matter what, even if she's in the best shape of her life. What I was trying to say, as much as Nunez has blown through those other ones, Pena, she won the first time, but she is still making this one of the, the definitely the hardest fight on the planet she's ever been in. And it's not over. It's not. You know, and now she goes in, boom, and die, and goes in and gets the takedown. And, she, and Nunez needs to be careful here. She, she's been playing with fires. There's been close attempts. A fully extended arm bar in the last round. And it's just, like I said, I just love that about Penn is just that tough, man. She's unreal. She still, yeah, she has multiple cuts on her, one in her hairline. She has a Harry <laughs> Potter cut going on in her right forehead. In the middle, yeah. yeah. And she's been, again, she's stuck down here, but this well, is what I love bar. about it. She's, she's still hips. trying. She's still trying. She's still climbing the fence. She's still looking for arm bars. She's still looking because look at, she, she's got oh. a triangle. She's, She's going to give up the not, plot Now instead. she's got a plot, to, but she's still trying. And who knows? Because any one of these might be the one that catches her. Triangle. Oi. All right. GG. Wow. She is. And Joe Rogan just said it. She is absolutely Don't making turn. this a dog fight. Are we going to get this out? Um, she's going to have a hard time rolling because of the fence. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. That. I wouldn't yeah. do it. Now they're back on their feet again. And now wow. look, she went right-handed for one second. I wonder if whatever it is, the reason – oh, she went to go mess oh, around yeah. that Nunez trip. looks a little tired here. Oh, she's very wow, tired. good trip. Yeah, she looks very, very fatigued. Tired. Tripped the into the kind of, side she's control. She's for the takedowns with her arms extended. There you go. Now, see, just sit inside. You just heard Joe Rogan say, stay here. I, I like this. Just yep. stay Be right here. Just put all your Be weight heavy. here. You got to think you're up four rounds. Let's let's just let's saw a little bit here. Yeah, no, but. you can kill some time. Look for your submission, but don't just be careful and stop getting into those. You know, if if you're Nunez, stop getting into those omoplatas and the triangles. There, see me personally. That's and I love. Now look at though, no. man. Look Pena how does good. A great job of regarding. Even though she wants to sit on that one leg, look how good Penny is at getting her guard back. Pluses. Pluses. Now she's got a Kimura over here that she's looking at. Still looking for submissions. Left and right, left and right at all times. Because this could be the one. This could be in deep. And this is what I love about her. She hasn't stopped at all looking for the submission. She's got this. Oh, but it was a setup. Good transition for Nunes. Oh, it was a setup to take her back. And yeah, I just don't know how much she has in, in her in her strength, right, to get one yeah. of these now. But now, see, sitting on that one leg, sitting in half guard or half mount, whatever one you want to call it, and going cross body, this is a good position. Yeah. And just flattening in. out, flattening Flat out Pena, making sure both her shoulders are on the mat. Anytime she's able to regard, it's when she's shrimping in and one shoulder gets off the mat and she's able to get more dexterity with her hips. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I can't, man, you got to love to try – you mean the grind? Yeah, hard Pena. By, by Pena. She's bloodied up, multiple cuts. She's got a Harry Potter she's thing going on her forehead. She's still looking for submission she's after submission, yeah. transitioning, climbing her legs up, still trying to keep the head down, still looking to get that arm bar. Went she's for Kimura. I did, yeah, then she was going for a Kimura, still got the guard open, looking to try to – the, the thing is, she's not letting Nunez just rest. Too many people could sit in this position and ride out the last two minutes. And call it a day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. And I and I love this from Pena. Like I, speaking of the heart, like that's all I ask from fighters that I coach is just like give it your all, man. Win or lose, like I'll stand behind you if you go out there and, and put on something like this. You show the heart. You show the toughness. You show that you want to win no matter what. Some, those are the things lose. that you can control. Heart conditioning, courage, that's you. And she's shown it 100%. Skills can be adjusted and we get caught. Things happen. Yeah, some, you're, you're doing for an off night. Yep. I'll stand behind any great. fighter that goes out there and puts on a, a performance she's like got this. Her back. Nunes has got her back. She's doing that crank. This is the one. Cranking the face. Getting away from the choke. She let go of it. She's going to try to throw in the leg again. Man, Pena just, I'm telling you. You want to talk dog. about just grit, man. This is ridiculous. Both of them. She's a dog, man. Oh, wow. both of them. Oh, GG. Look at that. She's still pushing. She's still getting guard back. Come on.
Well, that's not it. The, the thing is, is what happened in this one. Pena didn't get schooled by the goat. She got outworked by the goat. Dude is swagging on her now. And she's dancing. Swagging. Invites and to stand is, up. Time. Wow. What a fight. What a fight, man. What a fight. What a redemption. And what I loved about that more than anything else, Jeff, was in the first time when she got really just dogged tired, she literally just outworked her. Outworked her right there. Yeah. Yeah. The adjustments she made in this fight. The, the, even the heart uh Nunez showed she got she got her yeah. licks in too. She's not used to taking this type of punishment. And, and the fights before the Nunez fight, she was getting first round knockouts, TKOs, and even the rounds that even the fights that went to decision, they were pretty one sided. And yeah, great, great adjustment by by Nunez. And man, what a fight! Like uh, I, I can't think of another sport that brings these emotions uh, out of me at least. Like when I'm watching, I'm like, oh, 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 right. You know, like I can oh. watch football games, I can watch baseball. Nothing brings this reaction out of me. And there's no sport like this, man. I, I love this. And that's uh, why I love being on Twitch TV slash UFC because I get to just be as energetic. I get to hang out and meet new people all the time, and constantly get to do watch these fights. And yeah, man, like I, it was good to yeah. see some. Fired up as I was. I didn't have to man. overwhelm. No, nothing gets me going. And then and then you're over here giving one of the most motivational talks I've heard in a while. Like, <laughs> man, let's go. You know? That's what that's I love, awesome, though, man. when the youngster meets the veteran. And that's what's it's so cool to be able to sit here and rap with you like this. And, you know, Walt, I get it. But, hey, that was really cool just the way that, yeah, you, you know, ended up being two yeah, of us. Man. It was it was fun. Yeah, Better known, but see your brain a little bit, man. You, you've been in this sport for so long, and to be able to watch fights. Look at that beautiful step back. Dude, that was, nice and, and the way that she was able to do that the whole time, and she right off the bat, right. Let's go back to that first round. She established that fought, fang back, boom, lead hook, fang back, boom, lead hook, and dropped her three different times, and then it was, and then get in here and start doing the elbows, which is impressive, but. That was the one thing. And then when she got overzealous to try to really close the distance, you had Nunez, which is, I think, the reason why she never switched stance because that power leg forward, we're a wrestler today. And that's the one thing. 25 submissions off of her back. That's, man, that's 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 unbelievable. I mean, that's incredible by both of them. And it just goes to show how physical – Nunez is to work herself away uh, or work herself out of a lot of those submissions, 25 submissions. And she was just the more physical fighter. And she was able to get out of all those. What a performance from both, from both ladies. Man. Well, here comes the judging. Fifty forty five, fifty forty four, fifty forty three. They were slanging fifty forty three. Fifty forty three. I see. Yes, sir. That. Was impressive. There she goes. Take your lap. Take your lap. Oh, wow. 50 43. That's, that's crazy. Let it marinate. Sink it in there. <laughs> 50 43. I, all right. I mean, I mean, somebody really, they, some of them really liked that ground and pound. You know what I'm saying? And new. She does have swollen in that right eye. Now, here is, the the question for you as we wrap this up a little bit um man what a fight what a fight she knew she'd get her make history again let's go i love it i love it now here's my question for you what do you have man what a fight what a fight hey here's my so fight of the night do you have a fight of the night, performance of the night, fight of the night? Look, he's like thinking. <laughs> oh, did I lose you? Oh, did we have, we lost a meat? Wait. Maybe one. Can you hear me, brother? Oh, there you are. Okay, right on. I'm not sure what happened, man. I was talking the whole time. I was like, oh, man. Uh, 
I was like, dang, he's thinking about it. I was like, going to help you out and throw up a cue card or something. <laughs> uh, Stumbles Burger Murano, man. That, that was a banger. That was a banger. Um, yeah, it was a great fight. Uh, I think we watched that one together. Stumbles Burger Murano back and forth. Uh, Stumbles Burger had, a, had one eye. He was fighting with an eye patch on pretty much. Without a he doubt. doctor's exam. Uh, <laughs> and, and then uh, Moreno Kai Car was pretty back and forth up until it wasn't. Uh, that was a good fight, but I'm a little biased just because it was a flyweight scrap. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Th this fight was incredible too, man. Just the, the sheer. This was performance. Opinion. Yeah, performance was, I think, for me. Go ahead. And, man, this just goes to show, like, on any given night, anything can happen. Because we saw Nunes and the, the fight previous to this, what happened. And then yeah. tonight she, she has an amazing performance, man. So it just goes to show in this sport, on any given night, anything can happen. And that's what makes this sport so so fucking cool, man. <laughs> well, and the way that she gets back in shape, and I think with this performance, and it, uh, Pena, she just proved how tough she was. Because again, the way that Nunes was just ramping through everybody, and yes, even though the score wise, but she was in this fight the entire time, which is impressive. It's like, what are we going to, it's going to be those two fighting each other. You're going to have the same thing as that 25 for a little while till you get up there, but you know what I'm saying? Till the youngsters get up there on both sides where they're yeah. having their fourth fight, their fifth fight. You know what I'm saying? Kind of thing. It's like, but it was yeah. so, really so tough. Is, is that what happens next? Is, is it a rematch? Is it, I don't think is it could be a, is it a rematch? I don't think it could be a rematch. Could it? Unless pretty, she goes so up one side and yeah, yeah no one sided. And who's, who is waiting in the, in the midst? At yeah, 35. I'm not too sure. And it's also like, what's going on with 145? Is, is that still a thing? Yeah, I don't know. Because if, if you heard my what's her name, um, that was the one thing. And maybe she'll go up and fight their opinion when she said, there's nobody at 45. It's like, you're the 45 pound champ. What is it, two people? And that was her saying that, I think, or yeah. something like that. But, you know, it, it's, yes. I'm not sure. But, Web C, KO of the night. Hey, I'll tell you what. But I think with Anka Laev, I think he demonstrated, he demonstrated savagery, but Pantoja, yeah, Pantoja to go out there. And I know we hadn't seen Perez in a bit, but Pantoja just, he did the right thing on somebody that has a two year, whatever layoff. He just jumped off really quick well, boom, and just quick and gave yeah. him no breather and just, you know what I mean? And, and, and just put him away. So it was to me, ah, oh, I'm telling you, you know, it, it was, yeah. That was that was a lot of fun. And then really quick, chat before you go, exclamation sweeps. Exclamation sweeps. Today is the last day the UFC is giving away a one-of-a-kind gaming PC featuring a Ryzen 5900X and RTX 3080 built by Paradox Customs plus more prizes. Enter now for a chance to win. You'll see the link and restrictions do apply. The other thing is I want to make sure if you're out there, make sure you follow this stream. Follow the stream here, Switch TV slash UFC. We're going to be back on Monday to recap all the fights we watched today with we'll have like we got clips and stuff like that. We'll have an interview and then we'll go through based on the theme and we'll watch fights after that. And then you can, we'll let some of you use your channel points and you can pick the fights. We'll let you pick the fights on Monday. How about that? You know what I mean, chat? Um, and then on Tuesday, myself, Adrian Yanez, we have Dana White's Contender Series. Again, oh, got so many things happening Monday, Tuesday, Sunday. Sunday, if you're bored, you'll have to come over and check me out gaming. Or we could probably game here. I'll figure it out. But we might do it at, you know what I mean? Twitch TV slash Jens Pulver. I haven't, or we'll be right here. One of the two. But. You got to make sure you hit that icon and so you can stay notified when we go live. Friday, we're watching fights of fighters fighting and Saturday's fights. Saturday, no. we'll do it again. Um, the last thing, no, next is... Saturday, um, no. by the way, so next Saturday, our next watch along, the UFC will crown the next ultimate fighter. The next, is it little big brother, Usman? I don't know, but we'll find out. So that'll be next Saturday. And now, Mr. Jeff Molina, number one, I want to thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for your My time. Man, thank you. Socials, how can they get a hold of you? Man, uh, thank you once again for having me, brother. Thank you all the people behind the scenes for, for having me. This was fun, brother. I, I like talking fights, especially with a legend like yourself. Uh, but socials, uh, at jbolina underscore 125. That's Instagram and Twitter. 
I love it. I love it. All right. And we've got, um, and now what we have chat. So here, stay tuned. Oh, me, I guess at Jens Pulver on Instagram and Twitch TV slash Jens Pulver. You know what I mean? And I'm usually, if I'm not here, I'm there. <laughs> but yeah, I stream every Monday, but well, I'm so. here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and fight nights on Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern. So, and then, yeah, we have to figure it out. But we're going to be stay. I want y'all to stay tuned. We have extra rounds coming up soon. Yes, well, I'm going to start doing some PUBG. I'm going to get some of these fighters like Mr. Molina right here and a couple others. Yeah, man, we're going to we'll start gaming. It, it's, it's PUBG town. You know what I mean? Let's but y'all make sure you stay tuned. We got extra round coming up next. And then 